everybody, how you all doing? I hope you all doing well. My name is Paradise and welcome to the Paradise League Pro Tournament. We get, we have here number one actually. We have here is the loser bracket finals, and then later on we're gonna have the grand final, a best of five, where one of these two teams are gonna be playing against the winner team. And I'm joined here by what you got and Hanze actually. How are you gentlemen doing today? Apparently, I got changed, name changed to what you got, so um, my, my, my day is going pretty poorly, actually. I uh, mean, to be compared to one of the greatest casters ever, is that a good thing, no? Come on, no. Wow. I wish you wow. compared me instead to, to Beans. That would have been, uh, been the great. Greatest casters ever. What Drake, a, he what died a in his grave beginning. right now. Uh, I'm, I'm doing amazing. I'm really looking forward to uh, facing one of these teams in the final. It's uh, it's going to be a great watch this game. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Hansi is actually uh, one of the the, the members of like the, the winners bracket uh, finalists. So he's uh, hopefully going to provide us with some deep inside information about their picks. Obviously, he's going to spoil everything. And uh, let's just go right into the bans, actually. So we see the Fade uh, ban, Torture, Keeper, Andromeda, Engineer, and Adrenaline. Now, I know Adrenaline is uh, more of a ban that you see I see against like certain heroes. The Fade ban is interesting, though. We've seen that a lot more, actually, uh, throughout the tournaments. What are your thoughts on that? I'm actually a bit surprised that Fae's been banned this much. It's a really strong hero after the last update, but no teams have really been playing her at all. Like, in, in TMM as well, like, these players don't really play this hero that much. So I'm surprised that it's being a first ban for everyone. Yeah, because the, the, the problem with the Fae for me always have been, it's a really powerful hero if you get through the laning phase, but um, you just don't win the lanes with a Fae. You don't ever win the lanes. You can't win a 1v1 lane. You can't win like a tri lane. The fate is just usually like a position four or three ish hero then. But he's just a bit too weak to really um, do much in these lanes. Yeah, he has so, a really weak lane presence. Uh, yeah. He's, he's a good roamer, especially after he gets level six. Then he goes live and provides a, sh a lot of uh, map presence, but you could say the same for a hero like Geomancer, provides a lot of map presence, doesn't need to be level 6, is active on the lane. So I I'm, I'm really surprised that it's been banned so much throughout this tournament. Yeah, I think I've mainly casted games of uh, Beans' team. So maybe it's just something, because it was the, yeah, it was Beans that actually banned the fate, so maybe it's something that he just doesn't really want to deal with. And oh. another thing that we see here is another uh, really powerful combo, actually, the Prisoner Puppet Lane. Yes. Uh, I think they run that dual middle most often, right? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely going to be a dual mid for sure. I, I believe so, at least. It's probably, in my opinion, the strongest dual mid you can have uh, in terms of kill potential and, and lane presence. It, so it's so scary. If, I mean... If I was going to deal with it, now they already picked Monkey King Glaciers, which is a bit hard, because that would mean that it would have to send something like uh, either a Maraxxus solo mid and just leech XP and try and Axe Toss to get some creeps in uh, and sack the lane that way, or they would have to, to man up against it with something like uh, a Pebbles and Four or something that doesn't die and still is able to farm the lane. Do you do you think you don't die with Pebbles and Four? I wouldn't if you if you don't play out of position. I I don't think you would you would be be dying that much. I actually think you trade fairly easily, and if the public is out of position, you're you're able to to kill at level two or three uh, with that combo as well. But Hell Hellborn also picked up him for so that's out of the option, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just thinking about it. Like, there's not really a hero, and at least not a single hero that actually survives um, the combo. Because for the guys that don't know, uh, what you do is you like use the puppet show W on a hero near the creeps, right? And then you just hook him with the prisoner, and then you just lock him down and start auto attacking the targets. And it's just it's just a lot of damage, and it's a guaranteed hook. So um, is is there like a single hero that you think can actually survive against that? I do believe that Maraxis is probably the best bet in terms of a hero that's able to sustain middle lane or a drunken master. A drunken master might be able to to survive as well, but he, he won't have any chance of getting anything except XP on the lane, whereas Maraxxus is able to axe toss and maybe get something in. But he has to play a tower most of the time, which limits his uh, availability on the creeps. Yeah, 
so actually, I was kind of curious. Uh, can you dodge the hook with the arcane shield? Do you know? Because it is uh, a projectile. You can, like, you can do. You can dodge diva hook, for example. No, you, you cannot dodge uh, prisoner hook with uh, the arcane shield. No, you can't. Okay. I, I was kind of curious because it, it it looked like something that maybe maybe could have worked, you know. Yeah, it would have been really strong hero for that lane then uh, in that case, but sadly that doesn't work. Anyway. The, the, the reason I think that Morax is, yeah, whatever. Let's move on. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I understand. I, it's, just, it's just a tanky hero that can like just kind of survive, right? Yeah, exactly. I just, I, I think like after you get like hook once or twice, you're just like out, kind of out of region and um, in a tough spot because you probably haven't got any farm at that point. This is an interesting ban though. Like, I just realized they banned Doctor. Doctor is not really seen picked that much. I know they have Fall um, on Hellborn side, but they already have a a Puppet Master, which means that they're probably not going to have uh, a Doctor in this lineup since it would require too much uh, sitting. Like in a tournament aspect, if you want to have a Doctor, you need to have a Trilane to support him and make sure he gets his fast icon. Mm. It kind of depends if um, if um, the Legion side here, for example, never actually wants to run a Twilight, right? Then you could just run something like Nymphora plus Doctor and still be fine-ish in the lane. But um, so that that might be the reason, right? They just don't want to give him the opportunity to go for the Critic Carries because Doctor plus Papa Master is a really nasty combo. That is true, but I would also think that if they decided to pick up Doctor here, Legion side would be punishing them by ignoring their mid lane, making really? making their puppet free farm per se mid lane, but in completely shutting down their their Doctor, making him making him not even able to touch creeps on the the tri lane because that hero is extremely weak until he hits level six. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Doctor is pulsar. I actually checked stats stats recently. It's actually one of the lowest strength starting heroes as well. Yeah. Or the heroes with one of the lowest starting strengths. So it is really just a creep uh, in the lane at least. And we see him often picked up with something like an accursed. But that is just to survive until you get like level six and then you can start doing stuff. It is all about surviving with the doctor. But uh, the Bensington being ba uh, banned is also probably a good choice by them because. Bensington plus Papa Master is also such a strong combo. Yes, I agree. And they really have this huge, like, global presence down at that point. A any hero that can hold down a, per a target for a long period of time is really strong with uh, Bensington because they have so much global presence then. Bensington never has to show on any lane. You can just AFK farm and, and show up for the fights. So I really like the Bensington ban. Interesting picks here. Yeah. Um... The Pearl is actually a really good pickup against Papa Master as well, because that shield, that preservation, I think as long as you push the Papa Master out, even if the actual puppet is still in, I think like the target inside takes like less damage from it. I'm actually really surprised they picked up Tundra into Pearl, to be honest. Because of the cleanse of the, the ultimate that Pearl can, can give. No no no, you can't cleanse the ultimate. What are you talking about? You you can't cleanse the ultimate with the Q ability? Doesn't it work like uh, any no. other buff ability or what? No, no. Oh, okay, then I'm mistaking what the what the hero Q ability is able to do. Oh, it's just it's just buffs. Oh, okay, I see, I see. I actually I mean, thought it was like... Uh, like uh, Monarch ultimate. Monarch ultimate, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like Monarch ultimate. You don't think that would be a little broken? I mean... Yeah, it would be pretty strong. Uh, I haven't played tight, a lot there are two heroes that can remove stuns, as far as I'm aware. That is Monarch Ultimate, and that is Accursed Chief. Accursed, yeah. But anyway, uh, let's uh, see what we're dealing with here. The last pickup from the Legion side is actually going to be the Magmus. Um, they did really need some stuns, if we look at our team, right? Because if you looked at what they had before the Magmus pick, actually, they just had... the. Glacius, if you could count as a stun, the Pearl Push, and the Monkey King, which has like some mini stuns. So, um, Madman, once he gets a Shrunken, I feel like the Legion side has like nothing to actually keep him down. Yeah, they're, uh, they're, they're definitely going to struggle in the late game uh, with Legion side's hero picks compared to the Hellborn ones. Uh, they need to be active early game and and open on their windows before Madman gets too much farm, and the same for Puppet. As soon as the Legion, Hellborn side starts getting their Shrunken heads in, 
leading side are going to struggle with these hero picks. Yeah, and I think a lot of that is probably going to come down to the Revenant. Because the Revenant is the one that is probably going to like rush 8 uh, and start moving around with either the Glacius or the Magmas. And um, that is like, I think, where they need to really catch the momentum, start getting pickoffs, start like warding up their jungle, play the aggressive playstyle that we know from them so well, where they just like try to maximize, so they're not trying to maximize their resources, they're just trying to, um, you know, bully the enemies to some extent. They're just trying to take away from the enemy. We actually saw here at the start uh, Glacius uh, considering if they were going to be dueling mid, but uh, ending up going for boot red boots instead to have some roam presence, which I think is fine since uh, I don't really think Legion side has that strong of a dual lane compared to Hellborn. If Revenant gets hooked, regardless of Glacius being there, I'm pretty sure that he will end up dying. Yeah, that is true, but. Um... I'm not sure the Revenant can really do much in his lane. If he gets W'd here, which he did not actually, he could maybe have. And uh, oh, by the way, we also see the Tundra managing to pull the lane with uh, his Doggo and managing to block this small camp with his bird. So good map awareness from him. Like, good place from him. Uh, he did not actually manage to get the block off on the medium camp though, so he does get to um, farm that. And we see Glacius farming the jungle now as well. Interesting. I would like, if, he, if, if this is his strategy, right, I would really like for him to instead just uh, buy a link, link up with Revenant, and make sure that the Revenant at least gets some gold from this, right? For sure. I, I don't think that the boots pick up is necessarily as, as great as uh, Orp would have been here. They would have provided more XP and gold for both him and his mid laner, which he, the mid laner is definitely going to be lacking versus his dual lane. But I as you said... going to get much gold, though, because I don't think Revenant's going to get any last hits. It's more like the other way around, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's what I meant as well, yeah. And I think, like, this is definitely in favor right now of the Hellborn side, because the top lane is free farming, bottom lane is just getting XP. Um, but they're winning, like, two lanes right now, and Revenant should actually be... Oh, Revenant gets hooked here. They might actually be... They place the ref for it. They killed the Shackle, but it's not enough. He actually goes down here by the Prisoner and the Puppet, and that is just a strong combo. Um, actually... The Puppet Master choosing to level his Q and W before the E is definitely a good call here. For sure. The more lockdown they have, the the better. They don't really need the, the extra damage provi provided by the, the the E ability by the Puppet, I don't think. Uh, they just need to hold Revenant in place and they will kill him. Yeah. And meanwhile, the top lane, uh, Magmus is just really not getting anything. Basically the same thing as a Tundra, they're just here sitting for XP. Um, but yeah, it's the it's the middle lane that's kind of the deciding factor right now. And actually, Prisoner picking up an Invis rune. Smoke the uh, Remnant mid with Glacius. Glacius is being invis by the Yeah, they saw that. Something up here. They have to refort there. Oh yeah, that's true. And they're road trading three people here now. It means it's that the Tundra might actually Prisoner be... Yeah. So the Prisoner... Oh, that is a good hook actually, but I don't think this is... No, this is never going to be enough here. Just, the, just three people. If the Glacius... Glacius doesn't have his Q though, he has his E. Uh, so E and W. But yeah, we see like four people struggling from the Legion side here. Uh, four people actually below 150 GPM here. Um, I, I, I think they need to start moving around. I also, they're start giving up them. really much space for the... The Tundra to just free farm my bottom lane now, which is going to be an issue since he's going to get his level 6 really fast and be able to have a lot of lane presence. Yeah, it's definitely not free farm, but uh, he is actually getting free XP at this point, which is basically all that the Tundra needs. He does actually choose to pick up an Iron Shield, which I like against the Monkey King. But yeah, the the, the Glacius here just um, not really having the biggest impact, which... Um, yeah, it's kind of understandable. He's kind of like in a weird position where he can't really go to any lane because they picked they picked such strong lanes, right? Actually, Tundra might fall there. Asaf going for the Monkey King, going for the Tundra here. If he gets the, uh, one more W, you know if that, that's a kill for the Monkey King there. Or for the Glaciers there, sneaking in the kill. Um, Tundra just a little bit too off-confident, and the Monkey King with the W and the Q just so much damage output that it gets five. 
Meanwhile, in the mid lane, I think they missed the hook there, if I'm not mistaken. I would like for... Uh, actually, wait, uh, let's grab that top lane. Uh, Mac was stunned. Then Flora might actually be in some trouble here. He does get the stun off and get the heal off. Uh, we don't see Mapman moving around, I think. Yeah, Mapman just did not really think Nefora was going to survive that. Nefora just a little bit too cocky there, actually. That's a good double barrel roll to dodge the Magma stun, though. Oh, wow. Well played by uh, Fall there. Uh, there is mana for another stun on the Magmas. The Pearl kind of uh, showing his presence in the top lane. And I'm starting to wonder, uh, is this not something that they should have done before? Send the Pearl to the top lane? Because a Pearl's not a weak laner these days, right? She actually has a lot of healing and the Q does a decent chunk of damage. Level 1 Q does 140 damage, I believe. Yeah, I would definitely have liked to see uh, them contesting top a bit more and maybe having... Uh, a roaming glacius with a synchronizer bot lane with the the monkey king since the monkey king is able to to lane quite well against the tundra uh, himself and then with the laning presence of glacius he needs to be careful not to overextend on tundra yeah the glacius could have just like kind of done what he did already oh actually they might actually catch the prisoner here prisoner is in a kind of a terrible spot here w from the glacius the prisoner does not have boots or anything like that He's gonna get his spells off. I think two more hits, but yeah, they're never gonna get that off. And that's another kill for the Legion side there. Uh, Legion side kind of having his momentum. Uh, in the meanwhile, also, this means that uh, because the prisoner is not middle, the, the Revenant is actually able to get some good uh, farm here. Uh, yeah. This so, is really good for Legion side. Like, this is what yeah. you want to see. You want to see Magmus, Pearl, and Glacius providing space for the Monkey King and, and the Remnant so they can start getting back into the game. You need you need to see this Monkey go go active fast in this game since he's not going to have a, a fun time late game versus the Puppet Master, Madman, and Atundra. Yeah, it's like it's very hard for like a solo core like this because, um, as we already said, like it's kind of a single core with the Monkey King, which is also reflected in the GPM charts. And it's just going to be very difficult for uh, the Monkey King. Oh, actually, in the top lane, the Madman does get stunned here. That's a Nymphora heal on top, and that is a dead Magmus, actually. Nymphora heals just so much damage in the early game. It's very unfortunate they missed the W1 Pearl there uh, on the Madman. They might have been able to actually finish him off, and that would have been an amazing trade for Lee Sinsai. I think they they did have dust, right? Yeah, the dust on the Glacier is, is on cooldown. And that's not a kill in the middle lane, that's exactly what they want. So the Tundra just, sorry, the Prisoner just sitting middle right now with the Puppet Master means that the Revenant is just not, not gonna get anything anymore. And the, this means also that the Puppet Master is gonna get a lot of uh, just kills from this. And you really want this Puppet Master to start snowballing. The Puppet Master is the one that's going to really set the pace of the game. He's the one that's going to gank with the Tundra and like get kills off on the Monkey King and that kind of stuff. So that's good play by them. Uh, they're not even really contesting the mid lane at all anymore. See Monkey King actually going in the bottom lane together with the Revenant, and that is a dead Tundra. That's, That's actually a dark, really top lane. Oh, in the top lane, uh, Madman going to run away for now. I think all spells are on cooldown. Magmas actually has his Q up. So, uh, Madman playing... On the yeah, Madman playing really confident there. Yeah. But uh, there was some sadly some miscommunication on top lane. Glacius went in and dusted Madman, slowed him, and... And Pearl also went on the Madman, but Magmus went up towards the, the Nymphora instead, which uh, provided Madman to run away. That's unfortunate, yeah. Uh, that is another kill on the Pearl. The Madman just doing a little bit too much damage. Also, uh, Puppet Ultimate in the mid lane actually finishing off the uh, Revenant there. We saw the Revenants together with the Monkey King actually going in the mid lane and try to get a gank off there, but the ward placed by Fall there uh, actually, or by Eslon, sorry, um, saved him there from the Revenant gank, which is, I mean, I guess the Revenant, the only way you can, you can play that hero is just, you know, spam Revenants, because you need those, re uh, sorry, the, you need to, the Rev Wards to actually see those ganks are coming. But as we said, like at the start, right, the um, Revenant was going to be the one that needed like a good game, and he is suffering. Yeah, he's really struggling. He's sitting on the 140 GPM actually lower than, than the Glacius, which is not ideal in this situation. He doesn't even has, have his boots yet, which you would like to see. Um, but I do believe as soon as they hit 7, they need to, to be roaming around the Madman's lane. 
on on the revenant. They need to, they need to shut down Madman before he uh, he gets too many items. I I, I think Fo is gonna go for Mox since he usually does that on Madman. So they have a a big window here now actually to to go and shut him down before he gets too much farm. Yeah, but he is really tanky already. So it is 900 HP on him together with mana boots and testaments. It's just really like kind of difficult to deal with him, and they are trying to apply some pressure as they we see now actually in the top lane. But Nymphora being there, applying the pressure, and he's actually Madman is taking some tower hits. I'm not sure this is this might work Magnus out for him if he gets the second. W. One no. second. Oh, he misses the Madman's Q and he misses the barrel roll. Both of them miss. No dust or reforce like that. Madman tanking the tower, going in so very greedily, um, nearly cost him his life. I don't think there was much reason for him to tank it out like that, but uh, really, in the end, uh, really unfortunate nope. that the Magnus misses his stun. Though, like th this is again a game where I, I know you are a big fan of uh, dust in general in any game situation. It, it doesn't matter if there's enemy heroes on the enemy side or or if it's just. Uh, Normal heroes yeah. provide so much vision. Uh, and it's area. something that I've actually seen um, uh, specifically this team like struggle with a lot, consistently having dust. Like I've seen them play against like heroes like Valkyrie, and just none of them in the entire team was just carrying dusts and games like that. Um, meanwhile, we see the Puppet Master picking up a double damage rune and clearing two triple stacks, so his farm is going to skyrocket. Uh, that's probably going to be a Shroud, if I had to guess. Maybe Malfred's first? Well, what, what do you think here? Should it be picking up a Shroud or a PK? Like, what, what's your thoughts on that? Because I, I would argue that a PK this game would actually be better than the Shroud. Yeah, um, I know like that Eston does actually like to go to the, the, um, the PK as well. And I don't think a PK is bad. But you don't just buy a Shroud to get close to the targets. You buy a Shroud on Puppet Master because it's it works really well with your E. Because the damage from the... Uh, you, you get a guaranteed crit. So any kind of hero that has like a guaranteed crit, generally speaking, Shroud is very strong on. For sure, for sure. It, it, it's a really good item on, on Puppet this ga game as well in, in general. But I, I do believe that in this certain game where you have a Madman, who's also having a great game that you should just be active on the puppet, get a PK as soon as possible and roam around with the prisoner, provide some map presence with the Tundra as well. Since they have bird, it's so easy to set up ganks uh, with smokes for help on side as well. Yeah, that is true. They do have the, uh, the Revenant that you need to be really careful though of. It's, it's gonna be it, like, as once Revenant gets eight and they start like to do the roaming, uh, it's gonna be difficult, but I would still, I think, if I were were in a less farmed spot, uh, I would definitely go for something like a PK. But Shroud just allows you to farm triple stacks and waves like that much faster as well. Because if you have Ghost Marches, uh, Malfrats, and Shroud, you can one shot a wave basically. So you can like one shot a wave and PK out something like that. Yeah, I, I definitely would like to see him pick up uh, a Shroud at one point in this game, but I, I do believe that considering the Madman almost being 500 GPM, you should keep providing him as much base as he possibly can get by getting the PK early and, and setting up some kills with the Tundra. Yeah, I could see that. Just for space reasons, basically, you would uh, like just play pass or play more active then. Yes, exactly. They do have the Pearl, so... Even with the PK, it's not a guaranteed kill if you go in on someone because the problem. We actually see Magnus and Glacius coming smoked into middle lane now. And that is uh, just a prisoner, though. I, yeah, they're looking, they're looking through looking the jungle. Them. They should really try to get some vision up in here as well. Uh, Glacius does have a ward, actually. And they're going to find the Puppet Master here. And that might actually be a dead Puppet Master if he's not very careful. Glacius is a little bit too slow. Uh, I do believe oh. that he could have gotten his W off if he used his dust, though. To be honest, mm, but, uh, then you're so diving really deep, and I don't think you have that much damage. Anyway, uh, we see uh, four people right now sitting in the mid lane. Um, or is that five? That is actually five people, and we see the rest of the team porting in. Actually, going in a puppet master. Puppet master is gonna fall instantly. Prisoner is also dead, but we see the return. There's an ultimate on the tundra, off on the tundra on the map. Other uh, one king. 
uh, three people alive for three. Magma's gonna stun out and port. Uh, there's Glacius dead. The Revenant gonna try to port out. No stuns available from the Hellborn team. And that is quite a cleanup from the uh, Hellborn team. It looked a little bit like uh, a little bit of a desperation play where they felt like they just had to get something done. Otherwise, they were gonna start losing harder and harder and harder. And we see the Madman actually pick up a um, Dreamcatcher instead of the Mock here. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, in, in that case, I, I do believe that the reason he's picking up that is because he wants to provide some space for the puppet and instead, uh, not the other way around. They, they're focusing uh, on the puppet's farm, making sure that he's able to get to his items where he's able to just run in and one-shot the, the monkey king at one point. But that was some really nice rotation from the, the Hellbomb side with the TPs. They were, they were ready for that gank. Yeah, I think actually a puppet somehow got his ultimate and W up there before actually Monkey King might be able to survive it because they missed some spells. Uh, deny from the Revenant. I think Monkey King was actually dead there because the Dreamcatcher does prevent him from healing there. But the reason why I think I like the Dreamcatcher on the Batman is... Oh, actually scrapped out. We might have some initiation here. They see the Revenant. Yeah, they see the Revenant with the Revenant there. Uh, Magmus is gonna get caught. Prisoner W making it so he cannot queue out. And the Revenant is the next one to fall because of the Tundra ultimate and the rest on top. And yeah, they're just falling over. Revenant's just really not having the game that he needs to, like the snowball that he needs to have. Um, I feel like maybe if they ran like a tri lane or something, they could have really given the Revenant the space that he needed. But that would definitely also come at the costs of the, the Monkey King's farm. But Monkey King also just fell two times in a row because in the mid lane he fell because of the Puppet Master. Uh, and now he just fell because of the gank and the prisoner. Um, prisoner is also just like an amazing hero against the Monkey King, right? Mid lane though, prisoner falling to Monkey King in glaciers. I think the prisoner tried to hook the Monkey King there. Oh, sorry, the glaciers there. And yeah, that's just a little bit too cocky of a play. Actually, Vulca might be in trouble here. He gets Magmus stun. Uh, no ultimate or anything to cancel the Magmus ultimate. So that is going to be a dead Tuna there, and that's two kills for Legion Sides. Legion Sides slightly regaining their momentum. But meanwhile, while all this is happening, we see the Puppet Master just chilling in the top lane, farming there. At this point they, right now, they should be having their Monkey King free farm, uh, while the, the rest of the team is not sitting mid lane, but is out roaming, looking for the Puppet. Because the Tundra is still dead, the Prisoner just got up. They, they need to be picking their fights and they need to be picking them fast in this game. They, they cannot they be sitting around farming on lanes. They have a good ward in their jungle. But the issue is because like because the Le Hellburn side has wards everywhere in their jungle, they're gonna know when the Revenant's not showing. Oh, Revenant's sure, yeah. not showing, like plus one other target means that like it's a two-man gank or something like that. And the downside of like the Revenant at this level is that uh, it's it's a very predictable playstyle, right? Because you can only basically like two man gank. You can't really three man gank until you get like level. Oh, actually, scrap that. In the bottom lane, uh, Tundra is going in. The Glacius is there. That's the ultimate on the Monkey King. Uh, Glacius doing everything he can to to save the Monkey King here. Monkey King gets soul trapped and it's gonna fall. Glacius ultimate not enough. Then that's good play with the uh, with Nymphora. Uh, Nymphora plus Tundra actually being quite a combo because. Just being able to like provide support with the Nymphora or Tuna setting up, that is just so powerful. Yeah, and like the like... Glacius is just not able to... Oh, actually in the mid lane. Uh, that's an ultimate on the Revenant. The uh, Pearl is gonna save the Revenant initially. Uh, Revenant is gonna actually just be able to walk away, but the Pearl might fall because of that. Yeah, that's a very dead Pearl. Um, but it was like we talked about with the Benzin and pick as well, right? Like a hero like Tundra and Pop that are just... Amazing for for stalling heroes and uh, them four just fit so well in into that lineup just like a Benzington would have. Yeah, uh, actually they pick up DD rune and Elder Parasite on the Puppet Master right now, and they're just gonna try to do Conger. So I uh, probably could call no life steal on the Mammon yet, but I mean you don't need that right? Not when you have double damage to double damage Puppet Master and even the Dogo to uh, provide the support here. I mean, yeah, just taking the Kongs very smart. Uh, Monkey King still not having the game that he needs to really come back here. He's basically like half the GPM of the Batman here. And like the Monkey King is a hero that also just needs to snowball, right? 
Oh, for sure, yeah. It, it, it has a it has a window this hero. Like it, it, it won't fare as well into a late game scenario like a, a madman or a puppet will. Sadly, since the puppet will be ending up regardless of how, how many items the gonna run into an Amphora here. The Monkey King actually dodges the hook. He does get bolts. He doesn't have his hatch up to remove that. Amphora is low HP and it's gonna fall. Uh, Glacius is looks to be very dead here. Prisoner sitting in the front line. Monkey King is gonna fall. Magnus and Pearl, the survivors. Revenant in the background. Both are gonna fall. It's a three versus one. Revenant's gonna try to port out, and I think he's going to be successful. Yes, he is. Um, yeah, this very aggressive play style from the Leech side again, but they kind of have to because they need to make something happen to turn this game. Yeah, as I was saying with the Monkey King, you, you, you have an early window. It doesn't matter how many items you get, a hero like Madman or, or Puppet will always in a late game scenario will carry you, so... Yeah, because you're so dependent on like just being able to move around. Yes. If you can't move around because of like either a sheep stick or because of a stun, you are generally gonna fall. But Monkey King does scale, of course, really well into the late game because of his Q. If you stack up a lot of damage on the Monkey King, you can like pull out, uh, push out a lot of uh, damage. Without ever actually need to auto attack. Uh, the mid lane, uh, the Pearl is probably just gonna fall here. Uh, they are three people. Monkey King in the back line. Monkey King is just gonna get ultimated by the Puffin Master and fall. Revenant not providing enough. And in the to add insults to the injury, they even have Prisoner and Nymphora back there. And the bird to scout it out. Uh, that is a uh, hat trick for uh, the Puffin Master. Puffin Master nicely recovering. Um, yeah, I think they just. Oh, and Tundra also picking off the Glacius right there. I mean, that's a 180 GPM Glacius. That's not very surprising. Um, I think we're gonna be seeing a token here as well. Yeah, if I were like, I don't want to be rude, but um, I do feel like maybe this game is slightly, slightly beyond saving. And they still have like two more games to go, so um, you know. For morale's sake, I would say that uh, yeah, exactly. Le Legion side should just toss in the the flag on this one and, and go next and and have a, a high morale for next going into the next games instead of uh, yeah, because they could have definitely won this game if they had like the Revenant snowball lot and they're actually gonna run into the doom. Right? Are they? No, uh, they. I think they don't have the damage to kill him. Because there are also four people there. The Glacius is going to get uh, hooked into the Pearl ultimate, not actually saving anyone. Pearl jumping on top of the cliff. He might be fine because of that. Pearl surviving. Uh, Puppet Master might actually be in some trouble here if he's not careful. Puppet Master, a couple of HP. Uh, Monk, Mock on the Madman right now. He's hunting the Monkey King. There might be a hook from the. No, Hook uh, is down from the prisoner. The chase the Monkey King here. Monkey King is trying to survive. They actually see. Him. Um, uh, let's just uh, say that. Let's just say that was an accident. I don't think. Uh, I don't think Asaf has. Uh, Asaf hasn't been playing the game for for some time. Um, I don't think he's read up on the rules of cliffwalking. Sadly. Um, yeah. Well, uh, it wasn't. It, the game was basically already over. Yeah, so. yeah. It's just showing off. Exactly. Maybe uh, our 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 glorious leader can be uh, forgiving for this one time. Uh, but anyway, so uh, that was uh, game number one, a fast game. So uh, maybe we won't be here until three in the morning. That would be nice for a change. That would be great. And uh, we get uh, game number two uh, coming right up.
Okay, welcome back for uh, game two. Uh, my name is apparently what you got, and I'm once again joined by Hansi. Hansi, uh, thank you for uh, coming to Castleby. Glad to be here. Uh, so uh, let's just go right into the bands, actually. Uh, Fade being banned once again, and this time not by Beans, but by uh, the other team, by Helper team. Yes, it's, uh, they, they clearly don't want to face that. Uh, we also see a respect ban on uh, Vulkas Tundra, which is one of his uh, most iconic heroes in terms of tournament. He's been doing really well on that hero. No, Pharaoh. Far yeah, Pharaoh is definitely the most iconic, but I said one of the most iconic heroes. Yeah, true. But Tundra is just so powerful with the um, the global presence that it provides. That they, I know, like the uh, the team from uh, the Beans likes to pick up global heroes. So think about them for, of course, think about. Um, Bensington, think about uh, those kind of heroes that can just join from really far away and then like, they just like close the map basically, right? Uh, so did we see actually some of those heroes bands, like heroes like to move around a lot. And from the Legion side we see Engineer, Keeper and Devourer ban. Um, to be I fair... Yeah. I don't know ever what to ban against Chris or against Duder. So against the Helburn team here, they have like the most, like widest hero pool <laughs> in the game. They can play anything and make it work. It's honestly like just insane. And funny enough, well, yeah, if it worked last time and they don't yeah. ban it, why don't you just pick it, right? I'm surprised they uh, they didn't pick <laughs> or ban at least one of the heroes. But I'm also yeah. surprised from Legion's side that they don't ban Monkey King, since in my opinion, Asaf is by definition the, the best Monkey King player there, there currently is. Well, to some extent, yeah, but I've also not really seen the Monkey King work out at all. A Monkey King is very much like a, a steamroll pop stomp hero, to some extent, um, where you can do a lot in, but in like actual competitive games. Uh, the same thing with uh, something like a Nomad. Uh, the heroes just don't really work out, because if you can just drag the game on long enough, the Monkey King just falls off a little bit too hard, I think. Yes, they, they, I would definitely like for Hellborn inside to pick up at least one more core this game, so they don't have to solo the Monkey King. Yeah, and also Puppet Master plus Prisoner are actually two heroes that are just really strong against the Monkey King. Yes, because of the shackle and uh, the, all the hold provided by the Puppet Master for sure. Yeah, it's just so much lockdown. So I'm kind of curious to see if they're actually going to pick up something like a Monarch to properly save the Monkey King. Because um, Monarch cannot pr remove the Puppet Show, I believe. Puppet Show is one of those just weird abilities, right? I'm actually not entirely sure about that. I have a feeling that it might be able to remove it. Like, uh, for example, Berserker Ultimate, right? Berserker Ultimate does not remove Puppet Show. Mm, no, it does not, but that's... Because that's weird. I mean, Berserker Ultimate lowers his received amount of lockdown, right? It's the no, same it also, once you activate it, it removes all stuns. And yeah, but, but it doesn't remove uh, Polytongue either, and it doesn't remove... Uh, yeah, it does. It does. If you, pro if, you, if you get tongued and then you press it, it removes it. Does it really? Yeah, it's only sure? done like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. like 95%. I'm not entirely sure about that interaction, to be completely honest. But if you if you say that it does, then I believe it to be so. Yeah, but like it's uh, Puppet Master Ultimate in general is just one of those, sorry, Puppet Master W is just one of those weird abilities that it defies all game logic. It's 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 really weird. Anyway, uh, we see a Rift Walker pick up, Adam Rex's pick up. Uh, they decided to pick up a little bit more stuns this game. And I hope that the Helburn, seat, uh, Helburn side also has a little bit more of a plan. Now, I do know that the Rift Walker is actually pretty good against this prisoner puppet lane. Because with the Rift Walker, you can just use the Cascade event and the, and the Rift Burn to try and get last hits uh, and just push out the lane back, basically, right? Yes. So, so Rivok is actually one of the heroes that I would say could do decently fine. But yeah. if you as your team have no way of actually punishing the Puppet Master if he just stands up your cliff and like just chills there, then it becomes a bit of a different scenario. They also did pick up the Miraxis, uh, which I talked about being uh, an option for sending mid versus this uh, 
dual lane, so so that might be a, a thing they were thinking of to do as well. Um, they are, they have two options to send mid already from the Hellborn side. Yeah, uh, they do actually clearly still need some kind of defensive support. So we do actually see the monarch ban. Oh, that's actually the monarch ban from the Hellborn side here, and a profit ban. They're really banning the the defensive supports from the Hellborn side here. We do know that like the, they of course love the the defensive supports together with fall. And then like that uh, fall together with uh, beans just move around a lot together. Um, so maybe is that's just to ban that. The madman of course being kind of a respect ban. And the rampage ban is... <laughs> it's one of those heroes that we see like the this uh, the, the kraken wagon just pick up every now and then. And somehow make it work. It's, it's, it's honestly, it's magical to see. The kind of the kind of stuff that they can make work. My team actually recently scrimmed Snark's team, and I picked up or we picked up Rampage for me, and it worked really well. And I'd say it works really well in certain team scenarios where you have a mid laner that's in a one v one situation and has a setup stun or setup lockdown because you can have so much map presence. With you. So it's a really aggressive mid laner, basically. Yes. Yeah. Because that's what you need, right? The Madman, sorry, the Rampage doesn't actually provide that much damage, generally speaking. Besides the fact that, of course, it is like really obvious to see. Because generally seeing, you see the Rampage charge, or you need to be in like a really weird position. But that's uh, where smoke is a great item on, on Rampage. Yeah, I was thinking like you could actually uh, pick up the, the Revenant plus Rampage or something like that. You could actually invest the Rampage and like get uh, some uh, gank potential that way. Or alternatively, uh, pick up a Valkyrie. Most zone. Yeah, Most or, or a smoke. A smoke works just as fine. The, yeah, the, but the smoke still, like, uh, sometimes, like, when you are, like, 1k away from the target, the target will still have enough time to actually cancel the rampage charge. For example, a chipper. Chipper is always going to have his, um, his rockets ready to, you know, cancel the rampage charge. That is true. Yes, correct. So, um, Lodestone and Chipper picked up. Um, Chipper is probably going to be uh, comboed with a hero that can uh, make a lot of stacks. So they want something that can probably farm the stacks together with the, the Chipper now. We see the Prisoner Puppet middle. Uh, prisoner Puppet's probably mid laning uh, Lodestone in the suicide lane. Um, if they wish to try lane in the, on the Hellborn side, then it's probably going to be a Moraxis against the Lodestone solo lane. Does the Lodestone... Sorry, who wins that? Moraxis versus Lodestone? Yeah. I put my cards on the Moraxis, actually. The, yes, I'm... It's, it's surprisingly how much damage the Axis does at level 3. No, 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 I, I definitely agree. Like, the Lodestone, sorry, is very powerful oh, in a 1v1 lane, of course, also because he passively blocks a lot of damage. And Doctor Pickup. Oh wow! Uh, sorry, uh, but uh, the Moraxis, um the, the the Axis just come up really fast. They have a five second refresh time, and they deal like 30, 40 plus four percent. So say six hundred HP. Quick math is around sixty to seventy damage, and you you can just keep chasing someone down. Um, Lodestone, of course, does have the tools to kind of fight back against the Moraxis, but if you're ever in a bad spot. Maraxis can just um, keep chasing you down, keep slowing you, keep throwing those axes until you're dead. Maraxis is in general just one of the strongest uh, 1v1 tank heroes in the game there is, in my opinion at least. The only hero I've like comfortably won with against an uh, Maraxis is a Keeper actually. Yes, Keeper does really well versus Maraxis. What you do is you just like start hitting him and the trees like automatically like kind of Spawn around block. You. Yeah. Exactly. We actually see a, a two-one-two lane in this uh, game here, and mm. and Yule, uh, Yule by playing what I would say is his most iconic hero in terms of carry hero, at least the uh, silhouette. Uh, and we have a, a dual core lineup from Hellborn side in this game, which is really nice to see instead of the single. core. Emerald Warden uh, being the support here. Uh, I love Emerald Warden as a hero. Yes, it yeah, is uh, really powerful. Um, it's like not a lot of people actually realize how much damage the Q does, the silencing shot from the Emerald Warden. 
Because it deals 60 damage plus 100% of your attack damage, which in this case is 60 plus, uh, say, 50. You, you so, and me actually talked about this. Uh, yeah, 110 magic damage for 60 mana. Yeah. Do, do, is... you, do you think in a situation here versus a lodestone that the MO Warden should be picking up his overgrowth or his silence first for a rest damage? Absolutely, SQ. Yeah. Because the overgrowth, it's uh, not always as easy to hit, even on a lodestone. And um, I don't think you really care about getting the, uh, the auto attacks in. You just like the Q. Just does too much for that, right? We actually see Doctor going mid and not the prisoner puppet that we saw in the previous game, which is a little bit surprising. That is definitely surprising. Also, Riftwalker not picking up an, arc, an, an orb here is a little bit surprising. We do see prisoner rotating over, but I, I guess they were just really expecting the tri lane. And pop up, uh, sorry, Doctor Repulsor instantly picking up a TP here. Uh, yeah, going into the bottom lane. It's kind of best case scenario for, for help on side here. The Doctor can't really lane versus a Monkey King Riffwalker. Uh, yeah, he, so he will get pulled in and die. So They just like um, rotated the lanes and they are slightly behind on the Legion side now. So maybe we can actually see uh, how strong this combo is actually going to be. Uh, now, Moraxis is actually going to get the lot in. Because I'm not sure Chipper... Uh, Chipper is actually still cute hero against Maraxxus. Maraxxus no. can, like, uh, shield the, the rockets. He can shield the rockets, yes. Uh, but, I'd say Chipper is a... Not sorry, the best no. hero. Continue, continue. Uh, I'd say that Chipper isn't really the best hero matchup versus Maraxxus because you don't have kill potential with the hero versus Maraxxus. He, he will always be able to get out the shield. True, but you can still just kind of box him out, right? Because even if Maraxxus activates the shield, he can probably not kill you. Mm, I don't see that Maraxxus would be able to kill the, the Chipper in this game for sure, but I don't think that the Nede is going to have that hard of a time getting XP either. You should really consider picking up a battery though. Oh, for sure, yes. Because, um, like, the, especially when the, if the Chipper gets his E, Maraxxus from range basically only does magic damage. So at that point, it's just going to be like free, uh, or a uh, free mana if the Maraxxus tries to do anything back. And the Chipper, all he needs to do is just make sure that he is bullying the Maraxxus, you know, thoroughly. And we actually see an instant uh, mana battery on Nether now uh, for the Chipper rockets as well. Yeah, because it's just it gives so much money back, or so so much HP and mana back. It's just worth it. Uh, Lodestone in a little bit of trouble. No, he queues out and he's gonna be safe. Monkey King actually in this mid lane, going on the prisoner. Oh, and that was a good W by the Puppet Master, but I think it's just too much damage from the Riftwalker. Riftwalker level 3 there, Monkey King uh, level 2, I believe, is just too much damage from the Helper side to really uh, be able to survive there on the prisoner, and prisoner is going to fall. Uh, I think that is partially also just the... Um, level disadvantage that they had because they uh, laned the way that they did. Yes, but sure. um, yeah, um, Riftwalker having the, uh, sorry, Monkey King having the ability to keep the Rift to keep the enemy inside the Rift Burn is so much damage potential. The, this lane is uh, definitely all about who, who goes first, let's say. Um, if the puppet manages to catch the Riftwalker out of position uh, in this mid lane, I do believe that the Legion side will uh, end out on top and the other way around. Uh, if, if the Hellborn side goes on Legion first, I think. And actually, will... by the way, I love the fact that we see Riftwalker actually pick up a hatchet. Can you tell me why? For the shackle. Exactly. You can hatchet the shackle. So Riftwalker also picked up a shackle, so he can instantly remove the shackle from the Monkey King. Now, Q still prevents the Q from the, from the Puppet Master. Still prevents the um, the monkey king from jumping a second time. So and they actually pick up a DD rune here. Emerald Warden with boots might be able to flank here. They did not see this being picked up. A uh, Riftwalker being initiated upon, but that's maybe what they exactly what they wanted. Uh, Emerald Warden is able to get off the trap here, and Asaf is going to jump over the trap and actually get the kill on the prisoner. There, prisoner is going to fall. Uh, good rotations. Uh, Emerald Warden picking up the boots, allowing him to rotate because the hero is oh so damn slow without. Um, 
And yeah, that's just exactly what they want. They're actually winning this basically extremely tough lane. And we see that's reflected in GPM charts as well. Um, Papa Master being only 230 GPM, uh, Prisoner being 80 GPM, while Monkey King are, is uh, 300 and Rift being 210, uh, of course. And we yeah. see that's not actually. Hellborn side really couldn't have asked for a better opportunity to, to win this mid lane other than. Them, them laning as a try lane but having paid and, and use money on that and, and wa waste uh, an entire lane of XP actually. Yeah, and we see actually that the Moraxus is also having quite a good lane here. Uh, being 280 GPM, even though the Doctor is of course 400 GPM right now, uh, not even without any uh, kills or something, so that is actually quite impressive by him. I think that is just a lot of farming the small camp and the medium camp that Chipper stacked because Chipper um, is just stacking the jungle. It's, it's so my much favorite support hero. I, I love that hero. Yeah, it, it, once you get up to the once you pick up the Crave Locket, every stack that you make is um, is just fifty uh, XP, and it's just so efficient. Also, the the hero in my my opinion at least. In, in terms of support heroes, is the Wait. strongest uh, in terms Rexus of damage. might be in a little bit of trouble here if they decide to go on him. Rexus is all by himself, that is so ballsy. He does have the arcane shield up still. He it's is going to activate it here. And that is going to be a um, uh, running Rexus. He is, yeah, he's completely fine. This is again what I talked about with the, the chipper being a, a really bad hero into the Rexus. He's able to run away pretty much. Uh, they, yeah, true, but they do, um, miss the hook there. I had a and position here. Yeah. This gonna he fall. Tried to, he tried to cancel the region from the Doctor, but he was just unable to hit it. Uh, the prisoner coming from the side, and that's just a bit too ballsy play by him, because he was half HP, and he was just, you know, taking chip damage here and there. Lowstone actually doing pretty well top lane as well, just hit level 6 and, and has his boots and is tanking up as well. Like, yeah, he's doing pretty well top lane as well. Yeah, so he did go for the Fortified Bracer. It could just of course be to tank up. It could also be to maybe make into an Astro at some point. Uh, interestingly enough, and I'm curious what you think about this. Two points in the Rocket Drill, two points in the Head Smash. Two points in the lodestone plates and one in the ultimate. He's going for the communistic uh, build. I don't think that you should ever go two points into the to the rocket drill. I, I do believe that you should just max out your W as soon as possible because that way you will have kill potential once you hit level six uh, for the the silhouette. Yeah, I I do definitely agree. Like the Q doesn't actually help you that much. I think. The the cool the cooldown gets reduced, but the second iteration of the spell only does half damage if the first one hits already. And uh, actually, we see the the Emerald Warden clear some jungle stacks here, while the Riftwalk is just chilling middle and pushing out the lane. Um, Rif Emerald Warden just cleared a triple stack. He's boosted hit GPM up a little bit. He wasn't stacked, so he wasn't linked with anyone while he did that. So I don't like that. Uh, Riftlock is going to be in some trouble here. He get jumped by the uh, Doctor Pulsar and the Chipper, and he's going to fall. Chipper being level six did not even need his ultimate. The Chipper rockets are just so much damage. He, he was yeah. linked with the uh, Monkey King. Monkey King had the. No, that was the Riftlock that was linked up with him. Oh, okay. Uh, then, then I don't like the play either. I, I, yeah, I do I... believe that if you're gonna farm jungle as a position four here, you should at least provide some gold for your four rolls. If, if I were this Monkey King, so if I were this Emerald Warden. I would consider just going by smoke, run into their jungle, place a ward, and farm their stacks that they've undoubtedly made. That's because, a pretty ballsy play. <laughs> yeah, it, it is, but like your 200 GPM support, if you die, so what? If you can deny like three stacks from them, that is all the better. You, you just place like a really defensive, aggressive ward, or like uh, defensively aggressive. So you can like up the cliff somewhere. It's gonna get, in, it's gonna get countered. It doesn't really matter. And you just TP out after. It's like a ballsy play, but they don't really expect it. Like, they had no vision in their jungle. They wouldn't expect it. Yeah, it could definitely have paid off in, in this game in particular, because they don't have any vision lane at Anyway, we see the prisoners sitting in the top lane. I do, They do a vision of this, do they? Yeah, they, they actually see the prisoner here. 
Uh, we see the Rivwalker in the bottom lane. Rivwalker might choose to set up an ultimate here. They... I feel like they know something is up. Fall is playing very defensively. I don't think Fall wants to do anything until he gets the icon. That's probably his game plan. I mean, uh, that, that does make sense on, on Doctor, right? Just farm until you get your icon and then run around the map and get some charges. Because they have a lot of catch, right? They have the, uh, the Papa Master, sorry, a lot of yeah. lockdown. They have the Papa Master, they have to have a lot of stone. Uh, actually, uh, sorry, in the top lane, we see three people here. Uh, interesting. So, the lodestone queued out, and the Monkey King W'd after him, <laughs> and because it was faster than his W, it, uh, it didn't trigger. Yeah, that was a funny interaction, actually. Uh, there was even haste at Monkey King, not being able to catch the, the lodestone here, because they don't really have any catch um, from distance. Emerald Warden traps are good, but they're really difficult to hit, unlike a moving target, for example. And they might actually, if they choose to go here, Lotan is a bit playing aggressive here. Uh, Doctor picked up the icon now. Doctor going to smoke up actually. Uh, top lane, uh, the Lodestone uh, jumped into a trap. Uh, we see a lot of Prisoner ports actually. Mid. Oh yeah, the going middle. That is a. Yeah, is that a dead pop master? That is a dead pop master, but also a very dead Rivwalker. Prisoner actually porting out on top of Puppet Master while they're going on him instead of helping his mid leader. Ooh, that is rough. Because uh, they also didn't really get anything top lane. Actually, now in the top lane, Doctor going in on the silhouette. He gets a ch uh, one other uh, guy instead. That is the Emerald Warden that's going to fall. The Moraxis we see ported here. I don't think Moraxis maybe should have ported until like... Oh, cancelling actually, the region on Doctor? Is that ever going to be enough? No, they will kill a chipper, but they don't really have enough to deal with the Doctor here. Doctor, of course, ma regioning that mana uh, is going to be a little bit too much. Uh, Moraxis might be in a little bit of trouble here. Moraxis is, of course, close to his PK. He needs only 1k more. So, at that point, once they have the PK, uh, they are actually going to be a little bit more scary, because then they have actually like a lot of catch for the Doctor. Because, like, Moraxis PK is in... Then you get like a silence from the Emerald Warden and then a trap on top. And at that point, like, the Doctor could actually die. But right now, with the little amount of catch that they have, save for the Rifwalker ultimate, I don't see this Doctor ever dying really right now. I would like to see Emerald Warden just go straight for a staff here. Go go for a staff, give it to Monkey King. It's such an insane combo with Monkey King. Uh, it's, it's obviously going to take some time for him to get a staff since he's position 4 and it doesn't farm that much, but uh, I would ignore going for, for any other items until you... I think, uh, I, can, I can see why, but I think if you do that, you're just going to be food for the Doctor. And I think the way that you play against the Doctor is you try to spread out the farm a little bit. Because uh, the Doctor uh, in the late game excels at just picking off like the weak heroes, right? But if you are at least like tanky enough to survive a little bit, um, and suddenly you are, it, it, the doctor can't one shot you anymore, and like your team can actually jump the doctor as he does that. What, what would you like Emma Warden to pick up instead of the staff first? Then? So, an astro label or? No, I don't think that actually saves you that much. I think what I I would definitely go for mana boots because you just need that on the on the hero. It's. But he already has has a chalice, so I wouldn't say that he would need a mana boost. The funny thing is, uh, when I play Emerald Warden, um, I, I play support as well sometimes. I feel like the best way for you to survive is gen oh, actually scrap that in the bottom lane. We see one port in, prisoner port in into the Maraxxus. Maraxxus might actually fall here. Rifwalker spells on top. Doctor flying in on the Rifwalker. Rifwalker is going to fall. Maraxxus does have his PK up. He has his ultimate up as well. But the Chipper and the Maraxxus are, uh, are going to add it right now. No ports from the Hellburn side at all. Maraxxus does not have mana, but he has uh, his oh, battery up in a few seconds. And he's going to be able to survive here. But that is not a charge for the Doctor um, on his icon, and it's slowly starting to stack up. Now we do see the Silhouette and the Monkey King just steadily farming. They have like the... probably the heavier late game team, I would say. 
yeah, so silhouette would... in the late game, especially when something like a null fire blade can be very threatening. And what is also really good for the Hellborn team is that the Maraxxus did actually manage to pick up his PK right now. So they can start to make stuff happen. Lodestone, just a l Oh, actually, scrapped out, he also has PK. Now, Lodestone with a PK and no Chalice. I don't know if he can actually do his entire combo. I oh, it's a plane. It is a miss on the Riftwalker ultimate. Uh, Lodestone going to be just fine here, unless he walks He's into the trap. Ooh, is that is that uh, the Frenchman using wall hack, or does the tower just see that? I don't think the tower sees that, but I do believe that he was just trying to walk to the tower, not the trees, because the silhouette would to grab on the trees. No, silhouette's already crappled left. Why did he? I didn't know. Uh, actually, sorry, in the mid lane, um, Rex just jumped together with the Emerald Warden there on top of the Purple Master, and that is the kind of rotations that we need to see from the Hellburn side here. Uh, the Puppet Master, of course, just was st steadily farming middle, and I didn't really have tools to catch him. Unless you suddenly have a PK Maraxxus. <laughs> However, I do believe that Puppet Master should have known that Maraxxus had his PK. Yeah, he showed that he had this PK bot lane, so it's it's surprising that Puppet still shows, shows so aggressively mid lane. Uh, yeah, so uh, in the... Uh, uh, sorry, we see in, the, in their jungle, uh, Asaf on the Monkey King did actually place a very aggressive ward there. The uh, Rev Ward was already there, so that got instantly countered, so that's really good by them. And in the top lane, we see Dr. Pulsar together with the Lodestone. And that is a jump on the silhouette here. The Lodestone cancelled the Null Stone from the silhouette, and the Doctor just got to jump off. Now, there is here a Moraxis here. They do have a Rifthawk ultimate, but that's not going to hit if she just channels it here. Uh, Fulka on the Lodestone has mana for a couple more abilities. They want to go back in. This is really greedy, but it can pay off big time. They killed a fucking Rifthawk there. Maraxxus uh, going back, Monkey King porting in, they're jumping the Doctor here. It's not going to be enough to finish him off. In the background, we see the Puppet Master actually finishing off the Emerald Warden. Emerald Warden is going to survive a little bit of HP. Monkey King gets bursted down in the backline, and Emerald Warden gets bursted down the backline as well. And that's just a prolonged team fight against the Doctor. It's not something you actually want to take, because Doctor just heals up so much with that icon. Because he has an icon, and he has a Gnome's Wisdom as well now to heal even more. And that is just a very messy team fight from the Hellburn side. I think they should just have cut the losses and uh, have let Silhouette die in this case, farm the other lanes and and try and maybe put some pressure on mid lane while while they were top. Yeah, the Doctor is just doing the smoke plays, right? And that was just a good jump by um, Lodestone, cancelling the Null Stone from the Silhouette so that the Doctor could jump in and get his W off, the two second stun. And Silhouette, even with a Null Stone, it's, it's just 1k HP. Silhouette is not gonna survive that. So we can see top he's playing super scared on the silhouette right now because he doesn't see the doctor on the map. Yeah, and he kinda has to, right? Like this not really there's there's no defensive support. They see actually Marx is smoking up here. But there's no defensive support like something like a monarch or or a pearl or something that you would maybe want with a silhouette, because silhouette is just so squishy early on. She like she scales really well later. Um, but it's difficult. And the Monkey King is going for a mock, I'm assuming. And Monkey King is kind of in the same situation, right? If the doctor jumps the monkey here, that is just a dead monkey. They just they they don't I don't think they're very interested in jumping the Monkey King because the Revolver has been sitting behind. And actually in the mid lane we see a uh, hook on the Moraxus. Moraxus is proking his W from the shackle, I believe. So he's going to be able to walk out of there. But uh, Papa Master... Oh, actually, there's a really good ward by Duder there. He actually had an invis, and he ran all the way through the jungle without being spotted by a red ward, somehow. And uh, managed to get, like, a really two aggressive wards here that they can probably use to scout out the smoke place. So, well played by Duder there. And providing, actually, so much information for his team here. Because um, this is the kind of information that the silhouette needs, right? Oh, for sure. Need, uh, as, as a Zilloid in this game, you, you need to have uh, at least 15 more minutes before you can really start being uh, a role, I would say, for your team. Uh, yeah, because Silhouette, like, with a no, I think she's going no Fireblade, right? 
I would actually like to see her. Oh, actually, uh, mid lane. Uh, we see the jump on the prisoner. Prisoner is going to fall. Prisoner was farming in the mid lane. Very cocky. Uh, the puppet master going for quite a tanky build here. Puppet master not really going for some kind of um, movement related item. Is definitely hurting them a little bit, I'd say. Yeah, for sure. Um, but as speaking of with the silhouette, I believe she should be going for uh, a firebrand into a GM. Oh, wait, in the mid lane, uh, Marax is jumping very aggressively. We see a lot of force coming in, actually. Lodestone jumping the Maraxxus here. We, uh, the abilities are already used on the Puppet Master. Lodestone might fall here. Lodestone does not have time to get his ultimate off or does not, uh, is silenced. And that ends up a one for one exchange. Uh, Asoft on the Monkey King actually choosing to go for the Shroud. Instead, and Doctor jumping in the back line. We see Doctor with a shrunken now. Emerald Warden is actually going to fall here. Uh, if he sees the Rift Walker, this is a very dead Rift Walker as well, most likely. That's a level 16 Doctor. That's not something you really want to meet in a dark alleyway. Um, yeah, Doctor just stacking up the Icon Charge once again. And he has a shrunken head now as well. Yeah, so um, all those plans of like bursting him. Yeah, you're going to have to execute them perfectly. Or Doctor is just going to heal up and fly away, because... The, the, the reason why like I like gnomes so much from Doctor is because you need some armor, you need some magic armor. And you don't need, like... Usually the enemy team will have a mix of it. And if you can just provide, like... Or, uh, if you just have, like, a little bit of both, you generally have enough to survive whatever burst they throw. If I remember correctly, Gnomes actually got nerfed because of Doctor, or was it that it was nerfed on Doctor? Oh wait, in the mid lane, uh, Monkey King getting ultimated by the Lodestone, getting jumped by the Doctor, and it's a dead Monkey King. So yeah, uh, what you said is true. Uh, what they changed about the Gnomes is uh, channeling abilities. So say, um, Doctor ultimates, Parallax ultimates, uh, the W from the Oogie. They don't work anymore with Gnomes. Because back in the day, they would actually like heal a lot, and actually, Doctor jumping the illusion of the silhouette in the top lane. That's very lucky for the silhouette. Yeah, so silhouettes. Um, I don't know if he would have died there if the because there was no one to cancel his null stone. No, he would. He would probably have been fine actually. Now that you mention it, but uh, we do see him pick up two uh, quill blades for uh, the null, null fire, fire. That's what we were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I would have liked to see him go for a fireband into a geometer first, though, in, in this scenario, because he wants to be able to tank up a... He's... Ooh, he's going over. Ballsy play. They actually have a very good ward here. This might be disastrous for the Helmer side. They see this entire fight. You see that the Legion side is actually gathering here. Doctor still has a region rune. Flying him at Shrunken. He's going balls to the wall. That's one kill on the Braxus. One kill on the Monkey King. On the sorry, and the Abbot Warden, uh, Rivewalker being out of position right now is going to fall. Monkey King here with the Invis, seeing what he can do, but that is just uh, very well played by Doctor there. And uh, oh, Asaf actually stole the Condor! <laughs> it cost him his life, but I think that is definitely something that they are very happy with because now they cannot do two Congors. Yeah, him denying the token here really makes sure that they they are not fully out of this game yet. If if the Legion side was able to, get on, with a token on Doctor, I don't really believe that Hellborn side had any chance of, of winning the game anymore. They're gonna still get like a lot from this. This is basically like a four for none, a team fight. But at least it's better than also giving Congo away. But yeah, um, it's just the warding situation like. In these kinds of games, you have to check for those kind of boards. It's just too disastrous if you I, don't. I know that Hellborn side is not a big fan of placing wards. Like, Duder is not the the biggest fan of constantly placing wards all around the place because it lowers his farm. And he, and he likes to be able to get a lot of items himself. Um, so I'm I'm not surprised that they didn't check for the ward up there, but it's definitely a mistake by them. Mid lane though. Uh, in the mid lane, yeah, we see in the top lane, by the way, uh, Rivok actually jumping the Lodestone. Lodestone is gonna have his PK up in a couple of seconds, and he is going to be able to survive here. Okay, Marax is jumping the Lodestone there, that is a kill, but uh, they are hunting for them now. We see Prisoner walking into them right here, and we see uh, actually pick up the Monkey King here. Uh, Monkey King is just going to fall. Rivok walked out of there, but... Yeah, I, I, I get like, 
I get do there because, you know, placing wards for your team does kind of blow your GPM. I, I feel the same thing. But in these kind of situations where you're so far behind, you cannot afford this to happen. No, on sure. the other hand, it is like a YOLO play, so they were again behind at this point. So they kind of need to make those YOLO plays. But uh, yeah, it, it just feels a little bit sloppy. We do know oh. that like we, they, they are known a team known for like a lot of um, corner kills, like sneaky corner kills even. So, as like the Legion side here, you know that's going to happen. And actually, uh, sorry, we see um, Fall jumping the Raxus here. Raxus uh, running away, running for his life. Fall jumping the 180 degrees in the wrong direction, but it doesn't matter because Doctor has infinite mana with 16 icon charges at this point. And uh, another thing I actually want to point out, uh, by the way, is uh, a very good heads up play from Fall. When he jumps them in the Conger Pits, he activated the Shrunken first. He saw their HP, he saw, okay, the only way I'm going to die... And that's a kill from across the map. The only way I'm going to die is if I get stunned by the Rexus, and then like, you know, uh, ultimated by the by the Rift Walker. And you cannot activate items while you're flying anymore. Or for 0 0.8 seconds after flying. So him actually activating his Shrunken first and then flying in is just a really heads up play by him. A really safe play, but it's he didn't need anymore. He just needed like a little bit of stronger for it to burst like three targets and then kill the rest. For sure. Uh Fall is known for his doctor, so I'm not surprised that he he's aware of how to play it accordingly to the each situation. It's a really good uh, heads up on the popping this drunken before he went. Yeah, he's just like if you just don't get bursted down, you're tanky enough to just survive that stuff. Anyway, we see them in the top lane right now. We see Silhouette and Monkey King in the bottom lane. Actually, Doc jumping in on the Rift Walker there. That is definitely the time to want to go for Hellflower on the Maraxxus. Maraxxus is going to fall there. That's a good trap though by the Elf Warden. Dr. Paulson might be in a little bit of trouble if he doesn't get out here quickly enough. Silhouette does have the no Five Blade right now. No Five Blade popping in the auto attack. Silhouette is going to get Pop a Shot in the background. Pop Silhouette is going to swap out. Uh, two people are going to fall actually on the Legion side. Uh, Vulka running for his life here. Um, Papa Master and the Prisoner just a little bit too overconfident. They're tanking towers. They're not really that tanky. Especially with the Elder Parasite on the Papa Master. And that was actually not even that bad of a fight for the Hellburn side, I think. Considering they picked up the, the Revoker initially. I'd say that was the best outcome possible for Hellburn side. This also provided a bit of uh, space for both Silhouette and Monkey King with the two kills they got on top of it. Both their cores survived while well. Uh, Legion's puppet fell down and it lowers his form and his momentum in this game. Yeah, I guess like Puppet Master is not really having a big impact this game for sure. But the uh, Silhouette also stacking up the Null Fire Blades right now is like suddenly with Null Fire Blades, Silhouette is here when it starts doing damage. Yeah, However, it attacks so fast. Yeah, it's just a mana drain as well. Like you saw the, I, I didn't know if you saw the prisoner, but prisoner has five hundred max mana. If you hit him like three times, he doesn't have like mana to use his abilities anymore. Lodestone, not exactly the same story, but similar, as he doesn't even have a chalice. So like no five blade is just in, so insane against those targets. Uh, meanwhile, we see Riftwalker trying to pick up a staff of the master. Right. Can you explain uh, why? Uh, that's a dual item. Um, I mean, it's good if you're fighting in base, I guess, but especially like without without Jade Spire, the it's just it increases the cast range by 200, I guess. And you can like pull people back in the into basically like your pit or your or your your well. But. Staff of the Master on Riftwalker is uh, a not my favorite a, item. A bit of a questionable item. Maybe he really wants to buff the Emerald Warden. That makes sense, actually, if he does that. Because the bird the does help a lot. Yeah, but if it's besides that, I would have liked to see him maybe Cheap Stick or Storm or Tablet or, or some support items for his Sand Scepter. Sand Scepter would be a great item. There's against, a, against the Hellflower. Yeah, there's a lot of good items this game, support-wise, that you can help your cores with. 
Ooh. Well, okay, without checking. What kind of buff do you think that the doctor took? Uh, I would say damage, since he already has enough mana region with icon charges. Yeah, he did actually pick damage. I would have said like the HP or the mana pool, because it just makes sense. Also with the healing and stuff. Because that's the only thing you want on the doctor, right? But he felt like he there there are some really squishy targets and we might have a fight in the bottom line actually. It's he, like 4% damage increase is actually a lot when you think about it, especially on a hero like where you can fly in and you need to burst the target. Uh, so I, I do see as to why when I can see now that he has 20 icon charges and how and the gnomes, he, he doesn't feel like he needs that many more stats at all. So I, I like the damage pickup. Yeah, it makes sense in that regard. Also because like you have a lot of percentage. Oh, ultimate in the mid lane, but it's going to miss. Actually, Doctor saw that. Doctor popping his trunk and jumping in on Rifflock here. Uh, Doctor jumping more. He's looking for the Emerald Ward and Emerald Ward gets health flowered. In his back line, Monkey King and Miraxis actually get stunned. Dr. Pulsar without any mana now. Dr. Pulsar manning up here is going to get walked into the trap, but the Dr. Pulsar is just too tanky. Yes, 2.6k HP. Yes, he picked up a demonic, actually. And that is an immortal Dr. Pulsar with 24 icon charges. 17-0, 760 GPM. Paul is having a great game. You could say that, yes. <laughs> and that is GG. It's called by the Hellburn side. Uh, well played to both teams. Um, yeah, the Dr. Pulsar just being a, a very weak laning here, but once the Dr. Pulsar gets off the ground, you can clearly see that these here, these players know how to use that. So, uh, I think that is game number two going to Team Tim Tak, something like that. Uh, top Green Tak, and uh, well played at both sides. We will be... Back in a bit, I believe, with the the uh, winners brackets coming right up. So uh, that is actually going to be you, Hansi, right? Oh, are we already reached that point? Well, well, well. Looks like I am gonna ban Doctor next game. I mean, unless you got replaced, which I would understand to be fair. <laughs> like by like a, a catapult or a random ch random chatter in Twitch chat. I think uh, Kevin is just gonna whispering him uh, a neutral creep in the jungle instead of me. So, exactly. Perfect. Probably okay, so um, thank you for joining me here. And uh, I wish you the best of luck in your next game, dude. Thank you, dude. Okay. And chat, we will be right back with the next few games.
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the final of uh, the Paradise League. Noah Shark versus Top Green Tag. Best out of five. We just came back from the loose bracket where we saw uh, the Hellburn side here take a dominating uh, victory over uh, Team uh, Krakenwagen. Yeah. And so they're right back into the business here and uh, we can see them. Uh, against our current uh, winner's brackets victors, uh, Noah's Shark. That's the way you pronounce it. I have info it's inside information. I am once uh, or once again joined uh, by uh, Sate, who also joined me last week. Uh, Sate, how are you doing? I'm doing good, uh, Dutch. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it was uh, nice to have you come cast with me again. It's been lonely, like just talking to myself for three hours. That does get that does weigh on your soul a little bit. I get so, that, uh, and, and Hans is not great company, so no, no, got an no, upgrade no, 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 so no. far. True, he doesn't, he doesn't rack on full kind enough, you know. Yeah, I was miss, I was missing the, the cheap jabs every now and then. And anyway, uh, we see a uh, prisoner, engineer, adrenaline, fade, electrician, and keeper, bands, and monarch as a first pickup. Again, the fade. Uh, I don't know if you're already watching last game, Sate, but we see the fade consistently being banned by both teams. But I've never actually seen it being picked up. Uh, well, I haven't played this current iteration of Fade after they gave it some changes. They buffed it, right? So, so the only maybe change it's just that good is now. the Q. So the Q does like create the illusion now. Andromeda. Yeah, yeah. I can, I'm reading here. Mm. I mean, it must just be really good. I mean, why not? Why waste a ban? So. Yeah, they, they, they clearly don't want to play against it, or maybe they just don't want to deal with it. Um, so it's it's a bit weird, I guess, because um, I've never really seen it be too dominant. And I think in the games that it was not actually banned, um, I've not actually seen it being picked up either. But maybe like both teams just don't want to deal with it. It's, it's I guess, it might be a comfort pick, because playing a, around a fade in the late game is, of course, very difficult. It's a frustrating hero with the, the invisibility and the clear vision, of course. Uh, but uh, they pick Andromeda Forsaken for Hellborn. Very original draft here. Never yeah, I don't think I've seen before. this. No, like fairly rarely picked up by heroes. Forsaken Archer being a very, very weak hero at the moment. <laughs> um, yeah. Especially combined with the defensive support. Yeah. So, um, what would you really... So, okay, you have these two heroes right now. Oh, scrap pickup, interesting. Those are the two supports for the Hellburn side, or for Legion side already picked, actually. So that does give the Hellburn side a lot of information here. I, to me, that indicates they want to do 2-1-2. Two, two. I yeah. think that's what they ran the scrap in last time. Monarch, obviously. Yes. Oh, the Flux. Flux scrap, maybe. I think Kevin doesn't really like to put Flux in, in the solo lane. Usually it's it's in a dual lane, maybe even a tri lane here. So I think yeah. So I think we've seen Kevin. Uh, so Kevin is being uh, we're referring to Puppet Soul here, the blue guy. I uh, we see him pick up Flux a lot more this uh, cycle, where previously he never really picked it up. Um, and he just really likes the hero. It's a tanky kind of in your face hero, and it does kind of work all right against the Forsaken Archer. Um, but also, if the Forsaken Archer just gets like enough farm, or the Flux not enough farm, then Flux is just going to melt still. I mean, you can't really set up those two heroes against each other. Forsaken Archer is obviously going to destroy that hero once he gets some farm. But Flux is is quite good versus the Andro. You can you can pull after uh, if they get swapped out. Maybe try to catch him again. Set up some a team fighting lineup. They don't really have any team fight. So far, as we saw the engineer band in the in the first bands, which is uh, usually paired with that flux. Uh, so interesting to see what they're gonna pick up. So to make this flux really work for them. What other heroes would you consider uh, laning like combi combining with a flux here? I mean, flux is great with a multiple uh, like multitude of heroes. Hag is still unbanned. Flux is great with Hag. It's great with Magnus. It's great with Kraken. What was just banned. Um, so one, maybe uh, the Wretched Hack, I'd say, is, is, would look really good on Legion so far. You need usually two, maybe three heroes to 
to fight this FA of Hellborn. What about uh, a Blood Hunter? I mean, Blood Hunter does have the the synergy. You put the the ultimate on FA, and she can't be swapped out. And she's just gonna die. It's and funny. and you can pull him with discharge. I mean, it it's a great synergy here. That you just have to put the Blood Hunter in your lineup, which is just survive fine. with the Blood Hunter somewhere. Doesn't matter where. Quite yeah, difficult, it's uh, but, difficult. Uh, so yeah, you were mentioning the two-one-two lineup, by the way. Um, do you think there's any chance that the lead, the Helburn side, realizes that and goes for a try lane here? I mean, F is a great try lane hero. As long, along with Andro, they could put, pick up any position four hero to pair with it. Magnus, Magnus, Andro, F A is really strong. Behe, Magnus, F A uh, would be really strong. Do I you mean, want like a... another core? You do, right? N yeah, besides you do. The FA. Yeah, I, I think, I think you. I mean, the way Han is now, I think you want to at least play dual core most games, depending yeah. on what Legion has right now. They're not, they're very uh, not greedy, right? They they don't really have any like concrete scaling so far, but usually you want to have two cores at least. So maybe put a core in, in the mid lane for help on. And then I'd say uh, something like a Drunken Master would look good here because they don't really have a lot of lockdown on the Legion side. And I'm thinking that like a Drunken Master can just kind of feel like the role of besides the fh is you know bullying people it's kind of stunning people you can dodge the monarch stun it yeah i mean drunken would have been good but we're not gonna see it now where they answer with wretched hack and pharaoh yeah so uh pharaoh being an interesting pickup can you get pulled through the mummy walls with the flux ulti you can yeah but i don't think you can be pulled with the the magnetic search I'm, so, I'm 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 kind of wondering because these days Flux Ultimate does actually pull people over cliffs, I believe. Yeah, I mean Ultimate for sure pulls pulls people out of uh, uh, barrel walls, but I don't think you can yeah. you can do it uh, defensively. So Pharaoh, of course, being a, a very iconic pickup of the uh, of Fulka here, as in the suicide role, he's uh, we've played with him a lot where he played that hero, and he's just so good at it. He always yeah, just like it's... managed to get like good pickups, and especially with something like a hag, uh, those are two heroes that can jump like a very long distance to initiate. Yeah, I mean, so... uh, it's uh, it's really great with the hag. You set up, you, you stun the target with your ultimate, you put him in a wall, and you just get deleted by a bad blast. So yeah, yeah I like and the they do of course. So far. They have their monarch, of course, to save him. But uh, question is then: Is the monarch going to be? enough to save because the monarch w doesn't prevent that much damage until you level it later okay and that's the beam that's the tri lane hero i guess so we see a pharaoh solo lane a hag solo lane and a tri lane uh the question is of course are they going to aggressively tri lane or defensively and then we see the hellbringer and the madman pickup from the legion side now flux ultimate plus a hellbringer ultimate is of course a combo you're basically yeah, I mean... going to stun their entire team yeah, it's impossible not to stun five people if you combine those two abilities as Hellbringer has such a big radius on the ultimate already. And I like Hellbringer as it is a core that can kind of go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Hag a bit later in the game. As well as the Madman, which is obviously a very strong core and carry here for Legion. So yeah. two really strong lineups so far for both teams. I do like the Madman against the Forsaken Archer though. Because Madman is a hero that can just kind of sit on the Forsaken Archer. The auto attacks and yeah. in the late game i would give the edge to the madman actually if it's equal because something like a basher or something on the madman is just going to melt the forsaken archer i mean with six items but but as well in a one versus one situation but the the fa can hit five targets so it's uh True. it's a bit different in, in terms see of see five DPS. people actually going into the uh, hellborn jungle here they uh were spotted out by a quick ward that was played by andro so they're not going to get anything off. There's a block on the medium, sort of small camp that they're going to see. And um, this is just a big choo-choo train. Just yeah. taking a little tour. They didn't save any gold for counter wards, but they will obviously try to counter that uh, easy camp as has uh, as a counter ward in oh, he, oh, he does, yeah. He, he just got it. That's uh... Behemoth picking up the, the mana battery here is uh, interesting. If it's, they were, I guess they were expecting a tri-lane and they're actually going to get a tri-lane. 
I mean, uh, the mana battery is really great in, in Tri versus Tri, but usually you are you are starting from max range on Behe, so you don't get to utilize yeah, the mana battery as much as you would on another hero. But it, it's definitely not bad here. And what would you replace it with? Two more minor totems for some extra mana, maybe. Uh, Wind Whistle, sure. obviously. Dumb Wind Whistle is, is great, but not, not Dumb a question. Behe, man. You should have known the answer already. Okay, uh, we've seen the Vulka in the, on the Pharaoh against Madman. Okay, so how many seconds do you think before he's going to feed this Madman? Uh, a long time. I don't see Madman being able to kill the Pharaoh, even though it's Vulka on it here. So Fair it should enough. be a pretty equal lane here in the bottom lane. I'd I say. think actually Pharaoh might have that edge because of his Q and because of uh, his auto attack uh, difference. Because we see that auto attack like 57 to 59 on the Pharaoh and only like 48 to 52 on the Madman. So the Pharaoh should have an advantage there. Pharaoh actually is choosing to level his E here. It's hurting him a little bit. And in the top lane is probably where the most of the action is going to happen. Um, I guess the tri lane against the tri lane uh, with both camps also being blocked. They actually missed or they didn't block the pull. They used the ref to block the pool. I don't know if they like intentionally missed that or not. Oh, but, I think um, they tried to block the pool, obviously. Uh, the medium. Oh, and that's a good block, actually. Forsaken Archer, uh, sorry, Flux is actually locked in there. Forsaken Archer and Andromeda choosing not to go. Uh, there's no heal on the Monarch right now, so... Yeah, I guess like the, the, the Flux isn't really the target you want to go on here. It's, and I think... Uh, it's very hard to bring down the Flux you, you want to go for one of the... The supports here if you want to try to fight i think hellborn is just trying to play defensive right now actually uh, Nancy might be in a little bit of a poor spot here if he doesn't get through no he does actually okay so very passive play from the hellborn side here i would say uh there are actually two people rotating over uh scrap scary. Yeah, is going to get oh uh b he picked up the scrap uh... Oh, and actually one. see him here. This actually might be a dead scrap. The scrap is... Oh, Ephemite, uh, it's a Bloodlust in the mid lane. Uh, oh, wow, Hellbringer actually getting Bloodlust against Hag. That's impressive. I mean, I think uh, as a term of this mid lane, lane matter, matchup, it's, it's pretty even. I I think Hag is maybe a little bit favorite, depending on who you are. But it's 9 and 4 versus 10 and 4. So CS is completely even as he gets that kill. Great job by Hellbringer here. Get yeah, the W, of course, spot. does a lot of damage on the Hellbringer. Yeah. And if you can consistently hit it, it's really good. But I feel like if you're good, uh, if you're if you're keeping it, if you're paying attention, you can dodge that with uh, with the Hunt. Sorry, with the Flash of Darkness. Yeah, just standing far away. Usually, yeah. Uh, if, you, if you miss it a couple times, you lose a lot of pressure here. But Hellbringer has been hitting it every time, picking up a haste rune here in his bottle. So he's yeah, and I look to further his lead in the mid lane. I was gonna say like uh, a lot of this, I feel for the Legion side comes down to how well this Hellborn, Hellbringer is going to do. Because Hellbringer is, can be such a scary hero, but um, you need to get farm on him. Like, you need to get that staff on him, and then he becomes that scary hero. And he's so the, easy to kill early on. The Hellbringer is very important to the Legion's game plan here. <laughs> yep. But they're doing a great job early on. The one AOE uh, hero they have, right? Yeah. It is. It's, it's their secondary core here. Uh, in the tri of Legion. Top lane and is very passive. Actually, in the top lane, we're going. Flux pulls in on the Forsaken Archer. Forsaken Archer going to get stunned here, but nothing going on because of a good wall by the Behemoth. Uh, the wall actually being used quite defensively there. And in the bottom lane, we do actually see the Madman dominating the Pharaoh. I'm guessing that is... Or dominating. Uh, it is uh, 11... Uh, sorry, 19 to... 20 to 1 uh, the, uh, for the Pharaoh and 24 to 3 for the Madman. So Madman has a small advantage there. Hellbringer with the top, with the haste room, going top actually. We see Forsaken Archer fall. They might get some more kills. Hellbringer might actually not even be necessary here. Uh, they might choose to dive here. We see a port coming in. Uh, there's no ultimate though on the Hellbringer, so that is very greedy. Good kill from Hellbringer. Andromeda is going to fall, but the Monarch might be in tower range here. No, he's just just outside of tower range. Good position by him to not uh, fall into that. And I mean, the Hellbringer had the haste rune, so he just rotated over, even without his level 6. They see the Hellbringer come back here, actually. 
Yes, no, um, here. it's kind of painful having to run back to mid as he places a ward directly on top of the help on ward here, so that's gonna be countered soon. They shoot down to that enhance. See, actually being a really bad spot here, being blocked off by the scrap, so by the, by the behemoth wall. But uh, the monarch saving them and the hellbringer is still here. Actually, hellbringer with yeah, his boots now. Two FA take so much damage. And they're just they're just not really being able to lane here. Now this does actually mean that the hack came back quite a bit in the mid lane. Yeah, it's uh, really fortunate for the hack that hellbringer is used to like almost a minute here. He's up to 300 GPM, 31 and 13. Because the Hellbringer was actually dominating the hack in the mid lane just by spamming the W a lot. And um, I think the big issue comes down in this matchup from that the Hellbringer is e able easily to uh, get his spells off on the hag, but not the other way around. Yeah. To hit I the mean, sonar scream, you really need to walk in his face. But good job by Fall here recovering. This is going to be important if Hellborn is going to rally this game. And actually, in the top lane, we might have an negation. Uh, the sitting the runes for the hag here, for the Hellbringer. Auto lane. Vulka is oh. almost killing Madman. He got the oh, kill on Madman. Vulka actually gets the kill on the Madman. That is huge for them. Madman Vulka was doing actually. Vulka things. Yeah, Vulka doing this things, doing magic on the Pharaoh. I don't actually in top lane. That is a fall on the Andro. Andro like being very squishy right now without boots, just falling to the two supports there. And uh, Hellbringer in the mid lane right now. Um, there is no mana on the hag, so. He used the Malthus to get try done. and kill the Hag and, and miss, or miss the kill, uh, apparently, I would assume. But he's gonna pressure the, to the mid tower here, so it's gonna be quite good for, for Legion anyway. Yeah, I would like for him to not just let his Malphas fall here, though. Because Malphas does not take, like, Malphas has a lot of HP region, and Malphas has a lot of armor and doesn't really take that much damage from creeps. So you can still, like, farm a lot with him. You can even just send it into the enemy jungle and farm that easily. It expires it's... here. He's gonna put some pressure on the mid tower here. That's yeah. gonna be good for Legion. If, they, if that falls early, it can be really uh, influential. You can really abuse the, the enemy jungle. True, and you can also, fall. like, the, the Forsaken Archer needs that jungle to, like, farm and recover this game. Because yeah. Forsaken Archer is level 3. And without that jungle, basically triple stack is so difficult. I mean, the XP lead is really bad from for this uh, top lane here. I mean, it's really rough for FA to be level 3, 2 on and or 3 on Behe. So. Uh, Haik also, by the way, smoking into the bottom lane. Uh, they're gonna run into the Pharaoh here. They place the Red Forts. The Madman is out of position. Madman is going to fall. Madman, I think, saw the port from the Haik, actually, with the smoke, because he placed his own ward, which is good by him. But then he did not play passive enough to not get caught there, so... Small misplay by him. Uh, this is a second death now, and that is definitely something that the Hellborn team is definitely looking for. So, like, shutting down... Maybe their carry is gonna get shut down, but they're also shutting down the Mammon at the same time. I mean, and right now, Archer, uh, Hack is uh, 350 GPM. I mean, he's he's equal to, to the Hellbringer despite the despite the early first spot. So, so Ford did a really good job here recovering uh, up, uh, up a couple of CS as well, so... Yeah, and so like, um, right, right now though. also, because like the hack, uh, oh, sorry, in the top lane, yeah, they're going on the behemoth here. Behemoth getting a stun off. Andro uh, need, may need to run for his life here. They're, they're fine. Andro not having boots, and the behemoth not having boots, but a wind whistle. Shout out to that. Uh, it is actually hurting them a bit, because they're just so easily caught off guard. Especially once Flux gets level 6, they are going to be in a lot of trouble in the top lane, I feel. Yeah, their but, uh, twin supports on 70 GPM, it's it's a really tough spot for, uh, for yep. Hellborn in terms of those uh, supports, but they are doing really good in the solo lane, Hag is doing really well, Volka obviously on the Pharaoh, uh, scored two kills on Madman so far, so he's doing really good as well, so he's yeah, but he's not really Hag, he's, he's not really locking the down the, the, yeah, but they still see him. Yeah, they know, so Hellbring is probably going to take mid tower for this, that's going to be really impactful. Yeah, and um, I would like maybe to see the 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 Pharaoh rotate middle as well to kill that Hellbringer because yeah. I feel like killing the Hellbringer might actually have a higher priority right now than killing the um, getting the other targets. And we actually see only two people in the top lane with only the Monarch and the Flux being there. Scrap actually sitting middle right now, 
They may have seen him smoke up here. Hellbringer porting to the top lane with the region activated. They they will spot this out. So they know it's going on. Hack has ultimate up and has a, no TP ready. Pharaoh does have TP ready. So I think they're going to dive top lane. They might know that the Hack doesn't have teleport because he ported bottom. So this might actually be a really big team fight for the top lane if they get these three kills here. And they can probably take the tower right after. Just setting up and it's a flux oh. ultimate. Hellbringer not actually there though. Triple stun from Behe. Nice triple stun from Behemoth. Uh, triple crippling pollen. The Monarch might fall here if he's not careful. No, Monarch is oh, going to dive. TP. Flux is manning up and that's the Hellbringer ultimate. The Behemoth, uh, the Andro is going to fall. I'm saying Archer and the Behemoth are all going to fall. In the bottom lane though, Madman actually dodging the Hag ultimate. Really well played by him, but it's not enough to survive because the Pharaoh plus the Hag and the Mummy Wall is just too much damage for him to survive that. But that is three players plus potentially a tower in the top lane that are going to fall. And that is mainly because like they're just so underleveled, right? Forsaken Archer being level four, uh, Andro level three, Behemoth level three. They just didn't do the damage. Them. They have a tough time really fighting this Flux. And he's 1200 HP here on Strength Boots. It's very hard to bring him down, especially with the Monarch behind with the level 3 Chrysalis. 55% damage reduction as well as the 40 HP per second. So. Yeah, and 90 instantly as well. It's yeah. it's a lot of healing in the early game. So yeah, they just it's like want to take control of this mid. jungle. As much yeah. as they can, yeah. I mean, uh, Hellbringer is having a really good game now, 450 GPM. Yeah, and every time, like, the Hellbringer has the ultimate. Um, he, and he hits, like, Andro, Behemoth, and Forsaken Archer. All of these three heroes are just going to fall. There's nothing really that they can prevent. And actually, they're going to take some of the stacks here now. Stacks, Hellbringer yeah. uh, just Painful. nuking it down. Yeah, that's not what you like to see as a Forsaken Archer. Or as a Behemoth, for that case. Oh, that's a good jump by the Pharaoh. I don't think the Scrap is going to survive this, but... Like, two triple stacks, I believe, or double stacks for one kill on the Scrap is something that's... I think you're quite I happy that's, with that. that's okay, considering they they rotated five people. They're not in any lane. They have two supports standing in the jungle. They're not, like, defending mid. They're not getting farm on lanes. So, I think as for Legion, you're yeah, pretty happy with that. Mr. Madman is also is 0-3. But it doesn't matter because he's still like 350 GPM. Yeah, he just he got just, the tower. So yeah, he just like he just last hits creeps in the bottom lane. Here. What do you think that the flux is actually going to go for? Uh, he went astro here, so maybe he's just tanking up. PK would be really good. Would you go uh, for uh, some magic armor? I mean, the investments obviously great this game. So yeah, because of the high HP pool that's, that uh, Flux has. Uh, actually, Flux smoking up into the top lane. He is all by himself here. I don't think the ward scouted him out there. However, Hellbringer picked up the Alchemist Bones. What do you think about that, Dutch? Um, if the enemy team is looking to slow down this game, it makes sense. But I would have 100% here gone for a tablet. Because the Pharaoh, right? Yeah, tap it into to, into the early staff. Maybe try to fight I would, a lot. I would like go Saxstone. Saxstone into tablets. I like the Saxstone because of the healing part and just because it provides with some extra stats. But I mean, um, the, the Alchemist bones, as you said, if, if it turns into be a farming game where you just tra trade farm, he's gonna pull ahead and really get get really big. Uh, yeah. Doing the race to the game. What it does second, do sorry. though. It, yeah, no worries. It, it, what it does do is it helps with uh, farming a lot, because Hellbringer has a lot of abilities that just spread damage equally. So um, you can like just outbone the, creep, the big creeps and farm like stacks and camps a lot easier that way. So that definitely helps. But um, yeah, it, it does look like the Hellbringer side is trying to shut down this game a little bit, or like, slow down this game a little bit. Second Archer just farming with like uh, the refreshing ornament right now, it's... I mean, it, the hero just still doesn't have any damage at this point. It's so slow. And they are sitting him with basically like four heroes here. It is a really a rough game for him. He... Is still maxing the Q, which he probably should. Because the... Um, the Q is also just a great farming tool. But if you're looking at the lanes, right, even the Hag is barely farming this. Uh, he's sitting in the jungle right now. We see Scrap actually chilling in the mid lane. We see the Flux chilling in the top lane with the Monarch behind. And they have some decent vision to see that's what's going on. And Madman 
currently sitting in the jungle, what the which the Hellbringer was occupying before. Hellbringer having an infest rune actually going into the um, enemy jungle here, and that is um, he, uh, he may have been spotted there actually by I the. I think he was seen on that rep ward. Yeah, maybe it was just on the edge. So they might know that he's here, and he's a level eleven right now. Now that's dangerous. Yeah. And that's a Flux ultimate into the Hellbringer ultimate. Keep the second the Archer on. is going to actually maybe survive here. No, Malphite is going to finish him off. A Flux in the front line taking a lot of damage. Feral ultimate in the back line hitting two people. Hitting, very importantly, the Hellbringer. Hellbringer is going to maybe him. survive. No, Hellbringer is going to fall because of the finishing off from the hack, from the hack there. Uh, Monarch might not be in a bad spot, but there in the back line we see Madman actually going in. Madman charging in together with Scrap with very low HP. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to get anything off here. here. No Madman man. actually finishing off the hack. Hack no blink. Uh, Pharaoh manning up against, but he doesn't have dust. With the rocket, oh, he didn't. He doesn't have dust, and actually the Malfas is 400 movement speed. Malfas might just finish him off here. Uh, a rune spot. It is DD rune. Um, I think he is going to fall here, Man, right? Malthus is so powerful, almost killing Pharaoh. He's gonna be okay. Yeah, because the Malthus stun. these days has like the little AOE dots that like uh, passively does damage. Aura. Yeah. So much damage. I mean, the the Malthus uh, was really impactful that fight, but I think that was good fight for Hellborn. I mean. So it was a three for four team fight, I think, but they used all the big abilities. The, the big problem, I think, is that like the the, the Forsaken Archer just died again instantly. Yeah, I mean, this is such a hard game for FA. He's 0-3 and one, level seven. He he really needs to buy Tome actually, right? Uh, Tome unlocks at level or 15 minutes, right? Uh, let me check. Yeah, 15 minutes. So, I mean, a Tome would be really impactful for him. Maybe get I some feel levels. Yeah, maybe, but I would also just like it more on the Andro, still. I mean, you need 6 on Andro, but as soon as you have that, you don't really need the experience. He's going to try to get 6 here in the top lane, hopefully. So he can uh, get to swapping this FA every time he gets pulled. Oh, I just realized they had the they had, they had 4x as well. 4x chilling in the top lane right now on Behemoth and Andro. I don't even know if they're actually going to be able to kill the 4x. I mean, they're going to try to slow it down, but he's definitely going to do some damage with this tower here. Like, the important part is that you just try to last hit it, right? Yeah. Be hard. They got it, though. Uh, yeah, they got it. So that's actually a lot of goals. And that's basically doubling the GPM with the Andro there at that point. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, but uh, also the the Madman just got another kill there. And we see Madman might actually choose to go for an instant shrunken. Um, Hag ultimate. Cleaver, right? Oh, sorry, yes, maybe it's a bite actually, yeah, the bite be clean instead. Hopefully it doesn't um, get strong in here. Yeah, I was thinking, like, they, they, Hag Ultimate doesn't go to Shrunken anymore, without staff. No. So, they don't actually have any damage if the Madman chooses to go for a Shrunken. And since the Hellbringer did go for an Elk Bone, uh, I wouldn't hate it, because it allows you to just farm lanes, to some extent. Actually, in the top lane, we see Andro falling to the Flux and the Scrap. Uh, there was a Flux ultimate used. But yeah, that was an Andro with Striders and level 5 still. It's it's a rough game. I mean, yeah, it, it is a rough game. They're by, only behind 5.7k, 5, 5 almost 6k gold here. I, I, I think Hellborn has a, a really good chance of coming back here. As soon as this Andro gets level 6, it starts Oh, bottom lane, it, actually. Pharaoh time. running into the... the, the, uh, the uh, Busy here. And Busy is going to get bursted down. Madman falls instantly because of the hack and the Pharaoh jumping him. Pharaoh ultimate wasn't even used and Melfa's ultimate was used. But Monarch was not close enough to actually prevent that damage with the Crystalis. Crystalis having only... Predict actually, the, the bad pass. I mean, he one-shotted him. Absolutely deleted him. He only has a thousand HP here on Madman. Yeah, and that's kind of the problem always with going the mana boots, say. Eh? It's so good early game, but uh, you need to tank up a bit and... Busy not having vestments here hurts him a bit, I think. I mean, you're not as tanky compared to Steam Boost, uh, for sure, so... Oh, Behemoth being in a bad spot. Behemoth is definitely going to fall there. Behemoth popping his ultimate for... Uh, just to say hi, I guess. 
And oh, yeah. we do actually see the tablet on the on the Hellbringer. I still I do like that still. I think that's a, always a good pickup versus this Pharaoh. It's it's such a nuisance and and we know Volca, you and me. We know Volca's gonna find yeah. him every time. Just, so, by the way, just uh, look at the bottom line. I just love this. And Malfas the, and Vorax just Warwick. pushing out the lane. So disgusting, actually. It's like they have two extra heroes just pushing out lanes. I mean, that's the, the value of the scrap. The, the Vorax always having impact, spamming that and getting a lot of extra gold on, on uh, scraps. So. Yeah, okay, we do actually see for a second Archer coming back a bit. We see him clear. I don't know if it's a triple or double engines. Uh, I'm actually curious. Do you think that port blocks the camp? That ref fort? No, it doesn't. It's it's outside, but I feel like it just might. I mean, it's outside, but I think it's just outside, outside. But we'll we'll see here in twenty seconds when. Uh, I am kind of curious because uh, that is actually another opportunity to flame Volca. It's quite on the edge, so we we hope it blocks here for from the Obviously. caster side. <laughs> uh, we might actually have a small engagement in the top lane. We see Flux uh, Monarch uh, running for the rune and Andro casually walking into him. Uh, no flux ultimates, so they weren't interested in taking that team fight. There's no, a DD no rune though. That's a, that's a free Kong, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it blocks. Oh, here. it blocks. Told oh, you. Typical Volca, yeah. Maybe typical they tried to triple st triple stack it and it only went double because of Volca. Hagger's gonna Next. take bot tower here though. Uh, uh, they actually uh, spotted the them taking Conger with the with the rockets. Um, so they know the Conger is being taken. Now you don't. Uh, really need to be care scared of uh, any PK engagement from Behemoth. And Volka actually getting jumped in the mid lane. There is uh, a lot of damage coming in. Is he going to be able to survive? Andro there with the swap, choosing not to use it. Uh, Hellbring ultimate on top. Hellbring ultimate is probably... Oh, actually Flux chasing with the PK that he recently bought. And Andro is going to fall as well. That is two kills for the Hellbring side. Hellbring clearly not uh, willing to take that engagement there. Um, I think the PK and the Flux just caught him off guard there. Yeah, I don't think, I don't believe he showed it before, and as I said, the, we, we, as we talked about on the, the flux, maybe the PK, definitely the best one, he picked up both here. He's, and uh, now they have the Malfas again, so they can just push middle. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're gonna do a lot of damage to this tower, Malfas absolutely breaks towers. Yeah, I think Malfas still has actually a bonus damage uh, modification against uh, structures, if I'm not mistaken. I think something like that hit. I think it's, it, it used to be 75%. I think it's 25% right now. 75% was a little a little busted. But uh, yeah, look what they're doing right now. They're just like as if the second archer wasn't suffering enough yet. They farm the stacks and they block two camps. It's just... It's all like about making the second archer suffer. Yeah, and by the way, you were I right. It is need a cleaver on the Batman. They, they're trying to find it. Beans is trying to find this ward uh, from Max, but he hasn't found it yet. The, the, the ward does spot it though, so... If yeah, he maybe if he presses the W at some point there, he's gonna still get it, because that ward is otherwise going to be staying up there for three... Uh, for, uh, sorry, six more minutes, actually. Yeah, that's gonna be very impactful if it, if it does, so... Yeah, and like, Pharaoh is trying to look for kills, but Pharaoh just doesn't really have the team to, f to kill people with, right? Because... Forsaken I mean, Archer him and Hag can kill anyone, but uh, yeah, true. They together can kill anyone, as long as the monarch is close enough. The Hellbringer finished staff here, and and Hag is looking at Grimoire. He has the gold for it right now. He's gonna TP back and buy it as well. Yeah. Yeah, that is of course going to be very impactful, and I think that is probably going to be then a shrunken next on the Hag, if I had to guess. I would probably get shrunken. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. Otherwise, the, the Malfas just does too much damage and stuff. You, you, you're level 16 on hack here with Grimoire. They can do, they can one shot literally any hero. Maybe they're gonna look for engagement, but at the same time, the staff so, on Hellbringer is very impactful. Although he's Hellbringer smoked team. up. Uh, actually, a lot of smokes happening here. Invis Behemoth as well. Other. Three people. Hellbringer oh, no. might be in a very Hellbringer bad spot caught. if he gets caught. No, actually, oh. that was the flux that jumps first. Fair, blocking the Pharaoh ultimate. Hack might be in a bad spot, and that's a Hellbring ultimate on three people. Uh, Pharaoh's going to fall. Behemoth's going to fall. That's a flux uh, ultimate from the hack. Hitting the flux there. And it's a big for second archer ultimate. Hitting basically everyone. And it might actually win in the team fight here. One well, he, he HP. Did he purchase? No, he didn't. Doesn't have that yet. Um, it's, let's see. Hellbringer jumping. 
He's going to port oh. away. He's going to be fine. He's going Hellbring to survive there. Out. And both the Madman wow. and the uh, Hellbringer actually surviving there because they ported out. But that was a huge forsaken archer ultimate. They I were mean, all funneled into that narrow pathway and just the arrows hit like for full damage everyone in their team. That fight looked so bad for Hellborn initially and they just came back and almost got the Madman. Madman dodged the last uh, hit from FA with the Stalk and, and, and Hellbringer TP'd out with literally 1 HP. So great job by Legion not dying on the two cores but it did reduce yeah. the gold lead a bit. 3000 gold lead now. As you said, that was just the Grimoire on the on the hack, right? Yeah, the Grimoire on the hack does so much damage. He didn't solo, he did. He did I think that. no, he hit he hit more people. He hit like three people, I believe, or two. Actually, okay, in the mid lane, Behemoth is in a very bad spot here. It looks like Babby uh, Behemoth, but they don't have Hellbringer ultimate yet. Are they sure they want to fight this Hellbringer jumping the Pharaoh here? Andromeda ready to save him, I guess. That was a small. Cool, Madman chasing the Pharaoh. Pharaoh using the mummy walls. That is not going to be able to block the Madman here, and the Pharaoh is just going to fall. Pharaoh not having his ultimate up either there. And Madman actually picked up the double damage from the top lane, and they're just going to do Congo right now. I don't think they have any vision here, so they. I don't think Hack is going to make any YOLO plays here. I mean, um, that's so rough for help on doing it. Really good after that fight, and then they. Just to trade the entire supporting cast on Hellboy while... Wow. Yeah, yeah, and like, and Behemoth was... The top lane, so. Behemoth was out of position there for sure. I don't know if Forsaken Archer may have not yet healed up, actually. Um, but... The, the, it's, it is the Flux, right? The Flux with his PK is just picking people off left and right. So that is actually just a really good pick up by, uh, by uh, Kevin here, and it's... It's allowing them to play as aggressively as they are, because they don't really have much other lockdown tools besides that uh, Flux actually in the top lane. On hack here. Maybe they can kill him. I he don't. Out. Okay. Yeah, they don't really have the lockdown for him, right? Oh, they, they spotted the, the scrap. I mean, if uh, if they could catch him and then pull him after your TP, then they could kill him. But Flux had cooldown on ultimate. He used it in the mid lane. They couldn't kill him. And that's mid tower that's actually going to fall. That is some much needed gold for the Hellborn side here. Uh, Forsaken Archer slowly recovering. You see that like Forsaken Archer with a null fire blade. And just a null fire blade. It just does so much damage already. So much damage and pumps so fast. And Hack is almost five, 560 GPM here from fall. So Yeah, so fall has been playing the split push game. And um, he's been trying to open up the map, which is really good, right? So instead of trying to fight them in their jungle, Fall just said, okay, if you don't want to farm your jungle, then I will. So he just went bottom, kept pushing there, kept killing the map man, and just opened up the map, forced the enemy to rotate to give your Forsaken Archer some space. Uh, Pharaoh with a Invis rune and a sh or a Shaman Cetrus right now. So he's this might be barrier. a big catch in the top lane actually if they catch the flux here uh, or the madman like this and there's a mummy walls on top they actually get pulled out of the mummy walls andro might be able to hit the stun there that is a dead madman yes and but the flux are they going to catch more uh hack well, coming in from behind on PK. can he get it out hellbringer is not interested in fighting this he's not porting uh the it's gonna get cancelled by something the dreamcatcher hellbringer porting actually hellbringer does have his ultimate up and that's a big bad blast on the enemy team there. Get strong but, delivered. Uh, uh, get rid of and Hag. Oh. Hag just, just got his shrunk and delivered right in time, probably saving him there. Actually, uh, Forsaken Archer saying thank you for the gold to Malfas, because Malfas just died and gave uh, Forsaken Archer 150 gold, I believe. And that is actually a huge turn. I think we saw the GPM from the Forsaken Archer, the Skyrocket there. And that's not a great thing about the Null Fireblade against Malfas. It's just, it deals 1,000 true damage, I believe, or something? Against, no, 800 true damage against summoned, use, against summoned units. And and the Malfas is just yeah getting destroyed by the normal auto attacks as well, so... Yeah. It's just like, it, Malfas has a lot of magic armor. But level 2 Malfas, especially with Staff, I think Staff reduces the HP by like 25% or something. So it's not that tanky. You can easily kill it. And... Two Malfas do give like 150 gold each, I believe, at level 2. And like 200 gold each at level 3. That is just so much gold if you get to kill it. So they might be having to think a little bit more careful about when they're going to use these Hellbringer ultimates. 
because uh, you are kind of giving a Forsaken Archer way back into this game. I mean, the later um, the game goes, the, the more impactful is the, the actual stun of the ultimate and the less impactful the ac actual Mal Malfaces are going to be. Yeah, so. true, but the Malphites still do just like, uh, f at least they soak up just auto attack fire from Forsaken Archer. Mm -hmm. And uh, they just they just cancel PKs. They just deal a lot of like auto or auto attack damage against support. Still, uh, they can block Feral ultimates. They're just really impactful in general. But they I don't mean, really have the lockdown tools to make use of the Malfas auto attacks. Yeah, it's definitely not bad. So, I mean, Hellborn doing a great job recovering the three K gold deficit here. Yeah, um, it's, it's partially the hack just being so impactful in these team fights, right? I mean, Hack, Hack, Hack and, and Pharaoh really carried this game. Yeah. But solo lanes from Hellborn so far has, has proven to be very, very impactful. Can't even and, flame uh, him. FA is uh, Yeah. Yeah, but Fulka, like, on that Pharaoh, we've seen him time and time again. He's just, he always managed to make it work. Yeah, I mean, they did a really good job. Uh, I mean, he got the solo kill on the, uh, the Madman earlier in the game, and then he just had Hack TP down there and kill him over and over, slowing down the Madman. Yep. Allowing Hack to recover as well, so... Yeah, because this was a Hack that was losing middle, actually, eh? Because Hack died yeah. first blood, I believe. They were they were completely even in CS, and then he, he died, so... You might have even, like, uh, this might have actually come back to, as well, the... Hellbringer was dominating middle, and he picked up the haste rune and went top lane, and stayed there for, like, two minutes. That is, like, the moment that Hack kind of got some levels back into his lane. Got That's some levels, you got some from. gold, you just got to sit mid for a minute, maybe a minute and a half, and, and CS and pressure the, the Legion mid tower, so that really let him back into the game. So that may have actually been uh, quite an unfortunate event, because Hellbringer wasn't level 6 at yet at that point, so they couldn't really do much with the Hellbringer there. In the end, I believe they did, it did actually work out in some way, because they got some kills from that. They got killed, they killed the Andro and maybe one more hero? Yeah, really and... Recall. It was it was a long team fight because he kept walking back and forth, and of course, like Hellbring is doing really well this game with his twelve and one stats. So, um, but it's if he set middle in hindsight, and of course, you know hindsight twenty twenty. But uh, if he set middle, he could have denied the hag a lot more farm, and the hag was really just the, is the way, is the playmaker of their team right now. Hag together with Pharaoh picking off people. Uh, Hag, of course, being able to follow up with the Pharaoh, like, so easily. And uh, Madman just doesn't have an escape for the Pharaoh. So, uh, I also have to credit the just the pick here. Pharaoh's Pharaoh is always really great against Madman. Madman is really squishy, but has this stock to always get away. can always be so slippery. And, and with the Pharaoh ultimate plus the wall, you can just lock him down for, uh, what, five seconds Six. or something? Six seconds, Six actually. seconds, yeah. So... Really great pick, Pharaoh versus. Um, versus and this Batman. look at look how tanky he is as well, right? This is a Pharaoh with like no corner buffs whatsoever, I believe, and he has two K HP. He yeah. has no armor, but he doesn't really need it. He has a soul trap to, I think, just like deny the bottling from the from the Madman to finish him off there. And um, yeah, you you, you, do, you don't want to use any spells on him, right? Because they don't really. If you look at the Legion team. They don't really have like high hitting damage spells. No, they right. they want to definitely focus their fire on FA and Hag, and Hag has to pick a B now. I think Paul usually don't like to go yes, for the staff yeah. route, but he's more of a Hellflower kind of guy. But Hellflower into the to the Monarch is quite weak. So and then with the staff uh, now giving superior magic damage, I think that's gonna be his choice. I think Arresto is also a good choice, maybe. Resto's always great on hack, That's but just two, a bit two shrunkens, right? It's de it's definitely good. You can't if he goes resto now. I'm I'm not gonna be mad about it. You're gonna get double shrunken, double BKB, or a double Grimoire, and a double bad bass. So it's it's definitely very good. But the, the rest hack actually putting bottom together with the Pharaoh, they might actually be able to set up double damage on that. Helping it does have a tablet, of course, and there is a monarch behind. They're not actually willing to commit to this. Um. That was maybe smart, as uh, Max was lurking in the background. But with, uh, no helping ultimate, so I don't think they would have. He would have survived, Stephen. I mean, if he didn't get to TP, they would eventually. Uh, Double damage on the hack, though, eh? Hit him down, yeah. 
for sure. They could they could uh could have maybe made made something happen there. Yes, I I'm, I can I think you can assume that he doesn't get the TP because of the Pharaoh mummy uh, because of the Hellfire. Uh, but I guess they were True, just afraid they had, of the they had flux. double tablet, so. True. Okay, actually, uh, in the top, in the at the Kongwer, Madman going for Kongwer now, but they have a very sneaky ward from the Legion from the Helmer side here. Of course, there's also very good wards from the Legion side, so they have full vision of each other. Pharaoh Rocket coming in as well. Wait, does this ward actually see the Kongwer pit? I'm assuming. I'm not sure. Yeah. But uh, let's just assume it does, but they're not gonna do anything about it. They're gonna no. trade. Let them have the conquer. FA finishes out his front and head has another 1600 gold. What, what do you think we'll see on FA here? Maybe Geos? Um. So. Let's see, actually. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. So the, the, the Null Fire Blade is always, of course, like a given on this hero. After the Shrunken. What do you go? Maybe I think just some lifesteal could be good. Uh, a wingbow could be good as well, just for the extra attack range. It helps with the split fire, of course. Um, I don't think a Geos does actually do that much, right? Because what will you really get a Geobane for? Maybe, uh, you could consider getting something like uh, just a uh, Savage Maze. Because I think the Savage Maze also procs on your W. It's just the mini stuns all around are just great, right? You would never get a make a savage mage, right? Like even with the the recent changes. Would savage you? mage is the highest damage um, uh, item in the game. I ra I ran the numbers. It's better than rift shards. It's better than rift shards, yeah. I mean, may maybe with the current inter iteration of savage mage costing six k gold, but given the attack speed as well, it could be really strong. Yeah, it's the mini stuns as well. Because, like, just mini stunning people all over the place is just impactful. But, yeah, it's a bit. I would personally probably go for. I think he's going for a Geoban, actually. I would personally go for something like a Genjuro, maybe. Because I think against their team, you would like the uh, movement speed. Sorry, the, 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 the mobility. Um, but it's just, be Geos, as you said, yeah. He, he just being able to, recipe. like, pop Geos and then, like, run away from the Batman is also just really good. Because I think that is what he's going to be doing most of the time here, just running away from Batman. I, mean, I would also gonna hit five people, you know. So yeah, I, I would like for him to still pick up a Whispering Helm. I think it's just too good. It also just provides some, you know, the creeps. It's it's still like the, they they buffed the Whispering Helm the recent patch, right? So now when you lose your creep, you actually lose like seventy five percent of your cooldown instead of like only fifty percent. So it's a lot more worth to like use your creep for um, either farming a lane or farming a camp or sitting in a jungle somewhere or even like to pick up the enchanter and like get some kills there. Uh, oh, actually, the, the red Ford's scouting out the Pharaoh here. Scrap might be able to survive if he's fast enough. Pharaoh going for it, realizing that he was probably seen. Uh, Hag on top. Hag was smoked there. Uh, Monarch ultimate. Are they actually going to be able to survive Hack? Blink just a little bit too far. Hack, Monarch saving himself. Uh, Hack using the Shrunken to run away the four people, five people, four from the Hellburn side now. I mean, Hack is just so strong at this point with the PKP. Look, he, he blinks into Fog to finish yeah. up the. Finish up yeah, Hunt without start. any fear with the BKB. Yeah, and like the, with the blink, right? It's instead of like six seconds cooldown, you have like 4.5 seconds cooldown or something like that. Yeah, it's even it is. It's, it's like 3.8, so it's 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 absolutely no disgusting. no 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 no. That is uh, a visual bug. So six minus 20 percent. So that's 4.8. Okay. It's like it applies the uh, the the cooldown reduction twice on the tooltip. Hmm. I don't know why math. But um, yeah, it, it, it does actually still uh, properly apply the 20% reduced cooldown, but just that like that 1.2 seconds cooldown reduction is already like so big because you blink in and use all your abilities and then you usually want to get out right after. And it's just, it's it's so hard to catch a hack like this. Because it's blink also- in out in one, in one like blink cycle, it's, it's yeah. really, really strong. But it's the, it's the, the gnomes also that does a lot for the hack here because you have like 2.1k HP, and it's just so much effective HP that, they have, that the gnomes is giving you. And the Grimoire and the gnomes together give you so much life when you, uh, you cast off, and you can often be almost dead if you get like a 
three men. Yeah, bad Bast, you're, you're gonna kill, uh, or you're gonna get, get almost full HP. Hag is deceptively tanky here. Yeah, because the, it, the gnomes is just like a really great pickup on Hag. Because how much mana? Like, the, the, the bat lasts 450 mana. If he gets a resto at this point, that's also more mana usage. That's like you can pop your entire mana pool and heal from full, basically. Uh, Behemoth finally picked up his PK. That's 34 actually, minutes. Now it is time guy. to ultimate some air. I like it. I believe. Fuka taught him the ways. Sung Pop is a quick learner. I believe he can do it. Actually, Behemoth is finally becoming a threat here with that PK. And Hag, uh, Scrap might be in some danger here. Behemoth is smelling blood and... That is not a block off, but is good enough for the kill. He tablets himself to his death, but let's be fair, he was not surviving that anytime soon. Uh, Hellbringer also just not in. Uh, Hellbringer, by the way, picked up a shrunken. Oh, Feral Ultimate picks up two targets there, Flux and the Monarch there. Uh, oh, that was a big ultimate by the Flux, actually ruining the ultimate on the hack. The ultimate, from the pressure from the Madman hitting the enemies. Uh, Hag actually dropped down quite a bit there from the Madman auto attacks, but in the end, it doesn't look like they're gonna get anything done here. The actually the Malphi are uh, ruin or wrecking the the, the illusion from the uh, Andro. Um, I would like to see help on in 40 seconds time when they have uh, BKB up on uh, on Hag again and ultimate, just, yeah. Yeah, just go 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 pick a fight because they're not gonna have. Uh, Malphas for another 90 seconds almost, so they are a lot stronger if they choose to take this fight and Behe Blink, even without the ultimate, is so, gonna be so impactful for them, they're gonna have a second way of having... Uh, he just used the tome, dude. He got like 6 levels or something. <laughs> yeah, level 16 Behe for the next ultimate is also gonna... Be yeah, that is huge. Damage. Now, I will say, he doesn't have Chalice yet. So, that is like... One stun and then back to base for the behemoth. Yeah. Basically on repeat. He but does yeah, have the part. He's, he's, he's working on it. Dodge is going to get there. And Andro has picked up quite a bit of farm. Like uh, quietly 230 GPM now. He has to. I think the yes, he's been and sitting behind it. the FA, right? Probably, but I mean, he did a great That's... job on recovering on these supports, going from 70 GPM to 230 and Absolutely. 160, respectively. Andro has, has 26 last hits, yeah, this game. I think all that gold, especially with the 8 deaths, is just from him sitting behind the FA here with that Grave Locket. And uh, maybe even like some Forex skills here and there. That, of course, does help. Because it's great for pushing out, but if you... I like, I see Scrap as a hero, uh, which you pick up in case you always want the lanes to be pushed out. For example, if you have a Fade. For example, if you have a Deadwood, right? At that point, when you have those heroes, you want the lanes to be pushed out so those heroes can hunt. Because the heroes themselves, they don't actually, um, you know, push out lanes that well. No, and it it forces the enemy to uh, to defend those lanes. And yeah, to shut themselves. Up. Yeah. Actually, the FA went for Whispering Helm, as you asked here, Dodge. After the... Yeah, I, I like it. Like, the Skeleton King, especially... Hack will get post-haste. And oh, the Skeleton King just being around the places is going to help a lot, actually. Hack? Bought the, bought the, the That's going to be demonic, gonna, isn't it? It's gonna get demonic. I would have liked the resto better, personally. Yeah. But but Fall is is a huge fan of this uh, this demonic. He went it on. What hero did he play last game? Uh, uh, the series Doctor. before this, he went. Doctor. Yeah, he went the demonic on Doctor as well. So he, he's definitely a big fan of the demonic and likes it on any any hero basically. It is a lot of armor, but. I think the I mean, resto is double ulti, double strong, and double uh, Grimoire is, is more impactful in the end. Ooh, double damage picked up on a Forsaken Archer. Uh, Hellbringer doesn't actually have vision off... No, sorry, they do. They have the Nightcrawler on the on the hard cap there. So Hellbringer also choosing to go for the Shrunken over the, um, over the resto here is... Um, I think it was a bit too defensive. I don't think... You don't, you don't really care whether or not you uh, take that much damage from, from the enemy team. Because I think you kind of fuel it up most of the time. Fine, you know. Yeah. So I think like just getting double Malphas off and like having those uh, wreck the enemy team was probably... I would say the preferred option. Because you, you, you see like... 
They're not able to fight him by anymore, right? I mean, they're gonna TP back here. They, I think, I think Hellborn is definitely at an advantage in a team fight, as you said. Yeah, this, and this is a 1, 3, 4 for second Archer. Looks like my carry in every team M game I play, basically. But he did manage to get 450 GPM, and that is that is a dangerous second archer at this point. This second archer just like once he gets a chance, he just puts so, output so much DPS. Actually, in the top lane, uh, Behemoth going in on the scrap, missed the stun. Scrap is very tanky, has that gnomes, and Behemoth does have heavyweight and Pharaoh ultimate on top, and that is a dead scrap. Scrap no tablet. Hag coming there to say hi. Um, do you, by the way? They're just dodging and they're just slowly losing map control. So I feel like, actually, oh, by the way, Hellbringer did pick up the uh, the resto now. So it's gonna be super impactful. And I think uh, something we haven't mentioned, but quietly, Legion has picked up four conquer kills. So they have a four to zero conquer kill lead, right? Yeah, well, and Hellbringer one, also picking tell. up four damage buffs here. He is going to start to hurt. Definitely. Actually, I see a lot of smokes in the mid lane. In the mid lanes, a lot of smokes here, but they don't have to scrap yet. And Pharaoh going in, uh, actually it can a strong net on the Forsaken Archer. Malphite's pounding in the auto attack. Forsaken Archer might actually fall here too. The Malphi, Malphi chasing him, hack in the He's background, running. getting the battle blast off. Fish is on him. Mad Mad on the on the uh, Forsaken Archer. Forsaken Archer dies, but the Legion side is in retreat. Mad Mad running for his life here. Behemoth has a stun and a W and up with PK. Come on. It's, he missed the dub in the queue. The dust coming out from Fulka there, but it's not enough actually. And you see how much damage those Malphi are actually doing here. Behemoth is actually being chased down by those Malphi. And those Malphi are oh so fast. Flux with the Hellflower going back in, but no, there's the hack. And it turned it on the Flux. We see. Uh, do we see any vibes? No, not yet. But it's, but he still and there's an ultimate from Pharaoh ultimating the map and map and being stuck inside the mummy walls right now. Not being able to get anything out there. Hack surviving because of that, but Madman with a, a just freshly picked up Wingbow, he is hurting so much. And you said that they didn't have to care about the Malphi. Did you see those Malphi just pounding Obviously in the auto attacks of Second Archer? missed the stun, so uh, Madman got away in the first place. I mean, if yeah, he just true, hit but the, like, one of his, his two stuns, he, they would have killed him. And, and Hack could have helped him uh, kill the Malphi or get away. They did do a lot of damage and they did destroy the FA, as you said. I, I, I didn't expect that. I think he's going to be looking to get a symbol now because he, he actually think. became beat before he yeah. got stunned which was really impressive uh, he, but he, he, saw that he just almost time, died yeah. he died anyway instantly so, so. What, what of the uh, is, ma is magic damage and what is superior magic damage nothing is superior right from the Malphas ultimate no no damage at all so it was just um, let's see what did they put so they went with flux Flux did not get the Hellflower off, which he actually oh, did have. only altered, so that's the only yeah. ability he got off before uh, FA press shrunk, and so he didn't get hit by a single point of magic damage until Batman finished him off with a bear wall when he had like 1 HP, so... But the Malphus Ooh. just uh, did so much damage. He gets a Savage Maze on Hack. Definitely not bad with... Uh, not the one I was expecting to pick up Savage Maze. I mean, I yeah, he hits like like a truck already, Hicks extremely fast with the demonic breastplate. I would have considered the rest of still, like the double deep, double, double everything. Why, not, is... why wouldn't you just like upgrade the staff here though? Of the behemoth? I or mean, I, or the pharaoh? I, I think, I think I would rather buy resto or the savage mace over the the upgraded Be staff every time. Behemoth staff now is quite like good buyback, though, because it's, uh, it's, um, it helps the behemoth survive, which is something that he really badly needs. He won't On the other hand, get to use it though. Dodge. He has 700 mana. He's yeah. If he gets hit by the, by the if he gets hit by the by the Hellbringer ultimate, that is a very dead behemoth, I think. But uh, Feral T or Feral uh, Feral Stop could have been good, yeah. Anyway, uh, Hag actually did sell his gnomes for that, so he is lacking in the magic dam or the magic armor department here, and also in the healing department, because. One thing that has them actually kept has been keeping them in the team fights here is the that the hack just heals a lot in between the fights. Because of the, still, uh... True, he does have the Grimoire. But uh because of the uh the gnomes just healing and actually Behemoth smoking up, they're all five together right now. 
This might be a huge team fight. Madman activating his ultimate, going straight for the tower. And the Behemoth top. choosing not to initiate. They do, of course, have the Monarch. And that's a Pharaoh. Pharaoh walling the Madman here. And that's a big Flux ultimate. Two men, four men. And Hellbring ultimate. It's going on in the background. Second Archer with the symbol now manning up in the background. Uh, Hack yes, um, not just following with 1 HP, he's back now. The Bastion from the Batman is wrecking the Forsaken Archer. Forsaken Archer is going to fall. That was a huge team fight from the Legion side. Madman really well pounding in his auto attacks. By Legion, I mean, as you said, Madman just hitting that entire time. The double stun from Malphas, the Fox pull to make sure every single hero got hit on Hellborn except the Andro, who stayed the out. The entire to team the heck. I mean, just got locked down for like so long and they're all together. The Cleaver is doing more. Axis dodge. Yeah, because we see the Vorax just chilling in the bottom lane, pushing out that with his 226 ultimate damage. And that tower is probably going to fall. That might be it. Vulka can buy back, but we saw, we don't see a buyback out of second Archie. He just bought a symbol. Hack just... He, I don't think he got a single auto attack off that entire team fight. And that is another ultimate in, by the... And there's a health flower on the health Hack. Hack might fall here. Hack is out of a buyback. That is game, probably. You're gonna get Megas. That's, that's a definite game. I mean... They have like 100 seconds to push this. Uh, the CG votes are called by the Helper side. Legion side wins. Game one goes to uh, Noah Shark after uh, 45 minutes in a very climactic game, I would say. Back and forth from both teams. Great play. I mean, uh, explosive finish here. Great job by both teams. Yeah, and I guess that is why we finally got to see like why they picked up these two heroes together. The Flux and the Hellbringer. If you get that Hellbringer ultimate with a resto on four heroes or five heroes, that is just and a one team fight any time today. You saw it like the Forsaken Archer with a symbol trying to heal up, but it's just it's just too much damage from all sources, right? Yeah, I mean, they really well executed in the last fight here from Legion, really showing the power of their, uh, their drafts. So great job by Legion. And uh, with that, I think we'll be right back for game number two out of this best of five.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to game number two in the League of the Paradise League finals. Best out of five. We have, of course, a, t a team top green tack versus Noah's Shark. It is that. That's the official name. Everyone else, what they're saying is lying. Trust me. I would, I would never lie to you guys. You know me. I'm once again joined by Sate, uh, who is going to be co-casting here. So um, that was an interesting game last game. Very much back and forth. Great game from uh, both teams. So I'm really excited to see what they're going to do here in the second game. As spans are coming up, Scrap Fade Engineer, Snap Bam from Beans, and Kevin answers with Adrenaline, Belfagor, and a third hero here, so, Monarch. Okay, the Adrenaline and Belfagor are uh, targeted bans, I would say, against Dosa, right? Uh, for sure here, and, and they banned the Monarch. As the defensive support, so Andro's open for Legion, but as you said, Balfagor and Adrenaline are for sure respect bans against Dossa. And then we see uh, the Scrap is just a very annoying hero to deal with. The constant pushing is like something that, uh, especially if you run like more support ish uh, side course, right, that can't really deal with that at all. Uh, the Forex is just so annoying to deal with. And it's just, it's it's really hard to deal with as supports. Nymphora. It just creates so much space, right? And we do see, of course, the Nymphora. We, the Nymphora was something that actually got banned uh, first uh, by the the current yeah, Hellbomb the team. Game, right? Yeah, because Nymphora yeah. is just such a powerful laner, right? And the, yeah, the powerful laner, really great for farming, both side point and Grace of the Nymphics. And as obviously the the... The global ultimate is also very, very strong later in the game. So overall, yeah. a very strong hero. So we saw, uh, of course, they uh, they often like to, uh, to pair it up with more AOE, um, a uh, like global presence heroes. Some like Benchton, of course, comes to mind. Thundra, but also, as, of course, uh, the, the Tundra. Earlier, yeah. The bird is, is really, really powerful for finding a target. And then for finding a solo they, target. Yeah. Specifically. Because it just gives so much information about the backline as well, right? You can see if they're baiting it or not. And at that point, like, if you find a solo target, Andromeda. like, the entire map just becomes so dangerous once there's, like, an, um, an, um, a, a Tundra plus an, an Amphora. But, um, the, apparently, the, uh, Helbert side was taking, was, uh, taking notes. Because they picked two very original heroes once again. Yeah, they got a very original idea. Yeah. Combining Andromeda with if for second Archer. Man, how did these like how did these guys so smart coming up with yeah, all this? Where, where did they figure this out, Dutch? So these heroes have know. great synergy and work really well together. Maybe we can uh, ask them in the interview after the game uh, how they come up with these novel, interesting ideas. But uh, maybe um, I mean I think I've seen the this combo being picked up by the Legion team a lot more uh, historically. So maybe they know how to deal with it because we saw that the Batman was actually quite effective at dealing with Second Archer once he got that Basher right. Because yeah, Madman just Madman kind of stats in the face of the second archer and the FA, but but I think the most significant part is FA never really truly recovered. He he ended up uh, five fifty GPM. He was hundred GPM behind though, and he had both the wingpo and the basher, and and FA didn't have anything to Torture. to counter either the wingpo or the basher. He didn't have a wingpo on his own for the basher or savage base to actually hit the Madman. So. But great, great play, great play by Basie, just uh, making sure to sit on the FA and, and lock him down. Yeah, because that last team fight as well was uh, was just busy playing like all the way in front, just trusting that his monarch would survive, would save him, and I think he did. Actually, I mean, combined save him with there. the with the double Melfas uh, hitting their faces or the yeah, they did initiate them. They did initiate them. Okay, actually, let's go to the the other. Uh, we see the hack and the torture. Not really the, the the setup heroes that you initially uh, think of uh, when you're thinking about like the Nifora pick, right? Um, we have seen uh, Vulka actually play the uh, Torturer in a position four style before, so this might actually be a position four Torturer. I know that uh, Vulka is gonna, gonna is... swap to position four now. They brought in Dosse, who's yeah. all, uh, traditionally a position two or three player. And they obviously pick up the hag. I mean, Ford did uh, such a good job on the last game. So they that's a pick they feel confident with. And and a, a hero that really showed uh, its strengths last game. Yeah, and even against something like Eversecond Archer. 
You can still burst them down if you just have like enough damage for it, right? And hack and just just provide that damage. You you need a uh, multiple cores to deal with the FA as we also discussed last game. So okay, FA, so Hellbringer uh, ban. I don't think that's very surprising, right? I think it's just it's just such a powerful against I mean, Andro. The hero was so strong last game, and and they don't want to get uh, Melfied multiple times again this game. I uh, I get they get a, a bit of PTSD. They want that hero out of there. Yeah, they just don't want to deal with it, which is understandable. Um, Bans from Kevin though, Puppet Master Nomad. So he's trying to ban carries that Legion might potentially look to pick up. Here. Yeah, so these are like more also targeted bans towards uh, Aston, right? Yeah. Because I think he's expecting with these picks Aston to play like more like a traditional hard carry. And I think he just wants uh, Aston to not be able to deal with that. And Clanks are actually three yeah. of his uh, more... Three, three Aston heroes here getting banned by Hellborn. But they're not whereas... like the, the classical powerful carries, I would say, right? I would be looking at Shadow Blades. I will be looking at Bensington here. Prisoner. Um, Prisoner being picked up. Now, the um, Puppet Master is banned, of course. So I'm, I'm curious why they chose to pick up the Prisoner here. It could be it, position four as part of the, part of the tri lane here. It is really strong against an M4, though. If you can, like, hook people out of the, the heal. And it's a, it's a trademark Hansi hero here. So I, I think that's going to be Hansi on the Prisoner. I don't expect them to put, put that on core. No. So they have their position 1, 5, and 4 from Hellborn. And presumably position 2, 5, and 4 for uh, Legion so far picked up. As yeah. They're going to use all the time. 5 Kraken. seconds left. They pick Kraken. That is a lot of physical damage, actually, eh? And Kraken's another great pick, uh, especially versus Hag. I mean, getting that and re release the Kraken off and and locking him down for five seconds, making him not able to blink with the with the immobilize. Yeah. So also, if they get the the prisoner uh, with his staff at some point, um, that's combined with Kraken Ultimate is going to be some insane damage and insane combo ability as well. So, um, I, but I, the, the way I'm looking right now, they have actually a lot of physical damage in the um, in the Legion team or the Helmer team. Sorry, right? So, um, how, how many of their abilities do actually get countered by a Void here? Because Kraken Ultimate get, doesn't get countered by Void, right? No, it's a, a magical ability, and the immobilize is pure magical. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking, okay, so it's just a splash from the Kraken that is physical. Oogie. Oh, that is an interesting pick. Magmus. Oogie, Oogie and, and the Magmus. Magmus. Hmm, the, uh, interesting. Uh, Magmus they're, they're pick for, uh, seems weird, right? So that's going to, no, it's going to be Magmus Torture, right? Dosse on, on Magmus. Will come I thought they were going to try lane. lane. And they're going to go Oogie and Fora and then Hag in the mid lane. Okay, that Two makes more sense. I was thinking, like, maybe you would pick up something like a Lodestone here against the Forsaken Archer so you can burst them down. Or, um, would be great if you're looking to try lane. Not as good in the dual lane. Yeah, true, true. I, I, can, I can agree with that. Um, alternatively, what else do you have? And that Midas, sorry, the Midas is just as another setup hero. They, they, they like the fast stunts, though, right? Yeah. So they're really relying on the prisoner to hit his hooks here to initiate on the targets there. It's mostly the crap and crack and charge that are the main way of initiating here until Midas maybe gets a storm or a hex or something that he can click like blink and click on. And yeah. not rely on hitting the combo before the enemy target can press shrunken. So not much reliable initiation from Hillborn, but at the same time they're way better at dealing with hack this game than they were last game. Krakens are great against it, prisoner is great. Even uh, FA can do yeah. some serious work to uh, to a hack if he gets until the hack gets shrunk in, like it volley. is just very dangerous for him because the scribbling volley it lasts for two point twenty five seconds with a ten seconds cooldown. Yeah, it is such an efficient ability. And yeah, you are, oh no wait, we see Volk actually rotating over a little bit. Maybe he's going to ward up before he. Uh, or they are actually going to try lane here. Maybe they're just going to answer the try lane, so it's going to be busy versus. Dossa here in the top lane, Kraken versus Magmus, both very strong solo laners versus melee heroes. 
Magmas, obviously, with the uh, Volcanic Touch that he did not skill at level 1, this could be extremely impactful as he thought uh, that Torture was going to go up there with him, but he's going to realize it's going to be a crack and he's going to be sad that he didn't skill Volcanic Touch. Yeah, because that's uh. just the main like way that he was going to be able to win the lane, but like, like just bullying the Kraken out of there. Because Kraken uh, Splash does actually... Um, Kraken Splash is like one of those abilities that's scaled both in cooldown reduction and in damage done, so... Level I mean, 4... It scales it extremely well with levels. Level 1 is really weak, but level two, yeah, 2 is exactly. twice as much damage on a, a way low, like 2 second low Exactly, cooldown, so it so. scales exponentially compared to like other abilities, like a Magmas E, for example, that scales like linearly. So, um, you want to really capitalize on those first levels against a Kraken. And him actually leveling his uh, Q here might hurt him a bit here, yeah. And do you think they have the chance to win this lane with the Ugi, the Nymphora, and the Torture? Yeah, to me, they are definitely the weaker of the two lanes. They also I mean, did not FA block the pool. Such a, such, a, such a strong tri lane hero. Andro, obviously, with the Aurora, can be extremely impactful hitting multiple heroes, making everyone take so much damage uh, from the minus armor and and prisoner uh, being able to displace one of these heroes if he can get a hook and he hooks uh, an Amphora or, or a torture they can die really quickly so Legion can win this uh, win this tri lane they just have to play defensively for the first three levels they need level two volatile pot to really stand their ground so they need level three on Amphora a couple levels on torture to get impalement up and and for Uki to tank up a bit. They can they can win the lane, but they need to play defensively and uh, and take their time here in the bottom lane. You know what I just realized? They had the opportunity to pick Lords of Forest. The yeah, they could team. have picked, picked a, a forest from, uh, it from wasn't banned. instead of Midas. It wasn't banned, and it would have fit their lineup. It would, but... I mean, I, I like that they picked some extra stuns, you know, you know uh, follow-up initiation. I mean, without it, it would have been been cracking a bit naked, uh, blinking in, trying to set up something. Not a lot of heroes able to help him. That is true, actually, yeah. Because, yeah, the, 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 the prisoner is only going to be able to actually pull them back, not actually help in any other significant way. But, but Lords of Forest is like such a powerful hero against the Ugi. Just denying that entire hero for like 12 seconds. That is just, it's like a nightmare to play against the uh, Sephora's as an Ugi. And it, it scales significantly better than Midas does. So it, it would have been an, a, a different choice to maybe go a bit later. Uh, with the Sephora's and the and the FA in the late game. I mean, I think Hellborn definitely have the late game, late game advantage as it comes. As Ugi is extremely strong in the mid game, but tapers off a bit towards the end of the game, especially as FA gets six items and can just sit on him. Yeah. Uh, with hits. Um, th th there's also, of course, something to consider that the Dreamcatcher is an item that is added, I think, already a while ago, but it is, of course, a very powerful item against something like Ugi because it reduces the healing received by 75%. Do you think any of them is going to consider picking it up? Maybe something like the Midas here? It's it's definitely a good pickup on Midas in general, regardless of what he's facing. So it, it, it could fit it, but it depends how far uh, good this Ugi does. Because if he gets a really strong early game, gets a really fast uh, BKB, the, the, it's going to be a bit of waste of gold. Dreamcatcher is not going to have the impact uh, that it could have had, at least. Yeah. Yeah, but it's still like they also have some other like healing heroes. Um, Hag is probably going to go for the for the gnomes. They have the Nymphora, so it's, it's it's in general just going to have some impact. It's it's not a bad pickup, regardless. Of it what is a lot facing. of investments, right? It's a lot of investment, but it, it's good on Midas because Midas usually lacks two three hundred damage to kill a target. You don't you can't really solo kill people often as Midas without harassing them first. So Dreamcatcher sure. can make you able to kill a, 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 a couple extra heroes throughout the game it can't be very impactful yeah and of course like against heroes like the hag who just like are so slippery you prevent the bottle like the bottle uh, shenanigans for like you know 10 seconds or more yeah and cancelling pks from stuff like magmas is of course also very impactful but yeah i think the 
the bottom lane is definitely going to be a lot of action here. The top lane is probably going to be a bit of a snooze fest. In terms of like what's actually going to happen here, they're probably just going to focus on auto attacks for a bit. Um, Mid lane, I'm quite exciting to see how this matchup is going to play out. I think Both Hag is favorite Hag here, right? can do really good, but I think Hag is a bit favored, but by not by much. Mice can easily do very, very well in in the mid lane. Okay, and we see that the prisoner is in position here. I don't think he's going to be able to hook from that position or get anything done. The four is, of course, a very juicy target, but Andro not in position here, and they know that actually. Oh, they, um, they're gonna go on it, eh? Second Archer might actually be in a bad trouble here. Second Archer's going to fall. Andro is just not in position to do anything there, and they went for it. That was a I mean, great torture stun to start it off, actually. They, they missed a the Q from FA. They didn't show the torture, and then... Then yeah, Andrew went to pull, and they just uh, pounced on him. Great job by Legion here. Second Archer... Uh, sorry, the, the helper side might be... Uh, might be like... Oh, actually, I'm seeing a bad spot here. That's a for second Archer... I'm oh, sorry, a torture stun. Nymph 4 not actually able to get that stun in. I'm gonna say it. That is the Wind Whistle saving his life right there. Best item in the game. I'm not even gonna comment on that. What do you mean? Uh, you know I'm right. Just admit it. Let's see how other lanes are doing Dutch. Uh, top okay. lane, three and zero versus eight and zero. So, uh, Kraken actually getting the iron shield. I kind of like that actually. Big early lead. I mean, yeah, it's it's okay. I don't think it does too much, to, honestly, because Magnus is not gonna hit you. The damage is from volcanic touch. Funny thing is, like the attack speed actually helps a little bit as well. Because that's all you need, just attack speed. And uh, it is still one of the most efficient items in the game. I mean, it's sure. 8 Aggie, it's, it's, it's not bad. Yeah. It's definitely not bad. It's never bad to get mid lane so far. 7 and 3 versus 11 and 1 from Hag. So. Uh, Hag that doing seems a good like job so far. Hag is, yeah, Hag does, of course, have the advantage of the auto attack a range there, with uh, 75 more range than Midas. And um, the re reason why I think that the Midas is like kind of so the hack is favorite a bit. Ugi getting Speaking. pulled in here by. Oh, sorry. Oh, and in the bottom lane, yes, Ugi oh, might be in a bit of trouble here. Ugi healing up, using the apple to survive, and they might actually be able to turn it now. Torture stun coming up in two seconds, and they're all that grouped together. The Nymphora plus the torture auto attacks are going to be able to finish off the Nymphora. Uh, they're could be the chase here. That okay. is a oh. hit on there, but a miss on a Forsaken Archer stun, and Prisoner might be in trouble now. A oh, big dodge okay. on the stun from the Torture there. So many turns coming out, but the Forsaken Archer missing the Crippling Volley being very detrimental there to them. And the Nymphora heal showing its true colors by being such a powerful abilities. Like, you see why Beans likes this Nymphora, right? The level 1 Q from Nymphora does 113 damage, uh, sorry, 130 damage, and heals for 130. That is like a huge turn anytime today. And actually, wait, in the top lane, uh, Kraken and uh, the Magmas actually both going to very low HP. Neither of them choosing to pick up a bottle here. Uh, they're just kind of going back and forth. Um, uh, okay, what? Well, Satic, keep going. I'll be one, one second. Okay. Uh, Magnus is going to stun in here, and the Kraken Kraken's going to be just fine. I Magnus elected to go Martyrs. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not the biggest fan of going Martyrs first in, in, in the in the lane. You're gonna kind of conceding uh, the matchup, but as bu busy responds with his own Martyrs, so he's not gonna get a bottle either. Mid lane, Hack TP's out. He has a health pot, so he's gonna be just fine. Try to get the next rune. Two heroes from Hellborn on the bottom rune. FA is all alone here. Uh, but sitting safely, he's 180 GPM, 11 and 3 versus 12 and 3. So even though Legion has done a great job fighting here in the bottom lane, it hasn't led to a lot of CS from Ugi. He's only 200 GPM at the moment. So Ugi is trying to recover here, get some CS while the help on support is over the rune. Hack gets one shot by Midas with the illusion rune. Almost, he hits the combo, hit, pops the illusion and kills him. A great job by Kevin here, good kill. As mid lane was kinda even a, a small advantage for Hag and CS, but with the kill now taking a lead uh, is Midas. Okay, uh, actually, Kevin uh, getting a pick on the Midas. I was talking to Hag there. What happened? I mean, he had the illusion rune and he just one shot him with the. Oh, with yeah, of course, the, the, the ultimate uh, damage actually applied to the illusions, dealing so much damage there. Yeah. Um, 
and the extra damage from the hits and, and whatnot. So. Yeah. Uh, we see the top lane is quite even. Um, there is actually some harassment going on back and forth there. Uh, in the bottom lane... Um... Axe gets oh. the return kill on Midas now. Oh wow, that was really close actually. He died, the, bottom... but... the prisoner's not really getting anything done, right? He's uh, missing the hook. It might be that Hansi's not actually that comfortable on the prisoner. Uh, plus that prisoner hook is just kind of hard to hit to be fair. I mean, yes. I don't, don't think he's going to be happy for, he, for to, you to hear you say that, Dosh. I think it's one of the heroes he actually likes to play, but not having the best luck or uh, having the it, best... It is hard to hit, because right always, it always goes to like max range. Compared yeah. to something like a Gambit or an um, or an, uh, Devour, that like it just goes to the target and back, right? So it, it's a lot faster. There is that they're getting both rooms on top on. Great job by... Yeah, that's so that's actually something that I've been noticing from them as well. They really like value the rune control a lot more than the uh, Legion team in this case. They should um, have impactful. Magnus might be in some trouble here. Busy is pushing pre pressure on him. He's going to stun out, but Kevin TPs in. Yeah, that's well played by them. Yeah. Kevin's gonna get that was a here. bit... I, I, I would have liked for him to just take that kill, honestly, so he can go back. Because... If, it, if, if at any moment like a, a magma survives there, that is like just not done. Actually, the bottom lane. Um, Second Arch in a lot of trouble. Second Arch is going to fall there. The prisoner is able to get the hook up, but not actually able to do anything with that. I mean, this is also just level advantage actually speaking through here. I mean, they just played this this uh, bottom lane for Legion masterfully. They had they had the worst matchup, but played it really well. Mid lane, Hack versus uh, the DD. He blinks, oh he my him. god! That is so. Four versus Kevin here, fighting, 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 trading, and and another kill for Hack here. Two kills in a row. He's really recovering nicely. Four thirty GPM. Yeah, Midas is just like not Midas. really the items as to be as tanky. He actually goes for the Striders as well, which I don't really like that much. I really like either Steam boots or Mana boots on the Midas, because I I think you just need the Mana pool or like the tankiness. And in the bottom lane, it might actually be not initiation. Second so Archer out of position again. That is an enforced that is going to miss here. He before a heal though. He can. That was a huge hook from the prisoner though. And Oogie might now in a bad spot as uh, the Midas joined the team fight. And that was a really well dodged, um, uh, really well played by the second Archer who dodged the Nymphora stun, if I believe. And uh, actually made it out alive because of that, because he was in a really awkward spot there, kind of being in between the trees and being sandwiched by the torture and by the Dimfor there. And um, also, we see the entire jungle being triple stacked. Oh, and. <laughs> <laughs> they say thank you very much. Board, getting that is. Peeps. Well, that is actually like a lot of gold that they just stole there, because that is like a linked Nymphora with a, with a uh, Grave Locket as well. So that is like. Up to like 300 gold that they may have just stolen there. I didn't think they got quite as many creep kills, but Might is just sitting around this bottom lane making. Oh, and that is a good hook striders. by the prisoner. They're and they might actually get the four now. The four are just with their boots. The, oh, the impalement they, is actually doing a lot of damage though. The impalement combined with the. Oh, in the top lane, that is a Magmus getting ultimated by the Kraken. Magmus sitting in steam bath. He does not have his ultimate ADP. levels. So he's I don't gonna think try to find him with haste. He, he is, is going to try and find him. Yes, he knows he's in there. That, that he should have known he's in there because the tree was cut down. Um, Magma's just chilling there. And does he wait? Kraken has a ward. Okay, I guess Kraken kind of figured that he just TP'd out. And Very he just waited until the. Oh wait, he's gonna oh, find no. him here, and that's a dead Kraken. That's a dead Magma's. Hack was coming, so he wanted to wait with the stun, but. Got too greedy and got charged. And hack there are three people trouble. now. Yeah, if they get the prisoner shackle off, that might actually be a dead hack. A uh, hack has his hatchet on cooldown as well. That is actually significant. Yeah. Oh, and there's a here. big the charge. Hook. And the Kinda hook missed. just misses. Um, there's a TP on cooldown for the hack there. So I don't think they're gonna find him. They they will see him here. I think. Wait. Do they not? I mean, they, do, they right? must have seen him on the tower, but I guess not. They didn't react. Just I guess he's just trying to bait stuff to happen. And supporting bottom with no mana is um, 
I, I guess the battery saves or like heals up a little bit. He has enough mana for the hook at least. Yeah, one hook, yeah. Um, they s What's going on right now? Actually, in the top lane, uh, Magmus and the Kraken chasing down the... Uh, sorry, Magmus and Hack chasing down the Kraken. That's a bad blast on top, but that is a Midas there. Being able to maybe save, there's a big turn on the Hack, and Hack is going to fall to the Midas and the Kraken. Kraken might be able to survive here. I don't think Kraken is going to die from that. No, he has vestments. Do it. He's gonna die. He's gonna get healed. He was fine. Should have denied him. Ah, uh, SMH. Now that was well played by the Midas there. That's a great force. Great uh, uh, sorry, call out from the team probably. And um, that saved the Kraken and got a turn kill in the end. So that's huge for them. Plus, I mean, Bad Blood was the, used. The, the, the Vestment just seemed to be too impactful here, saving Kraken. So. Yeah, but that's the Kraken is just a tanky hero early on. If you get that Vestments, sorry, if you get the, the, the Steam Boots, it just it gives you so much HP. Actually, we see the Kraken. Smoking up right now. He's going to the bottom lane. This is like to the secondary tower, so there's no way they've seen this. Um, prisoner's not there though, so it's still only 3v3. Max on the Andromeda gets initiated, and they, they're not really going to be able to do anything here. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, we see Prisoner. Maybe. Oh, he just missed that. I think if he hooked like slightly faster, he would have been able to kill the hack there. Hack had his hatchet on cooldown as well, which is really significant against that. Uh, Kraken but. It's not gonna do anything here. Yeah, I think that was a little bit of a mis miscommunication for their side. Is they should have definitely like be bottom with the Kraken when the Kraken is trying to smoke bottom. They're swapping lanes, so they put and the right FA now, in the top lane. You see, indeed, the Kraken destroyed the FA, changing to the top lane. FA is only level 5 though, so he does need his babysit. And in the bottom lane, Kraken is getting charged by the enemy team. We see some force coming in. Kraken ultimate, the torch is going to fall. And the is here, and uh, Midas. They're going to definitely finish off in four here, but um, the Ugi is just going to port out. Um, however, yeah, this does provide a little gold bit from the, from the Kraken, so it's, it's not too bad. I mean, they trade 500 gold for 500 gold. I mean, three for two. So True. But Shutting down the Kraken, Kraken and getting his PK that, or like preventing his PK is definitely uh, important as well. Um, I also want to touch quickly upon um, the Magmas not scaling his ultimate until level eight. Or nine even. I feel like there were a couple of times where like he could have added ultimate off in the top lane. Actually, Bad Blast is up again for the hack, and it might be for second Archer in some big trouble here if Stop Magmus them. gets a stun off and on, Magmus them. hits the stun Got on it. a second arch, and that is a double second arch, and Andros this is exactly what he wants. Down too. No TP's coming in. Now yeah, I don't. TP's. This one TP coming in, but I don't know if that's ever going to be enough. And that's a big hook on the prisoner, but he, but no he doesn't mana. have mana for a shackle. And that might, may have saved the Andro if Andro is going to walk Andrew's into the trees. Now it's just not enough, right? Mm, uh, Kraken I mean. ported bottom. Kraken didn't have a TP. And uh, the Midas was actually TP cooldown as well. It just came up. Midas is going to secure the mid tower here, which is definitely important for them. Uh, for the map control. Well. But uh, Ugi already strides. cleared the entire jungle, by the way, with the triple stacks. And there are no stacks for the Forsaken Archer. So this Forsaken Archer is going to. Um, start lacking behind again. And Andro being level 5 here is just not enough to save the FA from like a hack smoke gank. Right? No, no, he, he can't do anything. I mean, hack is just gonna kill FA every time with the Magma setup stuff. So they need 6 on Andro there. Struggling to get, he needs one more creep here. Probably gonna get it from this catapult. And they need. They probably need like the prisoner top to be room. there. To, oh, actually, in the top room, we see the. And Midas missed, uh, missed a hook on the on the prisoner and a double stun plus if Magnus channels them. ultimate there, yeah. that was Magnus to kill somebody. Ulted. They missed a hook so there's no way for them to not kill Kevin at least. So. The ultimate is no mini stun or anything until after the 2.5 seconds. Yeah. So that cannot cancel the, the Magnus ultimate. I mean, I mean the ultimate from the prison of course. Yeah, slight misplay from Magmus here, not uh, not ulting. They had no information though, so I understand why they did it. Yeah, they could have been scared. Wait, they did. Uh, Wait, they had words. Uh, what was saying? On the top lane. They did. They did. They they had nothing to be scared. Of. They should have. Dos should have just killed them. Kevin, as I, as I said, he had uh, he had blink. Elects to go for the, the spell well shots here. 
Yeah, I don't I don't necessarily like it that much because you don't you already one shot waves, right? Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan either. I think Blink could have early Blink could have been very And impactful. look at this by the way, in the helper or in the Legion jungle. I see uh, Aston as I call him out, you see him block the stack. Beautiful. Um, but he's just farming, right? And he's farming and he's farming. And like he's getting his like his jungle just stacked and stacked and stacked. While for a second Archer is getting no love because Ma the Androdom just needs to sit him and actually we see the hack coming here from behind and there are three people here. Uh, but I think they smell something as fishy is going on there as um, they do Nobody's back showing off. Yeah. In, in any lanes. Only the Magmas is showing, so it's just too dangerous, right? Yeah. But when, you need the Prisoner in the top lane. Prisoner is the only hero that can reliably kill the Magmas, I would say. Blink and Kraken now. Oh, missed Kraken the missed the charge. Uh, Hack is still nearby. Uh, the Legion side might actually take. Oh, that's a swap in. And that's a Kraken ultimate on the Magmas. Magmas is going to fall. In return, the Andromeda is probably going to fall. But that is definitely a trade they'll take. And Prisoner is here in the back line. Prisoner ultimate on top. He's gonna blink out. Kraken going in. He's blink out. Hack ultimate only hitting one target. Uh, that is an almost dead Ugi. Ugi surviving on 1 HP. Ugi surviving with 1 HP. He's healing up. He's healing so much. And five. Ugi dies at the end. One. But that was way too late for the Helbert side because Ugi just delayed him so much. And in the background, the Hack was just pounding in the auto attacks. The Torture was dealing so much damage with his abilities. And that was a disastrous team fight for the Helbert team. 5 for 2 in the end. I mean, if. Only thing that could have been worse if the Uki survived. I mean, great Uki fight was by on Legion. one HP like so many times there. He just kept healing and going back, and healing and going down, and healing and going down. It's looking it started like really well actually. FA. I mean, another rough game for this hero. He's looking to get an Elder Parasite. It looks like with the hungry spirit in the gloves that Swift picked up so far. What, what do you think about the Elder on on FA? I, I think it's not a null fire blade, and I think that anything that's not a null fire blade is a mistake on the hero. I think it's uh, Thor has another great game on Hack. He's already killed him two times, and if you press Elder Parasite versus Hack, and a Magnus stuns yeah. you, and he's going to stun you because it's a Magnus, so uh, then you're just gonna get completely yeah, deleted. It, but at the same you time, are going to. Definitely not get your shrunken before Magmus gets his PK. Yeah, and you're, he, but he's like, quite far behind, so he's just uh, grasping at straws trying to get back into the game, I guess. Um, yeah, and maybe he's just fan. thinking about, like, let's just go for the YOLO play, because um, if we play this normally, we're not going to win this, which honestly is not that bad of an idea, right? Sometimes, like, the unorthodox, like, risky play could just end up turning the team fight, but. I would say that even in this scenario, um, no Fireblade is still better. Because, like, sorry, the Torture doesn't have to let that much of a mana pool. You burn the mana from the Ugi, you, you like, you deal so much damage. It's just like, it's just such an efficient item, right? Yeah. I mean, if uh, Elder Parasite is, is the YOLO, YOLO play here and it chooses to go for it, let's see if, uh, if it pays off or, or he gets punished. It's hard to judge uh, quite yet, but I, as you said, the, the Nullfire Blade would have been excellent here on, on FA. Yeah, and uh, Nefora does of course have level 6 now and is able to join with Ugi at any moment here. So um, I think they're going to, like, you see Nefora already being in a position here where she can TP without being seen by the enemy team. And that's just really heads up play by him, like not showing in the lane as much. And just like kind of sitting in the trees there. So the Ugi can just like run into the ultimate and instantly port. And they see him porting mid lane right now. And four ultimate up the cliff there. Hack misses ultimate on the Kraken. And that might actually be the end of the team fight. No, they're going for more. Magmus with his new funny PK jumps. And that's a Kraken ultimate on top of the Magmus. Magmus is not going to fall here in the end. Because Saint Archer doesn't have any damage. He has the ultimate. Is and in the, the back line, instead? the prisoner is going to fall Not to the hag bottom. and the Ugi. And yeah, Ugi is uh, with that, he's just farming like, right? He has, he has had so much more space than the uh, Forsaken Arch in this team fight. And you see, like, the other Parasite is great, but he still doesn't do any damage, right? No, we're looking at a 10k gold lead here in 20 minutes, so. It's it's looking quite grim for the FA here. 270 GPM, not yet uh, getting ahead of 300. And if Hack 
He hasn't really gotten any stacks this game though. So, um, and uh, I think that is partially because the one, the Andrew didn't have boots for a very long time, and two, the Andrew has like had to sit behind the the uh, the ha uh, for second archer, basically permanently, right? I mean, that's credit to Legion. They 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 won the bottom lane and really put a lot of pressure on him. So if the Andrew couldn't leave him to stack. And mid lane, that's a hook on the hack, actually. They might actually kill the hack here. Is that an ultimate? That is an ultimate from the prisoner. And prisoner gets a kill on the hack. That is a huge pick off by the Helbron team here. That's actually exactly what they wanted. And uh, hack uh, throwing out the middle finger towards uh, Hansi there. And uh, Hansi uh, giving him a smug, a smug smile in return. But yeah, that's actually huge for them because that is uh, like huge for them. Well, because they just they stopped the snowball of the hack. This hack was closing in on Grimoire there, and a level six. Yeah, a level sixteen Grimoire hack with ultimate is um, a dead scary. a dead enemy team basically. Yeah. Oh, yeah. interesting. No l Grimoire as I expected, but a light. What was it called? Light frost? No. Frozen light picked Frozen up by the Uki. Light on, on Uki. I I literally did not know the item of the name, of the name of the item. That's how, so that's how often I pick it up. I guess. Yeah, but over a Grimoire though. Is is Grimoire the best item on Uki? Don't you just like get a sheep and run at people? I mean, strong and strong. I personally uh, would uh, get sheep stick and PK. I'm, I'm not I'm not the biggest Uki player, so I'm not gonna be crazy. Criticizing the items, uh, I don't quite know what would have been b uh, better, but... Honestly, what I would really have liked for the Ugi to go here is for one more of the Mad Mage. Because it's, uh, it, you can dispel like the Shackle, you can dispel the minus armor from the Andro, and it gives you so much armor. And like, if we already talked about this, but they mainly had like, um, physical damage. They mainly have physical damage on the Hellborn side, right? Yeah. Stacking up armor is a, is a great idea at this point. We do see the Midas go for spell shots number two and pick up the PK now. So they finally do have the PK to follow up on the, with the Kraken. But uh, yeah, we, we've seen actually a couple of times here that Kraken just jumps in and there's just not enough follow up to actually do anything with that, right? Uh, Forsaken Archer is now picking up that, uh, that, that Null 5 blade. Um, finally gets a hit on the 300 GPM mark with 300 at 15 GPM here, so. Yeah, it's the, it's like he's farming half a jungle because he can't really contest the left side. He's farming some ancients here or there, but it's it's not on the same line as the Ugi, right? Because the Ugi has basically been completely free of pressure this entire game. He might actually go for the armor of the Mad Mage here. You do see the Helm of the Victim pick up. I believe that's a build up of it. Yes, it is a build up of it. Oh, okay. Top lane. Top lane, we do actually see three people in Magma sitting in the trees with this ultimate up. That might actually be huge for. The legions? Uh, no, we see the sm slow port from Nifora. Wait, that is that might be a that might is there. He yeah, blinked it very aggressively. Oh, the swap saved him there. Well played by Max, saving the the the, the, the might is there. Walk away. At the cost Hope, of his own. Hopefully not. Okay. Max okay, almost doing Max things and getting out uh, despite of uh, having to swap Kevin out here. Uh, hacks in the top lane, it's 4 versus 4, but uh, Bishy That is a Grimoire hack, level 16. Yeah. Are you Bishy sure you want to fight this right now? I think the go... Helbert team really needs to wonder whether or not they wish to fight this uh, right now. They, they elect to just uh, counter push and, and, and go back. I think that's a smart idea, as you said, Touch. Uh, especially before this Kraken is, is nearing his uh, Storm Spirit, which is going to be very effective in catching this hack. Oh yeah, that's so. actually a good pickup, yeah. Because yeah, it uh, restrain uh, helps so much against both Magmus and the Hag actually. Uh, Magmus picking up a shamans. Um I guess to just tank him up there. I don't I don't really get it, because didn't we already establish it was mainly physical damage on the Helper side? Sh he's, he's looking to get a to get a barrier idol, I think, but I'm I'm not a too big a fan. I mean the piercing arrows, the the transmute of Midas, you can, neglect, you can neglect some damage, but I don't really think it's a game that's worth uh, hitting. Uh, the all the, yeah, all the abilities that lock you down, all the abilities that lock you down, they do physical damage, right? 
So, I mean, you're, you're completely right. I mean, the only the only justification I can see from the idlers, if, if you want to go high ground, you kind of need something so you can you can pressure high ground. But they're not looking to do it for a long time, as they are looking to do Congo and Hellbone. There's a DD and FA. He's still not even hurting that much. It's only level one mil five blade. Yeah. Mil five blade does actually get uh, significantly more efficient with higher levels. Again, I ran the numbers. Um, so it's it's only from like level two and three that it really starts to um, hurt, basically. And um, yeah, this was like an archer with elder parasite and 900 HP. Um, personally, I don't see him surviving a bad blast. If I think he just... if, he if he's on Aggie boots with 900 HP and he's uh, elder parasite up, he's literally gonna die to one shot by by uh, bad blast. Not not a single other spell is gonna be used by Hag and he's gonna. Yeah, so maybe Sonar Scream. Like Bad Blast Sonar Scream, right? It's fi 550. Oh, wait, it's also plus the Haunt instantly, right? Yeah. Plus the Haunt. So Look, actually, it's actually, uh, Midas getting haunt jumped spell. here by the Magmas. Magmas missing the start on the Kraken. Both Kraken and Midas might actually be able to survive here. Uh, they don't have any kind of stun ability here, no. So that might be gone. Uh, Max actually getting caught by the Torturer. Old teammates going at it. And that's a swap! Max being able to survive, baby! Actually outplaying Vulka! The French got the Frenchman got wrecked actually in the bottom line. That's a hack dying! Oh my god, what happened there? Hack just continued chasing the, the Kraken and blinked on him and altered him, but uh, in return basically clicked the Storm Spirit and, and followed up with the release the Kraken and Midas came back. Uh, FA TP'd in and, and that was uh, they made quick work of hack here. So trading hack for for uh, for the Kraken is definitely not what you want to do at this stage of the game. 500 GPM versus 350 on on Kraken, and Kraken really tapers off at this point in the game. So Hack just needs to play a little bit more defensive. I'd say. Well, Especially I quite... since like the Kraken does not have the space to freely farm right now because the Midas is taking a lot. The Forsaken Archer needs to take a lot. So the limited amount of space of the Kraken is definitely hurting his potential here. Because uh, Kraken is a hero that can flash farm very fast with his E if he gets the chance to. But yeah, he just doesn't really get the chance to here. But Uki finishing the Dawnbringer uh, is coming to him right now. And Forsaken Archer finally with that null fire by level 3 uh, is actually a dangerous hero now. Um, and yeah, I, 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 he, did, he still dies to one ability. He's going for a Shrunken now though. But thus far, I've not actually seen him get hit by abilities. So credit to him. He actually yeah. makes it work. I mean, he, he hasn't died since he picked it up, picked this up. So it's it's allowed him to farm faster than he would have uh, otherwise. So so far so good. The elder person has been paying off to set. And I guess like maybe he was like in some sort of like mentality where he figured like okay if I get caught I will die. Might as well just go full yolo then with the damage, right? Yeah. I mean, that's probably what he thought, not, not a, a stupid way to think here as Volker gets hooked into the, the expansion mute. Yeah, that's actually Hansi doing some work there. Do you think we ever see him pick up something like a Jade Spire here? He, he has a, a Mighty Blade, so... Not it's in the probably going right to be now. a Staff, if I had to guess. Should be. I mean, Staff, if you can click on the Hag, it's really impactful. Even like the two and a half seconds guaranteed stun on something like an Ugi is huge because um, it's, it's it, for one, like the the biggest thing I think about Prisoner with Staff is that the range is just insane. Um, actually, I want to quickly Even talk about the second Archer going on an adventure here. Hello. I, I, I'm not sure what was actually in the mid lane. It might be a dead. Rackham, he has Storm Spirit, he pops it to save himself. No PK is being used. Is still behind. And that's a huge down. hook by the prisoner. Uh, they're using a lot, they're not willing to really... Neither side is really willing to commit to the team fight. Actually, uh, Hack popped the Grimoire. Yeah, that's... Uh... And and he's in the meanwhile, a second him. archer just took a little stroll around their jungle and came back to their own jungle. That's the most Jolo player I've ever seen. He has, he has no idea if they have any wards, any kind of wards, nothing. He just walks the entire jungle uh, and across the Legion team. And luckily and he, for him... He discovered there were no red wards. <laughs> he 
<laughs> yeah, he, he, he discovered there was no red board and made it out fine, so... Some interesting scouting by the FA at this point in the game. Yeah. Actually, the top lane, that is a prisoner being jumped by five people there. Um, just to say, about to say, Dutch, the Legion needs to group up and, and make shit happen right now. Oh, they, they Hack are. uses ultimate. There's a big store spirit by the Kraken, saving himself from the from the bat blast, but this is gonna be it enough, might not so. be enough. In the bat line, Magnus is probably going to fall here. He's taking Archer the popping in the auto attacks, but he is just melting by the auto attacks from the Oogie. And Oogie is just popping in the auto attacks, and Oogie might actually fall here too. That sour, yes, he is going to. Uh, Midas actually being the only one alive here. Um, he's just going to defend the tower, but that Elder Parasite did some work there. You know he what I've you know what work, I discovered? I think he only died because Full Volka uh, missed the stun. I mean, he sidestepped the stun by the torturer, and Volka here making, making his carry die. That's not so great. That does sound like Volka, though, doesn't it? It does. Definitely yeah. does. Yeah, I've I've definitely I've definitely been there. I get like Congo or Vietnam flashbacks whenever whenever I see the uh, full commission. Every time you die to Kong in your entire life has been your fault, Dutch. You you always No find no a way no no no. I I definitely I'm fairly certain some of them may not have been my fault. Fairly not, certain. Maybe not every single one, but it's close. You have a talent for dying to two big apes, apparently. Apparently so, yes. So 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 the meme goes at least. <laughs> But uh, for a second, Archer was just like actually, just the fucking the sorry the the no fire blade together with the other parasite is just doing so much work there. Oh, and actually, Max playing more than a little gets, greedy here. Gets the uh, ward <coughs> off, doesn't get seen. So great ward by Max here. <laughs> gets the deep ward for when this Congress pops here in a minute. Yeah, because they definitely want to take that. Because Legion is still ahead by quite a bit actually. But the lead is getting closer, and the more of these team fights that they take, the closer it's definitely going to get. If the Forsaken Archer gets his shrunk enough, he can take like a way. Oh, that's a big port by the Nymphora in the top lane. But the rest of the team is not there yet. The Torture and the Ugi are not there. And it's a big Kraken ultimate on top of two people, Magmus and Forsaken Archer. So the hack being in the, in the, in the ultimate out. hack, getting ultimated by the prisoner. But now here comes Ugi. Ugi smells blood. For second, Archer is Gonna not die. able to survive there. Uh, prisoner tried to save him, but actually killed himself in the process. Um, <laughs> what do you recall? A Hansi special there by Hansi. Good attempt to try to save his carry. I mean, the idea is there. But that's actually oh, a sheep stick pickup on the Midas. I didn't even see that one. I mean, he's been quietly just. Farming waves, bursting waves, bursting waves. Five. That's what Midas on, does. On Midas, yeah. But there's there's so little catch on the legions on the legion sides. I really wish this Ugi would have picked up a sheep stick by now. I think he, he has a strong on the courier, which he definitely needs. Just this, this, uh, oh, and this might actually be a dead Midas here because Midas is not definitely fast enough Andrew. to escape. But uh, Andrew's saving himself for Kevin. Um, that was. Probably because he didn't see the shrunken oh, pickup. Oh. Yeah. But I, I still would have liked for the Uki to pick up the sheep stick. I think because, yes, they do have to um, swap, of course, but it also just provides like a lot of damage and a lot of like survivability for an Uki specifically, right? Generally, whoever you're, you're gonna sheep is gonna be locked out on the side for three and a half minutes, and usually they die anyway. Even with the swap, you can just run them down. Yeah. So, sheep is, is is one of the great items on on Uki to make sure you can hit someone, you can stick to a target, but also it gives you 50 intelligence, which is a lot of auto attack damage and and a lot of mana as well. Satan Archer also not picking up Festimus here is kind of awkward. He's very squishy. 13 on HP. They don't have any abilities to currently go to Shrunken, of course. But even like as we saw like in the first team fight in the top lane, uh, just or, or at the base, I mean, uh, just the Uki auto attacks actually just hurts, right? Yeah, Uki, Uki is very farm. 650 GPS to pop the barrier, not on the creep though. That's a weird decision by Magnus. They're gonna hit the rack stone. Misses the and Uki, so. it looks like the Hellborn team is not that easy to find this, although. Let's see if you take the archer. Oh, that's a big sheep stick on the Ugi. Ugi being pushed into the base. Ugi is, is 
going to fall. Stop Maybe not to fight. Easy, easy, easy. He's healing up. Up. He's healing so much, and it was so close. Saint Archer in the backline oh falling God. there. The they storm. brought him down to 100 ish HP. It was enough. That was by Bulk has saved him with the storm, and he just came out with the ultimate, tr trying to get as much HP as possible, and it just just worked. like the Dumbbringer, probably together with the Sackstone and everything else, just healing him up there. Bloodrax is what they're gonna try to go for here. Can they? He brings it to Kevin. I think no they problem. are probably going to get like Ugi can just tank this, right? Yeah, Ugi is a lot more than enough uh, armor to tank this, and of course there's no backdoor protection because of the, um, the top lane being exposed. Ugi should really heal up on the creep setter. Ah, uh, and four heal, I guess. Yeah, those are two racks, and like not just only like two that. racks, but also like the lead is just increasing and increasing. Um, they're going to go for another play here, I'm guessing. That is a sheep stick Hag on the hack. Uh, storm saves him. Good nice storm stick. by Nymphora. And okay, GG actually. being called! Even though I don't want to give him credit. I mean, tough storms there in the end by Vulcan. That was, oh, it was so, oh, I so thought it was close. Nymphora. Okay. I just assumed it was Nymphora. Yeah, I didn't want to give Wait, credit Wait, no, no, no. Can we just say it was Nymphora? Yeah, that's pretty Yeah, that was definitely Nymphora that stormed there. Frenchman did nothing. Uh, I'm kidding. Uh, okay, we will be right back with game number three, and I'm going to quickly enjoy my dinner, and we will see you guys in a little bit.
Welcome back to game number three of the Paradise League. Uh, of uh, It's 1-1 one, one right now. We have uh, the Sharks of Noah versus Top 3 in Tuck. And uh, we have two just very um, back and forth and very, very close games back to back. So I'm happy to show or I'm happy to be able to cast this uh, game number three here again. And let's hope it was as good a game as the last two were. Once again, John Bessate, he's still here. I am still indeed here, Dutch. Uh, we see still fans here. coming out. Uh, still here. Kevin Seam asks, I'm tired of seeing that hack as uh, they ban it immediately here. Belfagov hack and adrenaline for the Legion side and scrap fade and engineer. I mean, same bans for for Beans two games in a row here. They, they really don't want to fade this uh, face fade or engineer. And the scrap Hansi already showed to be very annoying with, so they're electing to remove that from the hero pool as well. They're gonna first pick Monarch, and now it's Legion's uh, turn to pick. What what do we expect to see here from Legion Dutch? Yeah, so the hack ban, of course, is uh, definitely some uh, sort of a respect ban, I think, because Fall has just been so dominant on that hack, like twice in a row, right? Uh, so uh, the Monarch pickup, Monarch is of course one of the stronger supports right now with the ability to both de uh, remove ultimate, sorry, remove debuffs and stuns with the ultimate and just heal so much. We've seen the Monarch actually come to great effectiveness in game number one, uh, but um, Andro has been picked up, I think both. Wait, Andro FA sub. Nymphora. I could have just picked Andro FA. Yeah, they, they chose to go with the Nymphora. Another FA has been hero. picked up every game, right? Yeah. Do you think that's going to change here? Uh, to be fair, maybe, the FA the has lost side. every lane, right? Yeah. And every game. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, actually, true. I don't think that's the problem of the hero, though. I think, I like, think the, the, the lane tri lanes. Stages, every, both times have been really rough. Uh, I mean, the, it shouldn't the, have been rough last game, but I mean, they did such a great <laughs> job in the tri lane. I don't know how... Uh, do you know how uh, comfortable Mate is on Forsaken Archer? It's a hero he's played a thousand times, I, th I think. Because I don't know if he has... He has not always been playing carry role, right? Oh, he's, he's been playing mostly carry for... the. Oh, yeah, no, wait, the, you're right. The, Actually, in the team of Imba Boy, he, he transitioned to carry and Imba positioned to P... Position 2 or 3 at that point, right? Yeah, the position 3... Yeah, no, uh, you're right. So you're absolutely right. He's always played carry. Sometimes he's played middle. Uh, even position three. Uh, he even played way back in the day when we played in, in some of the first Bullshit. Paradise League tournaments. He played position four for a team. So, and I've seen True, him play actually. position five as well in, in teams. So he's he's a I mainly think he's a carry player, but yeah, he's he definitely the most comfortable most on one and two. But uh, yeah, we see. Sorry, we see Moraxis and the four being picked up. Uh, Moraxis not really a hero you expect to see this early picked up, uh, unless you're against something like a Moira. Archer. And the Forsaken Archer was up, so you have the Monarch. Might That's as well pick said, up the Forsaken uh, Archer. I didn't expect Legion to go with it. Now they went for the Nymphora, but it's still a great hero. It's really great paired with the Monarch. Monarch is such a disgusting little butterfly, uh, keeping <laughs> every hero alive with. The combination of Chrysalis and Cleansing Wind. So I've heard from reliable sources that every time Monarch is picked, a, a fairy dies. So if you're not seeing any fairies around, guys, you know why now. It's because of Beans. All his fault. No, but uh, Forsaken Archer is. Uh, we see uh, in the trial line actually that the Forsaken Archer was forced to initiate a lot. And he, uh, especially like last game, I think we saw quite a lot of missed crippling volleys. Now the Monarch. Crippling Volley uh, being 600 range these days does actually allow the Monarch to maybe initiate. Then, uh, assuming this is a tri lane of Torture, Forsaken Archer, and Monarch, that might be just those three heroes following up their stuns on top of each other. However, they do, of course, have the Nymphora on the other side. And as you already should have known from the last few couple of games, Nymphora heal is quite a big deal. It is so damn strong. It's, there a, are not it's a great ability, but but do you do you think uh, Legion is up for the challenge of tri laning? 
against uh, against the FA, they just did an offensive try lane, which went very wrong for them, ending up maybe costing them the game as FA never really truly recovered, and Uki just cruised to 600 GPM. Yeah, the, the it's just that like they applied so much more pressure on the FA than on the Uki, right? Yeah, I mean the Uki just they won the lane and he just went into the jungle with the Nymphora to heal them with, so. Maybe, yeah. let's see what they pair, pair this Nymphora up. Maybe they will elect to just do a defensive tri lane of their own. Or The Hellbringer ban being not actually a surprise here, I'd say. No, Midas Hellbringer loads on the file of Flux. Kevin banning his own Flux. I really don't like the Lodestone ban. Because I feel like against something like an FA, Lodestone is just so strong. Because if you hit the Lodestone ultimate on FA, even if your Monarch ultimate hits, it doesn't go away. You can't first with Monarch also. I thought you could do that for sure. I don't think you can. Can you? No. I think you can because it removes all debuff. And, and, and if you get. You don't uh, remove all debuffs. For example, Fudo just occurs. No, no, but that. there's no. There's no. There's some debuffs you can, but it says on the skill removes all debuffs. And I know no, that some. Like, uh, so I know. Curse, right? some, yeah. yeah, I know some skills pertain to. Uh, Deep uh, or to Monarch ulti and, and, and abilities like that. But you can shrunken off the magic part of. Uh, you can Lodestone ultimate, yeah, you can. So can you, you do it on a strong, on a lodestone as well. If you, if you, I don't know if you can do it on the lodestone, but if you're the the carry getting lodestone altered, you can shrunken off the magic part. You still take hundred percent physical damage, but the, oh, the magic part like of the skill that. you can remove. So oh, okay. I, I would assume Monarch is able to perch it completely. Okay, so I will admit I am not a big fan of lodestone. I don't like the hero. Don't like to play against the hero even more. Uh, so I'm not actually 100% sure. This is one of the few heroes that I just don't really enjoy playing that much. No, but we should talk about uh, the Legion's picks. They went with Prisoner, Puppet Master, probably a mid lane here for Riptide. our Legion side. And they answered with Riptide. I don't think and Riptide wins that, right? A Eston hero. I mean, of course he doesn't. He's going to get Puppet showed and he's going to be hooked and he's going to be... Shackle, Chains. so he can't uh, under two out. He's he's gonna be very and susceptible Deadwood. if they put him in the mid lane. However, that would that's a Volker hero if I've ever seen one. Yeah, but, but it's also uh, a hero that uh, he has not always done that well on. Because that was a hero that doesn't disagree. really push out lanes. I think uh, Vulka and Deadwood is like for me, it's like one of the same thing. But I I do don't I don't think he's gonna play the Deadwood. It's it's gonna be torture on for Volka again, I'd, I'd assume. So it's probably dead with on Dosse. Yeah, but like the so the uh, the issue I've always had when Volka plays Deadwood is that he hunts a lot and falls off. If the game if they force down again, but, but that's that's fight. just the hero. You, you, yeah, you, I true. mean even if you farm, you're gonna fall off because you you have everything co cooked into your ultimate ability. It's something when you have like a deadwood. I really love when teams pick up scrap because the scrap just able to push out lanes and the deadwood just being able to sit behind the forex and kill the supports that try to defend it. Yeah, that is uh, like that's what we just talked about uh, a game ago here. So they pick up this corrupted disciple. So they have a dual core up. Puppet Master Corrupt the Disciple on Legion versus the dual core of Riptide FA, right? Yeah, uh, the Riptide mm. is definitely going to suffer this game, I'd say. Okay, so, uh, the, it, it, of course, it depends how they lane, but I was yep. so expecting Prisoner, Puppet Master, Middle, uh, Moraxis in the top lane, kind of suffer lane. Corrupt the Disciple, then four up bottom lane, right? Did you see that it's four on Riptide? Is this, is this I mean, I know he's been playing mid for this team mostly, but that kind of surprises me. I, I'd assume it was going to be four on. Eston FA. doesn't really play mid Riptide that much, does he? I mean, it, Riptide hasn't been picked in a long time, but it's it's something True. I remember from Eston used to spam in TMM like a long time ago. But uh, it's also a four here, I guess. Yeah, it is actually. They used to pick it up back when Fall played with um, Donkey Kong. I was gonna say um, with uh, Chris's Dark House. Team. Yeah, Dark House. Can't remember playing it that much, but in Donkey Kong they did play it at least. Yeah, Riptide, of course, being a very good one v one hero, but I think like Riptide has notoriously suffered a lot in the in a two v one situation, right? Yeah, I mean it's it's definitely. 
hard, but I guess Torture is going to be with him in the mid lane. So it's going to... Um, is that so? I, Torture did not pick up any items yet. We do see the Link pick up on the, on the Butterfly, of course. Uh, it might be a trial lane still. They just... They, like, honestly... If the enemy would would try lane, would, what what would that look like? That would be like Puppet Master Nymphora Prisoner Lane, or Puppet yeah. Master sorry or, or sorry uh, Corrupted plus Prisoner plus Nymphora Lane, but that's probably weaker. Yeah, Guess I you mean, probably want to start with the W from the Puppet Master. I would be very surprised if we could see the in the mid lane. It has to be Puppet Pup, Puppet Prisoner is such a disgusting hero combination. Yep. And like, uh, especially those two heroes together just work so beautifully well to um, lock down a single target, right? But if you, if there are more, um, it's, yeah, it's just not that, it's just not that strong anymore, right? If there are more targets, because Prisoner and Proper Master are both two very single target focused heroes. Yeah. So... I, I I would not go with the torturer in the mid lane together with the with the uh, riptide because I think the torture just gotta get is gonna get targeted instead then, and I feel like the riptide can't do anything to save him. Oh, torture's not gonna get targeted though because he's not gonna walk into uh, puppet show range. But yeah, but like even then he's still not riptide gonna be able to do anything, to. right? Oh, I yeah. mean I know, but the, the I think they have to attempt to dual lane this middle because if they go. Riptide if anything, alone, I would say if anything, then we would have to need to have the monarch there to save him with the W. Yeah, we could put the monarch there and then make him follow FA later in the game and have the F or the, the torture the torture sit top. I mean, they that's all obviously also an option. But is the monarch heal going to be enough? Do you think the monarch heal level one, of course, only reducing thirty five percent of damage reduction. It does heal for 90 instantly and for uh, 45 more over 3 seconds. But that is still just like 3 seconds of, you know, basically sitting in the tower, right? And where is this Corrupted going? Is Mate going on adventure again? Another adventure by Mate here. Uh, randomly I am invisible! <laughs> running through entire I'm teams. the enemy jungle. Uh, okay, it does actually look. Wait, no, it's yeah. Okay, dual lane, dual lane, and solo Moraxis. Moraxis is going to be in a suffer lane here. He does have the W, of course, to uh, protect himself from the monarch. And they are actually going to try lane top lane, which I think is fine. Honestly, you can always have just the um, either torture or the, the butterfly just stack the jungle for the FA. And... Torture should TP bottom then. Yeah, so I was they actually going to torture versus crop disciple. May, uh, and four, they can. I mean, I wouldn't expect them to win the lane, but they could do, do it decently in the bottom lane. Exactly, but I think they're gonna do that maybe after they see the lane set up. Yeah, that the torture I mean, might call bottom indeed, because the torturer does do, of course, a lot of damage with that impalement. That together with like a deadwood, and those are two very dangerous heroes that can still do a lot of damage, especially when there's a very squishy four there that's they just love to target. So maybe he's going to sit up, maybe try to get first blood. Uh, they haven't spotted any of them out. They do have a ward in the bottom lane, spotting out that that would solo. Sure, the They're actually going to jump him here instantly. Is that actually going to be Deadwood in trouble? The Corruptor's Conduit is going to hit, sit on the Deadwood here. It needs two more auto attacks from the, no, from the Fora. Okay. He needs... Oh, is he? He, st he stopped to... And the stun from the four is going to be up in a second. No, he misses it. Oh, that is unfortunate, actually. He's going to try to grasp back. Is he going to hit it? Vex is, is smarter. And he Dodges. dodged it. But in the end, nothing really happens there. And actually, in the top lane, we see Moraxis being chased down by two supports. Moraxis actually leveling the W level one. Probably to dodge the butterfly Q. Yeah. Um, and in the mid lane, we see uh, Riptide getting XP, which is surprising. I guess he's, their level 1 is still on the other two heroes. And Prisoner can't really force him out. I mean... No, not at this moment at least. Not, not until they get some levels, right? Oh, so it you has just... to be the publisher oh. first. Interestingly, no mana on the Prisoner. Prisoner he really needs to get some mana potion. Book, but uh, he was oh, he standing way too close. He has it now, yeah. Okay, so Torture does indeed port to the bottom lane. Um, we see that that would uh, port it back to base and uh, region up. 
And, and this does, of course, give a little bit more space to... Um, uh, the, oh, actually, in the mid lane, that is a puppet show together with the shackle, uh, dealing a lot of damage to the Riptides. The auto attacks just pumping in, and a puppet master uh, being out of mana right now is actually hurting a little bit. And a Haystrun spawning in the top lane. It's uh, interested to see if Monarch actually decides to go for that and maybe go yes. for like a quick kill in the mid lane because the enemies does not see this. Now, we do see Prisoner though. rotating Maybe. bottom lane. It's Prisoner's rotating bottom. Actually, he's going for the Maraxxus. That may have been an interesting choice. Prisoner uh, trying to set up a bottom... Uh, sorry, uh, an, an, a kill in the bottom lane. Uh, but I guess Riptide's... Yeah, Riptide's potion was on cooldown. So, he was half HP here. And he was just not confident enough to actually chill. Uh, and commit to that. Uh, Hansi going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Torture here. Torture being, of course... Yeah, uh, a pretty fast Good hero, luck. and he hits the hook actually, and the mi oh, the Max is gonna miss the misses. Sun. And that very is very unlike Max, but he has an apple. He's gonna be fine. Oh, and that is a cute dead wood root actually to save them both there. Um, yeah, Hansi just being slightly faster than the torture there because of the wind whistle, or actually same move speed, allowed him to catch up to him and hit the hook there. Uh, and that was not even me trying to meme that. That's actually just. You know, I think it could pick up, generally speaking. Um, anyway, uh, actually, there's a, a triple stack pull that they're going to pull here from the leech, sort of the helper side in the bottom lane. Uh, this should actually give them a lot of speed here, especially if they're not contesting this at all. But Corrupt Disciple is level four. He yeah, doesn't. Great levels. Yeah, he's not. He's, he shouldn't be scared to contest this, right? No, no. He's uh, quite strong and. They need level 3 on Deadwood. Yeah, uh, and level 2 Rotten Grass. They just need levels. Like, the heroes don't start... Their heroes don't dar start dealing damage until they get levels. Um, for second was Archer taking a little bit of harass damage in the top lane. Um, no Iron Shield picked up on for second Archer. I don't understand why people do this. It's, it's not a must touch, for sure. Not a must. I mean, it, it's fine to have, but... I feel like it's just so efficient still for farming as well. Actually, Riptide picking up a double damage rune. Oh, that could be huge for Riptide, because Riptide has plus a, a 40 agility. Base, uh, base damage, yeah. Yeah, plus 30 agility at this point. So that is not just like a little bit of extra damage. That is a lot of extra damage. Um, yeah, it looks like Legion Side is currently winning like two out of the three lanes. And doing pretty decent in the last lane. There's no like... There's like no gold for the uh, Axis, but he is getting a lot of XP. And actually, in the bottom lane, I think all the tower attacking them right now. But if Corrupt Disciple commits to this, he got that first part in the mid lane. They oh my god! Uh, and disables, and he just hit the rift, uh, the, uh, the prisoner with DD. I mean, he just two shot him. Yeah, that's double damage ripped out for you right there. That is just like so Hansi dangerous. Doing Hansi things. I mean, what is going on? Oh, and in the top lane, actually, wait. Um, the butterfly ported out, so... Forsaken Archer is solo here. Forsaken Archer actually missing the, the crippling volley. That's quite unfortunate. Um, and there's no mana on the Maraxxus to actually commit to this kill. He has 10 charges on power supply. He almost has his ultimate up. The Forsaken Archer. He needs one more last hit. He's going for it. Gets it. And that Close. is ultimate, and that might be a dead Maraxxus if... Max is trying really to nice trees. kill by Eston. No ports though. Another single was, port. I think the free is counter kill. Uh, there is a port on the Corrupted Disciple, but Corrupted Disciple has no mana whatsoever. Puppet Master having a port ready, deciding not to use it. Maybe because he was scared of the prisoner going for, sorry, the Riptide going for him, but Riptide actually going toe to toe with the Puppet Master. I mean, look at the GPM. He's 270 on Riptide, 290 on. Or 300 on, on Puppet Master. So that first spot by Paul manning up with the DD just completely saved his game. He's like back in the game. Yeah, because he, he has like 60 last hits, like half of that of the, of the Puppet Master. But yeah, like an, an early kill on this point of the game. It hurts. It hurts a lot. Oh, that's a good hook, but not actually fast enough with the W. Um, I would have liked for the Puppets to just get some arrest damage in there. Maybe, I think Puppet Master, uh, sorry, uh, is, uh, sorry, Kevin plus uh, Hansi have not historically laned together that much, or that Maybe well, I, I should say. <laughs> um, 
Laning with hands she can sometimes be frustrating, I know from experience. It, it can be painful for the brain, but <laughs> you get used to it with time. We, us that have played with Hansi for a long time and, and even in teams with him, knows yeah. that, that Hansi is actually quite good. You just have to get used to him. He has a different yeah. way of playing the game and thinking. In general, like he, he makes some interesting decisions sometimes. It just takes a Are bit you? of adjustment, but uh, exactly. definitely works. Oh, wow. Deadwood getting dived here. Uh, what do you think about the armor tower. boots? Armor boots on Craft the Disciple. Definitely not a bad uh, choice versus this uh, help on lineup. I mean, they have next to no magic damage. It's Deadwood and Riptide and FA. Oh, in the top lane, that's a hook on the Forsaken Archer. They're going on oh, Forsaken Archer. Fine. Forsaken Archer is turning it though, currently because of the uh, the shackle. For, sorry, the heal from the monarch monarch sorry the thing archer not choosing to man up and the port from the corrupt disciple there to finish off the second archer that's a one for one exchange right now make it a one for two because the monarch is also going to fall and that is five people actually rotating to the top lane i think busy just really screamed them then why did no one tp and suddenly everyone was carrying tps and actually at the rune oh, that might be not be a fight so there riptide together with the torture and that is a quick kill on that guy oh and that's a haste rune he might go for more because he's smelling blood but puppet master does actually have his ultimate plus a w up right now so riptide choosing not to pop the Haste right there, but he's still he's looking. He's just gonna let the Deadwood back in the game. They TP top with everyone, so he's just gonna be sitting bottom. Okay, here comes some Raxus. I, I yeah, thought he might get a minute or two here for free. True, Deadwood is of course a hero that gets like exponentially more dangerous the moment he gets six. It's like it's an, a difference between day and night. And uh, oh, look at this by the way, Fulka together with the Riptide just sitting on top of this hill with a very good ward from Beans actually, and they really want to dive this. Um, I think Fall's I am... gonna run mid to farm. Don't think he can. But help Corrupt himself. Disciple currently not actually getting anything. Is he gonna get hooked into the tower here? Question. No, he's not. I think Kevin should have definitely W'd him there, right? Wait, he has like haste. It. He had haste, but. I mean, the Q also lasts for 2.4 seconds on the Puppet Master, so I think that is. Or 2.6 seconds even. So I think the Q from the Puppet Master, actually Puppet Master might be dead if he's not careful because Torturing is in the area. And remember, that is a Hasted a Riptide. Hasted Riptides are very dangerous. Prisoner also not close enough to actually save him here. There's no wards that is actually going to defend him here. Um, are they going to go for it? I think they're waiting for the Puppet Master to walk up the cliff here. And then they might choose to do something if they do that. Okay, never mind. Uh, the prisoner going bottom lane, dead with level 6 now, of course, but um, if you have a Moraxis against an. You can't Deadwood, really kill the Moraxis, and you can no, dodge and every skill with W. And... The Moraxis can actually kill the Deadwood, though. Yeah, Deadwood has to be careful. He is going to try. Now, that is a hook that is going to hit on the Deadwood. Deadwood uh, activating his E, getting some slow resistance, but not enough, and that is dead Deadwood. Max even TPs to make sure uh, that Deadwood can't run away. Doesn't yeah, have a ward. I thought he TP to ward, but TP to make sure that uh, he and got away as they're farming jungle kind, on leaf kind or of, help on Yeah, here. kind of like leaving the Corrupt Disciple out to dry here, I feel. Corrupt Disciple having that PK, but... Sorry, the TP. But they really want to prioritize the PK on the Maraxxus, I guess, right? Or maybe Max is just trying to stack the jungle so the Corrupted can farm it later. Uh, I do really like the the Energizer pickup on the Corrupted, by the way, because it is just enough mana region to where you can reliably spam your Q. It is just such a perfect item for the hero, because he needs that movement speed. I mean, he's, he's actually doing a quite a good job to just getting sitting here, getting a couple of ways so far. I'm not uh, getting his GPM tank too much as... Yeah, Stay but jumping on Hellborn, so they don't really have the biggest catch, right? So he's actually gonna get cute here and take a little bit of a rest damage. Max, uh, of course, being here again to heal him back up. And in the mid lane, we see a lot of people actually being here. And that is the real Puppet Master there. And he presses Ultimate and W, but he's going to run away from this. Is he has a TP, but. It doesn't look like he's going to be able to TP out Maraxxus there to uh, save him from the back line. Rax is going in, in the front line. Torture getting the Chrysalis and the ultimate from the Monarch, but Torture is going to fall. And that is 
an M4 port, I hear. Yes, there. The M4 port. Uh, I think they saw the M4 port actually with the wards, because they have very good wards in the top lane. Actually, a lot of wards in the top lane. Um, but that started off as a bait, with Papa Master using his illusions to actually try and bait the enemy, and him catching the Deadwoods. And the the Hellborn side just being a little bit too flabbergasted to really properly respond to that. Also, Deadwood has not been able to punch anyone this game. Oh wow, look how aggressive the Corrupt Disciple is playing. And that is a kill on the Ripta. It's That's a very good kill. But look at this Corrupt Disciple. Yes, yeah, he's just standing there. Can you look? You bought the Neophyte's book, right? For the it's light, light brand. Brand. I assume, yeah, to, to farm this jungle. That is a lightly stacked, mostly double stacks here. Yeah, what? like if they're like, they don't really want to farm their jungle necessarily because they just want to prevent the Forsaken Archer from farming, right? It's true, I mean, uh, Hellborn is sitting on top of each other, not really farming on any heroes right now except the FA and Legion grouping up here, getting the top tower as well yep. as uh, the waves while, uh, I mean, Rob Disciple just gets to sit on his own. Quietly farming. You know what? You know, like a crop. This, uh, you know, the last crop disciple game we casted together. Can't there was this. Uh, uh, he went for no farm lane. Oh yeah. I remember. This is actually the one time I would have maybe liked to actually scrap that in the top lane. They uh, jump on the monarch. Monarch might instantly fall right off the path. Monarch has survived with a little bit of HP. Monarch with one HP. Go to survive. Has the power. Uh, oh, never mind. This is, smells uh, blood. The W activated, giving him max movement speed. Okay, that is two kills though. Um, and Meanwhile, Volka and Deadwood is uh, hunting for Max. Yeah, I don't think Max is surviving this. Well, Max starts to stun already, so that one so second on the Deadwoods and uh, three seconds on the on the chains. Now this Max is, is definitely going to fall here. No fire blades made sure of that on the second archer, and this is like the power of the no fire blades right here, right? Because if Maraxxus had any kind of mana right now, maybe he could have survived if he really played it well. Maraxxus without mana is just, it's a creep. Like, it's a farmable creep. Yeah, I mean, he, he likes to get that really early Nullfire Blade. He bought the uh, the Soul Scream Ring for the Nullfire Blade already in lane. Before yeah, I like that. Boots and went the straight help. into to Nullfire Blade without uh, missing a beat. Meanwhile, though... Corrupt Disciple is 500 GPM, and uh, the problem with this help on lineup is they had have no really way of killing him. As there's no way for Deadwood to solo him or for Riptide to roam, so he's just gonna be pushing this bottom tower. Meanwhile, yeah, and there you really see the the Deadwood, uh, sorry, the armor boots pick up. Actually, Max is going to fall here. He also, oh, finally got to punch hey. someone. Man, that must feel good. After 30 minutes of not being able to punch someone. And oh, funny enough, the XP lead actually uh, swapped. XP yeah, lead in, so. in, in uh, favor. Hellborn, I mean, they went on the Monarch and he he, he got Chrysalis off, the ultimate off. And, and almost survived trading for the Nupora and the Miraxis and the Prisoner. So three for one here. I yeah, and that is. Uh, oh, wait, as we see, Crop the Disciple pick up a haste rune. And the four porting in with the uh, um, Puppet Master there on the um, Deadwood. Deadwood not having a great game. He did get his legs, though. That does actually help a lot. And there's no Fireblade level 2 done on the Forsaken Archer, but yeah. Like, the, the way I always describe no Fireblade, especially in this early stage of the game against any strength hero is as a pseudo silence and i think that like applies here very much as well because an enemy without like mana is practically silenced yeah. oh but they do actually want to steal some stacks here uh they are maybe looking to defend this i see three people rotating over here deadwood just spawned i believe is boarding to the top lane but they are instead maybe going to jump Maraxxus middle no Maraxxus jump activating the w uh, protecting himself Puppet Master getting closer and closer to that shroud and then also being becoming a huge threat. But to get the hook. Oh wait, Deadwood uh, is in a huge trouble here. The prisoner is saving him and that is a dead, dead prisoner. Max getting uh, hit, they're tipping out. Everyone they is stop out. TP. But there's they so little can. stunts on the Hellborn side. 
I mean, Monarch just saved them again. Like, Monarch is such an insane hero. He gets the Chrysalis and uh, then gets is, hooked yeah. into four people and still gets out. They trade the supporting cast. So. Like, the, the, the max, like, maxing the Chrysalis here. Or, sorry, this is actually Beans. Sorry, playing. The Monarch mix, maxing the Chrysalis here is paying off so much. It's incredibly powerful. Rax is here in the bottom lane, does has his, have his, has his PK, he just needs to buy it. Um, um, Corrupt Disciple just steadily farming on, because this jungle has not been contested like at all this entire game, right? No, it's been untouched, he's been just been able to do his whole entire thing the entire game, so... He has the same GPM as FA, which is quite impressive considering how fast uh, FA as a hero farms. Yeah, because look at this triple stack and look what it's like FA is doing. If yeah. I just right click the triple stack for like three seconds and it all dies. It's uh that's just the power of the FA, I guess. It's uh yes. and the null fire blade for sure, because it, it I think it honestly it is the null fire blade partially that's making FA so strong because it's not like the 80 damage that the null fire blades or the 80 times or 80 times 0.5 for 40 damage. It doesn't get reduced by 45% because it's pit fire or anything like that. It deals the full damage. And that is uh, PK Moraxis shining through together with Corrupted Disciple picking off a kill on the Deadwood, preventing him from getting basically anything this game. And Deadwood can't really, you know, push out lanes or anything like that. The hero doesn't do that. He doesn't and this fire. is like the suffer, the suffer Deadwood that I was talking about, right? If you don't get like your, your good early game off, then Deadwood is such a suffer hero. And actually the tower is going to be in a 9 range here. Deny, nice maybe I've opened that. It's a good hook by Hansi. Catching the prisoner, instantly uh, stunned on top by the Rex's Great coordination of those two. Hansi always getting the shackle off so the Riptide cannot W away. And that is a very big kill because that is the second core, right? That was a Riptide that was previously like 330 GPM or something. And he dies once again. Riptide also being a hero that doesn't really recover that fast. They can't really farm as well, and FA is not doing better than, than CD, and they do have the Puppet Master with the Shroud as well picked up, so Puppet is also going to be a threat for the FA when all exactly. is done. Exactly, and whenever like the Puppet is not showing currently, that is just so dangerous all of a sudden, right? Because they don't really have any kind of vision in their jungle. Um, so you don't know if the Puppet Master is either farming the jungle, is he ganking, is he like smoking, is he going with an Infora ultimate somewhere? You just don't know. And it just makes like, it makes the game tense. You per like you permanently feel like you're under pressure. And of course that is the power of the Infora, right? Yeah, I mean they, the synergy is there and an Infora can always uh, pop up right next to you with a, with an ally and we know exactly. Max, you and me, and he, he is very good at utilizing this port and yep. trying to call for plays and look at the map, so... Yeah, and uh, Moraxis um, is also just such a great corner, isn't it? Because the Axis, of course, dealing percentage of HP, or percentage of max HP, as you say. Um, dealing like 3-4%, 6% of Congress HP, but with every uh, Axe. I think if you're patient enough, you can definitely like solo Kong as Max with spell shots. But when do you ever get spell shots? And time you probably can, yeah. But well, it's it's the it's the max health, right? It's not the current health, it's max health. Yeah, yeah, two six percent of max health, so you You're slowly like gonna whittle them down. Twenty ish axes and, and it'll it'll die. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so Forsaken Archer getting close to that shrunken, but of course, uh, Corrupted Disciple being quite a strong pick against Forsaken Archer because uh, Forsaken Archer doesn't naturally have like the highest auto attack damage, right? He generally relies more on attack speed and other kind of sources. He usually tops out at like 200, 250 auto attack damage. Uh, if you can train like half of that, that is a lot of prevented damage with the Corrupted. And Corrupted really went for like this tank build here, which I actually like more and more the more I see in action. So uh, I'm gonna uh, um, give my kudos to uh, Mate for this build here with the armor boots. Um, it, it basically made Deadwood like a non-factor to him. 
I mean, he never got punched once, but uh, it hasn't been a problem. I, I did really like the armor boots, and I think it was the right choice to help on side. He has 20 armor, which is great versus Deadwood E and the Riptide. So. And so, it also helps his team as well. Also helps his team also for five Because he also went days. for the uh, Ring of the Teacher. Which is something that I normally don't really pick up on the Corrupted, because you gen I generally would like uh, to go for the Energizer faster before that. But um, if you're laning with something like Nifora, Nifora like doesn't have any kind of agility gain. 1.2 agility per level. Uh, so armor is not really a thing on Nifora. Just helping your Nifora with like a little bit of extra armor is definitely just also preventing his death in that case. Definitely not bad, no. Anyway, um... I feel like the Hellborn is definitely the one under pressure in this in this game. And slowly getting Torture out of the is um, like okay, so like normally Torture would be able to just push out this lane a lot further, but because of the Nymphora, you just kind of can't, right? And actually, in the top lane, they might actually get a jump here. This is ultimate and sorry, W on the dead with a missed stun though from the prisoner, and that's going to happen. But in the mid lane. Mid lane, we see both Corrupted and Maraxxus trying to jump the Riptide, so two jumps. Uh, nothing really happens, but I mean, it's it's fine to do these kind of plays if there's no response, right? Because what is I the mean, response from the Hellborn side? It's free to attempt as long as you don't die yourself, and exactly. Hellborn just uh, burned a couple abilities and, and they got back and went to region and uh, no harm done. So And that is like the great... I, I think it's really good decision by them that they don't commit to these fights because they don't have to and actually just sitting in the DD rune for in the bottom lane they do actually see it and they try to go for it as well there's a good ward here on the on the on the Congor cliff by um, the Hellborn Congor um, but yeah like if you don't commit for these team fights you don't really give the opportunity for the enemy to really respond to it and get something done. Actually, Marax is um, smoking up, maybe getting a jump on the butterfly here, if the butterfly is not careful enough. But just look at the map positioning, right? So currently, if the Legion team would just con take control of their own jungle, they would have like 70 to 90% of the map on the farm. And Corrupt Disciple picked up a shrunk and is actually in a dangerous spot right there, smoked. Riptide smoked that well. with a PK, and he's, he's not the getting the punch off actually. And that was Nothing's very anticlimactic actually. Both teams run away. I mean, I thought that was literally just gonna punch him. I've, I've seen this like this meme involved. of like just like a man and a bear just walking into each other and uh, scaring the crap out of each other. That's kind of what happened there, I think. Two yeah, people just smoking into just... each other and like, oh shit. Well, and way. Deadwood's ultimate is actually like stupidly slow, animation-wise. Yeah, it has uh, quite a wind-up. Max is just being Max. He's uh, every time this wave comes up, he watch out the wave. With oh my the, God! Uh, uh, Dead, uh, uh, Max uh, actually peeking out of the Deadwood uh, ultimate. Max ultimating, saving maybe the Deadwood and the second Archer. The second Archer has shrunken uh, in the backline. He doesn't pop it yet. Uh, oh, the corrupt disciple doesn't have a shrunk enough. He's going to fall oh here. God. Two to the second archer. That's huge for the Hellburn side. Three it's people up. Puppet Master, gonna Puppet have Master with DD. Torturer smoking up to not get smoking caught by the, by, the, by the Puppet Master. That's a smart play by him. But the Corrupt Disciple didn't have a shrunk in there. Oh, so wait. He that, that is... it in the last fight to try to avoid the, the follow up from the Deadwood ulti that didn't go off. The team they ported the to their own jungle. Um. Sorry, the enemy jungle. Sorry, there is actually a ward here on their own hard cap. So they see this. They know this. Are they interested in fight? Puppet Master also just picked up his own shrunken. DD ran out. But maybe the Legion side is okay. So if you're going to farm our jungle, then you know, we will just gladly take yours then. Mexic continues to split push here. Let's see. Who is. But yeah, you see, like the Monarch uh, hero is just so impactful once again here. Uh, it initially saved the Deadwoods and the... Because um, I don't know if you caught the start of what happened there, actually. Didn't. B but um, the Deadwood PK'd in, tried to ultimate, and before the ultimate went through, Marax's PK'd out. And while that happened, both 
Forsaken Archer and Deadwood both got hooked by the by the prisoner. And then Morax is stunned. So that was basically two dead heroes, if not for the Monarch Ultimate saving both of them. Really uh, clutch ultimate then. I mean, they're setting up here in the bot lane. Will Hunt to try to hook someone? He, do, uh, he will. Oh, that is a big hook. That's actually haste on the rip side, so it's not going to do anything. Uh, or a port from the side. I don't think they see this. They do didn't. they have a refort down? The refort can may have just spotted Kevin him. Find someone. He can. Oh, but that that he is for second archer. That's for second archer. They're jumping for second archer, but that is, however, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, monarch W Crystalis, and the second archer going to live here in the backline. Uh, the Riptide together oh. with the Deadwoods. That's a DD Riptide again. Yes. DD hasted Riptide chasing down the Raxus. And he dodges oh, the stun in the back line. In the tower. But that is, I think, going to be that. But DD hasted Riptide. And they want more, but they're not going to get anything more. But that's the Puppet Master. Puppet Master Rob has no the armor. Disciple barely died there. I mean, again, Monarch saving the, the FA. Comes out of Shrunken and. Or comes out of the the puppet hold and then shrunk and up and fights. Yeah, you almost have like this. You have to save the puppet show for after the monarch ultimate, but you can't do that because once the monarch ultimate hits, he can instantly pop a shrunken. Because I will say that I believe that the puppet it's, show is one of the few abilities that actually does not get cancelled by the monarch ultimate. Yeah, uh, pu puppet show uh, is is unpurchable by everything, I think, right? Yeah, I believe so as well. It's one of the few abilities. And it does last for three and a half seconds. So if you can somehow force the Crystalis and then like um, get it up. But this is what I was saying about the Nullfire Blades, remember? Because yeah. there was a, a, a couple of games ago, I think like a week ago, we had a Corrupted Disciple and the Corrupted Disciple went for a Nullfire Blade. And I said I really didn't like that. But I think this game specifically, because you know, Deadwoods, you can purge that. Uh, you can purge the Crystalis, you can purge like, uh, drain the mana from the Deadwoods, you can purge the ultimate from the Monarch, the movement speed. There's just so much like, need for no fire blades in the Hellborn team. And there's only one guy that can like, realistically pick it up here. Yeah. I mean, the, the Monarch has just proven to be almost the most impactful hero in the entire game. Uh, Definitely the most impactful, impactful hero pick, so it, it's been a great Oh, year for wait, that is an M4 port. Oh, okay, he's just going to ward up then there, I guess, right? Yeah. That is something like Max really likes to do. Like, just get like a really sneaky ward that is basically uncounterable. It's, it's, it's by definition uncounterable because how the fuck do you expect this ward? You have vision around, you can see that nobody has been there, and just cheap to the trees and, and makes it happen here. Okay, so what you do is you buy 60 couriers and you every like little spot in the trees there, you send one courier. And then hope that Max doesn't kill them all. Yeah. Efficiently Great. micro them, no problem. I mean, Riptide almost has a PKB, which I, I think he's going for with the Mighty Blade here. Yeah, and of course, like, um, you could say, well, you know, hey, uh, he's just gonna get like drained by the, by the Corrupted, but Corrupted doesn't want to drain the Riptides. Corrupted wants to drain the Forsaken Archer. And, um, oh, Kevin playing really aggressive here, actually. Um, I don't away. think they saw him. They have no wards there. Kevin uh, spotted them, everyone, but his own ward here. Yeah, but, like, okay, so the Puppet Master having no armor right now is definitely hurting him, right? Because, like, Puppet Master melted. He had a shrunken up. It doesn't matter if Riptide and Deadwood are there. I mean, the Deadwood can solve it them for sure. Hook misses. On the butterfly, I don't even know if they could have actually killed him. Maybe if they got the puppet master, sh the puppet show off instantly. I think, think they could have, but nobody was close. So eventually, they would kill butterfly here. But, yeah, but uh, the the team support will be very close, very fast, right? I mean, they were where nobody was even remote close, but you know, maybe they. Could. Oh, they had wards. They had wards actually. Good ward by the puppet soul there. Oh, by puppet soul there. As uh oh, and that is actually a maybe a kill on the deadwood. Yeah, that's dead deadwoods. Or just Deadwoods, I guess. Um, they did not spot the wards either from Kevin there. So, well played by him. Uh, good wards coming out, and that's... I love it when he does that. 
Um, on the other hand, we also see actually Monarch getting a really sneaky wards up in the bottom jungle. Max is buying Codex, by the way, just to, to let you know. Well, it's not Codex anymore. It's, I thought a Neophyte's book and the... the Wait, what the does... Punch Dagger doesn't put Codex, but... Oh no, it's the it's the Major Totem. Yeah, it's the Major Totem now. It was like, what so... is Max doing? He bought the he bought the the punch tag a long time ago, so I thought maybe he's going ghost marches like late since he's just were shrunk and by corrupted for cycle. So I think they need a sand scepter, right? They do. That would make it sense. It doesn't build into a sand scepter. Nope. It does build into ghost marchers and a tablet, I would say. That is the most likely Um Well we might actually see it here. See Has to ones. be a tablet. Uh, Fulka and um, and uh, Crocodile so Cypher smoking. Hansi. Yeah, smoking fast each other. Ansi being in the Hansi wrong place at away. the wrong time. Dodging every ability, but doesn't matter. Just they're just too many. This game, uh, Hansi has been so impactful on the prisoner. Yeah, I mean they were confident confident enough to pick him in two two games in a row and. He's had some great hooks here. Fortunately, the Monarch has, has spoiled a lot of the attempts to, to do well with it. They TP top lane, they're trying to avoid this uh, push by the help on side. They go for the mid tower here. Geo's finished on FA. Trunk and finish on Riptide. They are quite strong at the moment on Hellborn. Because if they can get rid of the Crystals, and they get to jump at the then the Forsaken Archer is still gonna fall, right? Yeah, he's gonna die extremely quick if he doesn't get Chrysalis uh, and and his puppet altered. But with the Chrysalis, of course, he also doesn't attack his own puppet, so it's even like better at that point. Um, but as long as they don't have a way to purge the Chrysalis, Grab the Disciple still not going for something like a Null Fire Blade, still no. It is actually a tablet, by the way. Uh, I do see a Half Flower on the Maraxis, but I don't actually like it that game this much. It's into the hell to the to the monarch once again. So, I would like for the Moraxis to almost maybe just get a shrunken because um, it it prevents a lot of damage from the FA, and it just it deals with the no fire blades. No fire blade is such a big issue for the Moraxis, and five people being kind of everyone being up sneaky in the top here. lane they're trying to find the corrupt disciple he's gonna I mean be out I wouldn't say that's Max I could stop that was very sneaky there I mean what would you so, ever consider buying a frostal scroll to just catch people no I, I don't see what hero would pick it up here and, and we see a, a port in the bottom lane up. by the way yeah like Max is just playing taxi right now yeah they they're just split pushing on uh, on Legion side here, they're trying to avoid them as much as possible, and they are doing that to some success. Yeah, they are. They they took both towers in the top lane. And look at top by the way, has no to, no HP. The ward situation is like heavily in favor of the Hellborn side here because we see three like really good wards at key positions on the map. One at the entrance of the jungle, one at the Conger pit, and one at the entrance of the Hellborn jungle on the left side. Uh, actually, four wards if you count that the uh, Noxious Crawler by Beans uh, here. So. so, this is like insane good vision, but then four just kind of like doesn't I care don't... about that because he just ports, right? Yeah, and if you look at those base towers from uh, from uh, from Hellborn, they 250 on the bottom tower and 450 on the top tower. So, those towers are slowly dying to the split but push. Does this game favor? The Hellborn side or the Legion side, if this goes on for like five more minutes. I would... At some point, this Forsaken Arch is gonna get a symbol sooner rather than later. Um, and Conwar is gonna be up in two minutes. So, the Puppet Master is also gonna to get stronger, stronger. He's gonna be stronger than. Oh, the wait, they might actually catch the uh, Corrupted Disciple here. He oh my get, god, oh, the gets tablet. tablet out of the roots. And if he prepped his shrunk in there and like. Try to TP, that would have cancelled him with the ultimate. Yeah. I mean, Max with the clutch tablet. Max is just uh, the ma main driver here in, in the spit pushing, and he's just. He learns from the best. Shout out to Shorkan. And that would still sitting yeah. in the top lane, but not enough people there. And actually, he is he going to jump. This time. He, but he there is no. 
There is no TP he's, he's anymore. He's got a TP. Because the W doesn't they actually can't stop cancel. Him. Kevin's it gonna is... take top tower, it's gonna die. Oh, he did use his protection. Oh, and they pick Volta up Max. Max. He's the like a crime to see if Volta killed Max. The fairy did not, des des not deserve to die here. Um, we see also, by the way, look at this, Maraxxus and prisoners sitting in the mid lane. They may have scouted him. Forsaken Archer is, of course, playing fairy defense if he's actually baiting with an illusion here. Um, Kevin just slowly chilling in the top lane. Oh, Cleaver on Riptide. Interesting. Oh, top lane has a jump. There is probably not enough to save him there unless the Mana gets there in time, but no, that's just too fast. And I think... If Hellborn gets to run here, there's no PK or anything on the Torturer. Corrupt Disciples still just chilling in the bottom lane and they're, they're, just, they're being dodged so hard, right? Yeah, they're just getting split pushed endlessly. What do you think? I mean, the Cleaver on Riptide, if this is how Hellborn is going to, or Legion is going to play, it's quite good actually. It's going to be able to push out these lanes really fast and he's just going to get farmed eventually. Yeah, but does the Cleaver actually help you that much with it? I mean, you can't farm on Riptide without it, right? You, there's no way to kill uh, kill a wave. True. I mean, I would still have liked for the Riptide to go Frost of Skull here, honestly, because of the split push bullshit. And there's there's no way you go Frost of Skull. You can you can you can like uh, go for a fighting item like Nullfire by it. Another one when the team would be great. It's great on Riptide, but I don't think you ever go another strength item if you scale mainly off your agility. Yeah, but. I think the main issue is that they're being dodged, not that, that they're being outskilled. I think they're, they are scaling properly with the uh, FA and the uh, Deadwood to punch down the Puppet Master. Although Puppet Master did actually manage to pick up a little bit of armor right now and a DD rune on top of them. The Geos, yeah. Also gonna make it hard for, for, for Deadwood to punch him when he has True, because you can cancel the Deadwood ultimate with the Geos if you're fast enough. And because you can get out of the route even when you don't have Shrunken. Yeah. Well, wait. I think you still got rooted right after, no? Oh, you don't. You have like a half a second to run out. No. No. You get no, like you get eight vulnerability right frames. Yeah, you can get lucky if you like RT edge and then pop geos. You have like a two-thirds chance to get inside again. That's generally speaking how that works. But. Like, it's also just for the Riptide slow and the W in the silence and that kind of stuff that you just want to get rid of it. It's just like, no, a Geo Bane on Puppet Master in general it always just feels really good to have. And the Legion side is just like, they're splitting up the map way more efficiently. Yeah, they are, uh, but the and they don't... Is, is equal, so they, they are uh, split pushing better, but they're not getting ahead in gold, at least. Oh, and uh, that's going to be a wing bow on the Corrupt Disciple. Would you have liked to see something else? Maybe something like a bola or something? I don't hate the wing bow, it's gonna force FA, which is a bit of a solo core as Riptide only has 350 GPM currently into yeah. getting a, a Savage Mace. True. But since you are against like a solo core and that is the top tower actually is falling, I mean, Deadwood is not being able to push Shift out. Is this the moment for Deadwood Cleaver? No, of course not. That's just the moment for Death with Lightning. Ah, Death with Hyper Crown. Yeah. You know, you know what? I played Prisoner with a with a cleaver yesterday. And my team was ridiculing me, right? <laughs> Unjust word or unjustified. Because clearly you see it's like if, if Prisoner had a cleaver here and this he would be farming like mad right now. Yeah. I don't know what to say, that's true, right? Should, should have done that. <laughs> you obviously. respond about the same way as my team when they figured out that I bought a cleaver on Prisoner. Oh, oh, uh, oh. Yeah. He's added he's again, eh? Oh. No, Red but. Um, Shroud on, on FA, what do you think about this? I like it. They need to start catching people. That, like, they, they have had so much issues with catching people, right? Because the Forsaken Archer is not really a pick off hero, not like the Puppet Master. The Deadwood does is like the lowest farm in their in their team. Vulka finally picked up and PK actually. Um, he has Blink Storm to catch someone now, but most of the game he hasn't been able to catch people too too. Yeah, 
And uh, I also say that like the Legion side has just been playing this really well. For sure, they they just been committing to the red race here. Completely yeah, and abolishing what should be human and they're just split pushing and it's so frustrating to play against and it's yeah. so effective. They're doing such a good oh, job. Oh, we see the four port. That is a ballsy port on look out oh, my Oh Max. Oh you dirty bastard. They did pick up an eye, which is definitely a smart idea. Uh that does not see Congor. If I'm mistaken, not mistaken. No, it, it shows the mid lane, it doesn't. Like it's, it's this weird little spot of vision, if you look at the Congor. Yeah, on the but, right left side, but it's not gonna show Kong. No, no, no. I, when, they, when they move away, you'll see it. But um, they're like, look at this, they're, they're just splitting up the map so efficiently. And I don't really see a lot of Monarch Wards, the night crawlers, like crawling around. How many do you can you have at the, at the same time? Three. Do you know? I think they, he has one here, one there. Three, he three wards. wards yeah. out, right? Three wards. You can have up. Okay, and he has two, so not too bad. I guess he's just really three. afraid to like go out, which does make sense against the puppet master. Puppet master being able to just burst you down from full is just no. And even the Maxis with the hell flower. Anyone who is solo at any place is just always under so much pressure. I mean, that's why the Hellflower was actually really good for Maxis. I mean, the way they're playing it, it's really important to have this Hellflower in the side lanes. True. So whenever some from, someone from Hellbot shows up and they're not with Monarch, they're just gonna die. Like this Deadwood. Like the Deadwood in the top lane. Deadwood in the top lane playing a dangerous game. I don't know if they saw him, but now Puppet is showing and Puppet might be playing a dangerous game at the same time now. Is they don't have any kind of vision here, and that is Rax is going in, and that is a he missed the Q. Um, that clearly did show though that they were not interested in fighting that. So, Puppet Master walking over the Revort there, Forsaken Archer porting from home, shrouding in right now. But Forsaken Archer cannot just YOLO in because the Puppet Master, because Forsaken Archer with this much damage is just gonna one shot himself. I mean, as soon as he pops BKB and it's down, then then he's uh, up for grass. More access can kill him. The problem master can kill him. He's uh, he just has good reason to be scared. What do you think about? By the way, uh, we haven't talked about this, but the corner buffs, right? Uh, corrupted disciple going for three damage uh, procs. I think it's fine. I mean, you're more movement, movement speed guy, I know, but he's already walking 500 movement speed. So, yeah, but they, it's also because he has an Energizer and because he has uh, a Dawnbringer. So you clearly want movement speed. Yeah, but but uh, I mean, In you're already fast enough. I mean, 12% uh, damage on every ability is, is not nothing when you're already... You, you could be faster though. Yes, you could be faster, Dutch, but is it, is it really better in the long run? I don't think so. Yes, it is. Obviously, because you're faster. No, and I, I just like going at max movement speed. If any of you have ever seen me play Blacksmith, you'll know why. I just like role-playing as a, as a Ferrari, but... Uh, five people in the top lane for both teams right now. Uh, standing off, and uh, it seems like the Legion side is the one that is currently interested in breaking the stalemate of the split push. Partially because Marax has probably picked up a, peak, a Shrunken Head. And they don't really have that good tools, and they jump, and try to shoot the Maraxxus with the strike in but it's not going to be enough. Instantly dies. Riptide having no armor actually instantly melts to uh, the Corrupted Disciple who drained him and just started in the auto attacks. You see that Corrupted Disciple still has plus 78 damage from the corrupt from the Riptide there. Riptide with his cleaver is, yeah, it's a 300 GPM Riptide with a cleaver against a 600 GPM Corrupted Disciple. That was never going to be a fair fight. Uh, oh, actually, great hook prisoner, by Hansi. prisoner picking up the uh, the sand scepter, which is a really important pickup. I would have liked Max to pick up a sand scepter a little bit earlier as well this game, but um, they bought he's enough been time. Really poor. I mean, he has had, already had 200 GPM, but he's been warding so much. I mean, the ghost marchers he got at like 40 minutes or something. So. Yeah, true, but I. <laughs> yeah, that's actually true. But I don't actually believe that he got his wards countered a lot. No, it's, it wouldn't wouldn't look like Max. Uh, also, he hasn't lot. finished his quest yet. Yeah, that's also interesting. Stack five neutral camps. You'd, Max, it's been 45 minutes. How have you not stacked five neutral camps? He's probably stacked four and forgot about it. 
That is uh, Stefanos gold, though. It's a lot they of did gold. not forget about Hunger, however. Instantly, they a moment right. spawns. Same goes for Hellbone, right? As soon as this is done, he's gonna hit. Yeah. Yeah, likely also because they know that the enemy is also just going for Do you think they're yeah. gonna do any kind of Nefora play right now? They don't have... They don't have the... Wards. They do have one ward there. But... I actually just don't think they need to. Right? They are slowly winning. Um... Kevin boarded together with Max here. Uh, Max getting another sneaky ward in the lane there. Riptide picking up the Hellflower now. Now that is a good pickup. Because... They really needed something like that, right? Because you saw they jumped on Moraxis with the, the Deadwood Ultimate and the Riptide W, I believe. Yeah, and but he got to press Franken before he got the Hellfire off. He had the Hellfire last fight. Wait, he did? Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, he did. 100% he did. Oh. Oh, then, okay, that makes a lot more sense actually why he jumped. Yeah, um, he, he jumped and didn't get the Hellfire off. He got to press PKB by, on Busy and then he got hooked on Riptide, so. Oh, okay, yeah. And Riptide actually having a s very surprisingly small amount of of uh, armor here. Oh, he has a, a bunch when uh, he's standing in the water. Oh, I yeah, because he gets plus 50 agility. So he gets 70. But, uh, yeah, no, 50. He stays. Uh, but um, it's still not even that much, 16, right? It's 50% damage reduction, so... It's quite a lot uh, considering, you know, it's diminishing returns and everything. Volca True, and I don't really have any minus armor on Looking for who? people in the bot lane, Volca. Oh, that is actually a huge pickup. Sheepstick on the support torture with a PK. Now, Papa Master running in here with Corrupted Disciple, actually. If they... S oh my god, the flank is so greedy. Because I yeah, believe they, they saw, saw that. They, they, but they saw them with the with the Puppet Master clone. Uh, shout out to the two wards at the bottom lane, by the way, from the Hellborn side. Yeah. Efficient use of warding. You can see the Crypt Disciple twice at the same time, now. But, um... That is some really greedy plays, because there were only two people there. But I guess because of the amount of pressure that uh, they've been applying. And by the way, what I also love is this play by, I think, Mate here in the top lane with the Vagabond leader, right? Yeah, Parking like Mate. creeps there to just like be able to port towards that and kind of stuff. Just F options. Oh, in the mid lane, Max is getting jumped by the F. Well, sorry, Max is getting jumped by the Hellburn Shit, side. Here. gonna die. It's gonna be really Ooh, close. Bob almost died. Fulka actually surviving uh, because of the storm spirit from the monarch. Um, and that's the sheepsticks, I think, showing off, right? Sheepstick. Uh, I didn't catch it, but it, it seems like it. They jumped the Moraxus, so it, it has to be Sheepstick. Falls because of Max. I mean, Max is just uh, Fulka into the going Max. in on the top lane probably, Can and that. Find him. Oh, that might actually be a dead uh, torch. Oh, Sorry, dead Nefora. Oh, and he's gonna get creep the creep well. too, and the eye. Uh, Great catch by Volka. Someone had to catch a Legion hero in one yeah. of these side lanes at some point, and of, of course it's Volka here with eight, one, and six. Really great performance from, from him. Basically doing Dossa's role at this point. Dossa has not really been able to get much done this game. Um, it's partially because of like very late PK, partially because of the way that they played. Uh, Hansi yeah, might actually uh, be in trouble here. Hansi might be very dead here, in fact, because he did get health flowered here. Uh, no W on the Riptide, but yeah. Uh, the split push game slowly falling apart. Uh, Puppet Master going top lane. And the eye makes it so that it is very difficult for the Puppet Master to catch the Torture and it also becomes kind of dangerous. However, they pick up uh, a Null Stone on the Puppet Master. What do you think about that? It's not bad. I mean, he can't get Blink Sheep anymore. He can't be held far by the Riptide immediately anymore. I mean, he has the Q to remove it, but... In most situations you're going to be able to press Geos or Shrunken or something before people get to you. It's 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 a it's a late game split pushing item. It's making you even harder to catch it. They have the one racks advantage and and the shrine is not open yet, but the, the top tower is dead. So I, I don't hate it here. I still actually picking up an alchemist over in the base right now. Uh, don't know about that one. You know, the Ice Ogre actually, eh? I it is actually that's... surprisingly strong. It's a lot of armor. Yeah, it's 8 armor for 30 seconds. I pick it up every now and then once I'm when I'm playing against something like a Deadwood. 
And just popping that on your carry, plus the, I think it is like 30% slow reduction, or slow, movement speed slow, and 30 attack speed slow whenever you get attacked. If you have like the, uh, I want to say it, it's a lot of casting, a lot of micro. Yeah. But it can pay off big time. Um, four people in the Legion jungle, five people in the Legion jungle, four Legion. Uh, and the Riptide and the Deadwood are kind of searching. Now they have these pick-off items like the Hellflower, like the Sheepstick. However, uh, Firebrand on Riptide to come. Yeah, Geobane, really good item on Riptide. Yeah. And he is starting to. Uh, he realizes this camp is blocked. Now. Yeah. Hope, hopefully they they kind of want that. The base now they... is dead in the bot lane. Oof. Oh, this is so frustrating to play against for Hellborn. Yep. And five people in the bottom... Uh, in the bottom lane right now. They are not really willing to commit, it seems. The Legion side here, because... I think they realize, and this is actually a really good one by Max. Look at this, right? And they almost got caught for Second Arch there, actually. Second Archer was almost a lot of trouble there. They did have the Monarch in a position to save the FA, but 65% um, damage reduction at this point is not going to save the FA if they go for him with everyone, I think. Also, I don't know if he heals up fast enough with the Shrunk, with the Savage Maze, so, not Savage Maze, a symbol uh, to actually fully survive against like two six on GPM carries. I mean, he, he can't just uh, stand and press symbol. I think he's he's not gonna heal. I think he's probably gonna die through, but they can't just go for him uh, through the 65% because the 65% is is actually insane. Like, yeah, if he gets a crystal evolve, there's no way he's dying until at least he's out of it. Yeah, but also he's not doing any damage. It's true, but if the enemy is committing... And that's a Bola. Yeah, he got Bola on Raxus. That is, I think, the up. item they were probably looking for. Uh, Geobane picked up on... I think uh, Fall. The rest. Oh, maybe he finished it. No, that was the full Geobane. I am disappointed that that, that is not a Doombringer. But... Uh, but Kevin would have done it. Kevin, Kevin would have bought a Doombringer. Kevin would have bought a Doombringer. Obviously. Uh, for second archer on the hunt here. But yeah, for second archer, like he's on the hunt, sure, but he doesn't really have the items to pick him off anyway, right? Volka finally uh, finding the wards from Max there. Um, Papa Master being so bloody annoying in the top lane with the solution with the rune. Geos. Oh, it's not even geos. It's no, it's solution rune. Yeah. And his alchemist ogre is going to die. Poor thing. F. F. He did not deserve this. But yeah, that least inside, I think is. Not really out farming them, but just slowly damaging the base over and over and over. And they're just they're looking for like a, 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 a mess up. Max uh, porting somewhere, canceling the port. Um, I would really like for Max to pick up an eye at this point in the game. As the Legion side, actually, I think the Vulka picking up an eye. Died, so. True, but he needs an eye again, I think, because. The amount of um, information an eye gives is just way too good. We have four buffs on each team, five after this Concord. I think about like six more buffs and then we uh, might be able to uh, have enough uh, movement speed to sub boots. Yeah, Rex has uh, 500 max health from his. Exactly. Yeah, actually okay. one thing I will say is that max health is actually really impactful against Deadwood specifically. Because, as you probably know, Deadwood deals damage based on the enemy's strength. Yeah. And max health is not strength. That's uh, As revolutionary as that. So back in the day, I believe also that like one of the big counters to like Deadwood was Helm to Black Legion because it would just not really give you armor, but it would like, you know, just give you more max HP and oh, look at Torture. Torture being in a very aggressive spot. Rax is being here in Invis nearby. Um, but the entire enemy team is just sitting bottom. Is Fulka going to take the bait? Don't, don't do it, Wolf. It is Max, though. Yeah. But, like, in this case, don't you think, like, a Frostal School would, would be insane? 
on which hero to touch. Any hero. Because it's just, but it's the scouting information. There's not item slots on any of these carries. That's like, a... the, 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 the wolves have 7,000 range. That's like half the map. I know Dutch, but what hero would you pick up Frostmore Skull on? I don't know. Second I mean, well, FA uh... doesn't have a slot. Uh, and I think you want to have a man fighting item on, on, on Riptide. Deadwood. Dead, yeah. I agree. On the 215 GPM a, Deadwood. A Monarch is actually going to have a Frost Wolf before the Deadwood, I think. Probably. No, but even on the other side. Um, yeah, I guess Pop Master doesn't really want the Frost of Skulls. Not really a Pop Master hero or Pop Master item. I wouldn't mind it that much on the Corrupted. But okay, just have to get rid of 4.4k gold in the rest of the Dawnbringer. Yeah, it would mean that like yeah, you would have to break up the Dawnbringer, which is maybe something that you don't want. Although I would argue that the Dawnbringer does like uh, significantly less these days, especially on ranged heroes. It's like it only slows it for 15%. Be. Used to be like, insane, but now it's uh, very mediocre. Yeah, and Corrupted Disciple is one of the few heroes. I still kind of like it on because you kind of need the mana. You do a lot of magic damage with the AoE and you need to slow from the auto attacks. But um, at this point, I don't know. If he went for Ghost, if he went for Movement Speed though, he could have easily broken up the or sold the boots here though. In hindsight, that's um, it would have secured them late game more. Yeah, I mean, he can still get better boots, right? If I don't think he's fast old. enough then. I think he gets outrun too fast. Too much. He does pick up the... What, did he pick anything up? No, never mind. Oh, yeah, he had items already. And we see the Riptide maybe going for the Bash item. You have not really had much chance to play with the Bash item yet, Raz. No, I, ha I haven't uh, played with it in the game. But it, it seems, on paper, quite good. Yeah, so the guaranteed bash is of course really good, especially if yeah. you want to focus down one target. However, I have some big doubts that he's actually going to get it off. Also, Prisoner picking up a staff, that is actually huge, because that is a guaranteed two and a half second stun. Prisoner also with five stats, uh, Congo buffs, being at 3000 HP. That is thank you boy. Oh, and that's a DD rune. Wait, did they just completely sp walk past the DD rune? They did, didn't they? Then huh. went for 5 in damage, 20% extra damage on the Widowmaker is definitely not bad if he ever got to use it. Yeah, but he, without a Shrunken, that is difficult, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, he's, he should have ulted Creeps at this point. I think he ulted maybe 2, maybe 3 times. Yeah, but it's been a difficult game. Oh, oh that is the ultimate. Out of a second Archer, and he's still gonna get stunned, right? Yes, that is a hook. Out of a second Archer, but the Storm Star. Spirit. And, Great um, tracks. Still gonna die. I Should think that is something that will gladly take, right? I mean, help or Legion is happy with that. It's just, they're just they're slowly playing this red style. It's almost an hour game here. They haven't fought in maybe 30 minutes. Mhm. Mm this they're going for the for the for the for the peaceful playthrough. Yeah. The, pe the peaceful enemy. Medirax is gonna die if they don't commit to her saving in this set. I don't think they can commit. But they have to fight. Oh, that is the monarch is dead actually. Torture in the front line right now. Corrupt disciple manning up here. Shrunken is gonna run out soon. Prisoner is hellflowered in the back line. Their chase is on, and uh, Popmaster actually got dusted here. And they're chasing him, and I don't think they're gonna be able to catch him. And Popmaster is just so fast with that shroud and that uh, or the Ganjuro and the and the and the steam boots. Um. That is a two for one. So yes, the DD, but they got the racks, and Toblin's yeah, so... already pushing, so they can't do anything at this point. And they have an Inforo up, right? They commit to a push now. Inforo's just gonna port. Yeah. And Inforo can use his port like purely reactively, so they just wait. Actually, they are gonna use it less reactively and more proactively. Um. Yeah, they're, slow, they're slowly being whittled away. Uh, for second Archer, Soul Boots, actually. And he He's gonna is... run into them on, uh, on Riptide. Oh, yeah. Oh, Does he suddenly he changes know. his mind. <laughs> Did you whisper him? Uh, I did, that's where he 
He randomly changes his mind on four. Smart decision, mm -hmm. decides to farm some camps in the jungle. Why farm lane creeps when he can farm jungle creeps instead? Smart uh, thing about the self boost on the S top. Okay, he should have known as a solution. That. He's gonna have to TP to save the the last base tower here. Yeah, and it's just like they have so little split pushes. Now, I guess in that mind or sorry, in that mindset, the cleaver actually makes a lot more sense. Right? Because that wood can push. Torture can push, but it's not that fast. And it's torture is also the only catch you actually have, right? With the storm with the PK uh, sheep. Yeah. And Monarch can't push. So you just have to FA to push like three lanes. It's just so much. And I think this is just another wait for another Congor. Because you know what? 3000 HP was not enough. Hellborn was smart that it set up and respawn of Legion Congor and try to pick a fight. But they have to do yeah. something. If they keep playing like this, but they, mean, they the can't get there. Gonna die they can't the get there ever. Because the moment they run there, they need to run there as five to ward up, right? The moment they run there, their base can die. You just you just got a YOLO smoke on on one of the supports to try to get a ward up, and if you don't get the ward up, well then. But Monarch right then now is so important. It's probably the Deadwood trying to do that, right? Yeah, probably yeah. They're not even doing anything, but literally is sitting and waiting at the Congo pit. Actually, that's not right. Hansi is farming without a cleaver. Very disappointing. He is hitting hard though. Okay, Congo spawns. Um, Legion side instantly going to uh, try and um, kill Congo. And they're going to be very, very successful. Mate dodging the rock like a champion. Um, Next to the rock. He went for the simple. Did we talk about this? I think yes. he went. He had that for a while, right? Yeah, he must have had a box. He has 5k gold, but I don't think we could even talk about it. Yes. No, I don't necessarily like it too much. It's not bad. But I don't think you're losing a, like, a, a man up fight ever. So. Oh, you, you can, because you can just press geos on, on, on FA, right? Yeah. You get drained, and then you're just gonna lose the mana fight. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know what else I, I, I would have gotten personally. No, I don't, it's, it's a tough game at this point. Maybe I mean, just you. a savage maze, but does he have the attack speed for that? Maybe a I little hits, bit. He hits really fast. Yes, uh, both the Wingo and the Dawnbringer. Yeah. Being big I think you do have to start looking into replacing this with this beast boots though. And I'm surprised that he still goes for the damage instead of the movement speed at this stage because I think what Eston did was is like couple in speed and couple in damage is probably better if you want to swap out the boots and you Yeah, because Eston also area. went for movement speed here instead of damage. In yeah. this specific buff basically. Because he realized as well 370 movement speed is actually too slow. I need to be like a little bit higher at least to be able to be competitive in these fights. In the bottom lane, that is Kevin actually catching Vulka. Vulka might die here. That's a big pickoff actually. Legion side might try to do something with this. We do see a buyback being ready on. Uh, Vulka dying for the first time in 40 minutes. Yeah, 8 1. Or sorry, was, he was 8 1 and 8, by the way. Yeah. Vulka has been. Trying his hardest. Do we want to say this? Do we yeah. really want to say this? He's uh, he's quite quietly been playing been playing really well uh, this game and the entire series. I'm gonna give full yeah, but do we want to admit that? Here. Okay, rarely I'll... we'll go on shit on him next game. Don't worry. Don't okay, you. fine. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll save it up. I'll save it up. Yeah, he's been playing really well. He's been only the one, he's been the one that's been setting up the most, and uh, him being that is actually quite a big deal here. They might be able to force a buyback. That is a catch. Oh, that is actually an ultimate on the. A from the prisoner. Prisoner also uh, bot staff. He's, he's catching. Uh, oh, prisoner British. is going to be caught here. Oh, and the Riptide is in the back line being caught. He's health large. Riptide might fall here. Riptide does have a buyback, and they definitely want to commit to a fight for the second archer in the front line. Uh, Max is going to fall. A busy might be in a bad spot here. Um, but in the meanwhile, actually, the Helborn base is dying. The base tower is going to fall here. They, they don't keep their immediately, but 
mean, even this, they traded four or three for one. It doesn't matter because Shrine opened up. I mean, every time they just move outside a the base, they're going to be losing slowly and surely. I mean, and they 7k might actually gold get... on, on Corrupted Disciple. Buy a Corrupted Sword at least, man. Do something with your gold. What about uh, Courier with a, with, a, with a puzzle box or something? Courier with a puzzle for a TP boots or speed or, or Courier with a sheep stick. Courier with a sheep stick. Courier with a sand scepter, even better. Sand scepter your own shit away. Yeah. Don't don't think Matty is the kind of player to micro that, to be honest. Basically it's, it's like great. it's it's your own little pocket monarch at this point. Corrupt the disciple, um just going for the base right now. Honestly, yeah. Corrupt the Disciple has shrunk enough, right? Yeah, Why not? Just go for base. It's kind of press shrunk and press shrunk and go base. That is game. Instant. I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't, it's been a great game, but I want to say fucking finally, man. What a yeah. drawn out 40 minute split push like, red game by Legion. I mean, they executed the game plan to perfection and no disrespect, they, they played it the right way, but also an incredibly boring way. Yeah, sorry. I, I just I just accidentally like uh, ripped out the cord of my computer from my headset. Oh, so I missed the last little part you said, but I I think you said that it was quite boring and that it could have ended like 20 minutes earlier. Yeah. And I definitely like agree that. with that. Uh, so that was game number three out of the best of five. It is two to one for Noah Sharks, and um, we will be back with you for game number four. Uh, so stay tuned.
Right, uh, welcome back to game number three of the final in the uh, League Paradise, uh, Paradise League. Um, it is once again green, uh, Team Top Green Tag versus the Sharks of Noah. And um, yeah, that was quite a game we just had there. I think um, one hour and five minutes long or something. Uh, definitely not very kind to the casters, uh, very BM of them. I demand at least like a written apology uh, from each of the players here after this is done. But besides that, I don't have uh, Sate joining me anymore because Sate had to go uh, take his beauty sleep. But I am still here. Yes, I am still here. Not going away, unfortunately, for everyone else here. But we have a game number four coming up. It is two to one for the Hellborn team at the moment, or uh, Sharks of Noah. And uh, we see uh, the bans coming out. So we see Scrap being banned, Fate being banned, Belfcor being banned. These are all some... Um, remember or some, some recognized bans that we've seen in the last few games as well. And there is a small bit of issues with the picking, I think. some. It seems like the... Uh, first pick may have been unfortunately bugged again. It just happens every now and then. Um, yeah, so as uh, our lovely French uh, French person says here, sometimes it is kind of random and you just have to remake with it and it's just kind of annoying, but we have to deal with it. Um, so generally speaking, like, it just goes back and forth, back and forth, uh, whoever gets, like, first pick or first ban then. And I believe last game, they got first pick, the Legion side. They were on the Hellbound side, but they picked Monarch first pick. I remember that. Engineer. Okay, so it seems like we are Nexus. just going to pick and remake it. Barrel. So um, I think Ophelia. for the sake of my sanity, I think we are just going to go be right back until we get the new game up. Tundra. Yeah, go for it. Okay, welcome back. Uh, this time it seems like everything worked out perfectly fine and we are continuing into game four. So I, if I remember correctly, oh, actually prisoner being banned by the Elborn team here. 
That is an interesting ban. Because the only people that I've picked... No, wait, that's not true, actually. So the Legion side also picked up Prisoner for one game, I believe. Um, they picked it up uh, when they played the Puppet Prisoner lane, where Sunkbop was actually playing um, Prisoner. And yeah, actually, Sunkbop is right now playing again instead of Dosa. Dosa was playing on the Deadwood last game. Uh, at, maybe he has to go because... It is getting kind of late and like, you know, Monday tomorrow, some people do need to work. Um, so the, the maybe it's like a respect ban for Sunk Bob, although I don't think he got much done that game. Adrenaline and Hag, of course, being too, uh, Adrenaline being a ban to specifically deal with Doza, because he is just so bloody annoying on a hero. And then we have the Hag ban, which is also not a big surprise, because, well, Hag has been doing very much, or very, uh, a lot in this game. Or in the last, uh, in this series, I mean, last few games has been, uh, the Hag has been very dominant every time, actually. And the Engineer being picked up. Now, I love, sorry, I, I know that Kevin loves the Engineer. And Engineer is, of course, a hero that he's also quite good at. And I think this is the first time they've he's actually been able to pick it up properly. Um, I also know that he really likes to play the Flux. So I'm curious to see... Of course, Engineer plus Flux being quite a well-known combo. Quite a powerful combo as well. And it is something that is... Um, of course, it's, it's very teamfight heavy. And it's something that really... Uh, fits right into the way that Kevin really wants to play this game with just fighting and fighting and then the engineer ultimate plus the fox ultimate is just so powerful and a devour pickup. Now that is a hero that I know Sunkbop loves to play and he's been actually so successful on it as well. So I'm definitely interested in seeing him do some amazing things with that. Uh, but yeah, if they don't pick up the flux here as a pick, I'm fairly certain they're gonna ban it on the Legion side. So, it is quite the um, the choice the Legion side has to make here, whether or not they really would have picked it up right now. Uh, but for the rest, the Rally pickup, I don't think we have seen the Rally much this game, or sorry, this series. Uh, Rally is uh, a bit of a mixed back. He's, uh, he can be played quite defensively, quite aggressively as well, but Rally has always been super vulnerable against restraint abilities. Devour ultimate does actually restrain the targets. Um, so it is a bit interesting to see the rally here. Um, it, especially also against an M4. Because if you want to go in with the rally, right? You go in with the rally with a Q. And then it popped an M4 ultimate. Oh, sorry, the heal on top. The uh, Nymphora is just gonna do so much damage to the rally. And the rally is usually not like in a, in a core position here. More like in an... P4 position, generally speaking, is the rally being played. Um, so yeah, that is that's definitely going to be interesting because it, it 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 can still work. It can absolutely still work, and rally can be a very powerful hero. It's just quite often in these organized team fights, it's quite hard to get your ultimate off. And for last pick, we see the chipper being picked up. Uh, chipper, of course, being a very uh, good carry. Or sorry for good support, being able to stack everything. Um, and there we see the flux ban. Yeah, that's not a big surprise. Okay, so you have the chipper, right? What can you do with chipper? You can stack with chipper. You can stack the entire jungle with chipper. So you want something that can farm those stacks. Forsaken Archer has been picked every time it has been up. It has lost every time it has been up. I think two games in a row, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe three. I can't actually remember. Um... But yeah, the Forsaken Archer uh, really hasn't been working out for these teams at all. And I don't necessarily think that is the, the fault of the Forsaken Archer. Uh, I think the hero is still insanely strong and it did, it did so much work during all these team fights. Or sorry, the, all these games. Uh, but the tri lane just never really worked out. And um, the Forsaken Archer was ni never really quite able to get the farm that it needed. Uh, so... I am curious to see if maybe both teams are going to say, well, Second Archer clearly hasn't been working out for either one of us. Let's just not pick it, right? Let's just not pick it. So, 
Uh, for the rest, we see Kinesis, Bensington, Nomad, Corrupted Disciple, and Oogie pickup. Oogie being a little bit of respect, but and that's a Mage Vein pickup. Now that is interesting. I know that uh, Fall loves to play the Mage Bane. Uh, Lodestone also being quite a good combo together with the Mage Bane, because Mage Bane does have a damage issue, generally speaking, and Lodestone just allows your team to deal true damage, which is really good, if I say so myself. Um, but Mage Bane is such an anti-magic damage here, right? But they do have the Rally. Rally can still do a lot of damage to Mage Bane. However, if the Mage Bane just gets a couple of auto attacks in on that Rally, Rally is going to be with no mana, and an, and basically a Rally with no mana is not that dangerous. So, I'm curious to see how this is going to go. If this does actually, like, kind of uh, provide the opportunity for more of, like, a core rally because they want the, the physical damage presence that the rally provides suddenly becomes like a lot more interesting against something like a mage pain because magic damage cores don't really work something like an engineer core doesn't really work as well madman works insanely well against the mage pain because that gash together with the null fire blade is just gonna tear through tear through the armor of the mage pain and he is just going to melt if they get the opportunity they really need something to like lock down the madman here uh, from the Legion side, they don't really have that. Like, Lodestone's stun isn't fast enough or good enough. Devour Hook, if you're relying on that, that is not a good, like, uh, foresight. And a Deadwood pickup. Now, Deadwood is also, of course, a really good pickup against the Mage Pain because of that low armor and a lot of strength these days. Um, Deadwood, if he gets a little bit of minus armor, that Mage Pain is just going to melt. And actually, the same goes for the Devourer. The same goes for the Lodestone, even. All of those heroes, they, generally speaking, have quite low armor. And Deadwood is actually quite a powerful pickup against that. Now, they do have a lot of heroes that suffer from potential mana issues if they get drained by the Mage Pain. Uh, but yeah, I, I think this, this, this uh, lineup might... Um, Kind of favor, and that's a freaking arch pickup. Hey, it was open. Why not pick it then, right? And this might be not a position one mage pain as I expected, but more like a position three or f or two mage pain. Uh, it's I guess a solo mage pain, solo mage pain, solo lodestone, and try lane with devour for second archer and Ephora. The mage pain is not gonna. I feel like he's just not gonna get much done this game. Because Mage Pain is, I think, still supposed to be played as something like a carry hero. So it's kind of awkward. Uh, Mage Pain also does a lot of damage with his E right now. So um, it, that, that mainly like, deals damage to heroes that have like high mana cost abilities, which the Legion side doesn't really have. So I don't know about the Mage Pain pick. It's definitely going to be interesting. I haven't really seen it work out. So I'm very interested in seeing it work out. Sounds like a lot of fun. Um, I myself have been trying to play the Mage Bane every now and then, and I find it very difficult to make the hero work. Because um, you're not really that tanky, even if you go to like Steam Boots. Yes, you have, you have a lot of HP and stuff, but um, the amount of armor that you have is going, it hurts you a lot. And that is five people there. Five people from the Hellborn sides. Casually taking a stroll to the Legion jungle, as Mate likes to do. Just, you know, taking a little look-see here and there. And they actually blocked the small camp. I guess that is to uh, just mess with Devour. Because Devour can, of course, like, stack the small camp, rot down the small camp, get level 2, and then start hooking. Um, and be very impactful that way. And the way they're going to play this is an... Um, to right lane, top lane, engineer middle, and a Deadwood bottom. Now the Deadwoods is gonna suffer this game again, uh, which is not entirely unexpected. Uh, actually, we see some pop running into the enemy jungle here. I wonder if they can see this. No, they can't, but they might run into him here, and they do run into him here. I, I'm not sure what this plan was. To be honest with you, I'm not sure what his plan is, to be honest. 
He's being chased by the rally right now. We see Lodestone running over. We see Engie running over. We see Mage Bane there. Mage Bane against Engineer is, of course, a very interesting um, matchup because Mage Bane can just kind of blink on the Engineer and, like, you know, start spawning in auto attacks. Um, Deadwood is going to not probably get that much here. But the question is like, okay, what is the what are the, the what is the devourer going to do? And what is the rally going to do? Apparently the rally is just going to stack for now. Which is alright. I would maybe consider going dual mid. Because uh, he actually gets both stack out, that's good for him. Uh if he goes dual middle with the engineer, that just wins the mid lane for him. Devourer probably not gonna go uh um, the Fowler is probably not gonna get like much done here. He's rotting down in medium camp, but like the medium camp has wild hunters, and the wild hunters just don't die. That's actually quite unlucky of him, for him. Um, meanwhile, we see the lodestone being bullied in the in the top lane. We see the deadwoods being bullied in the bottom lane, and yeah, mage Pain actually doing wide or right against uh, engineer, and we see like why the engineer why the mage Pain is powerful, here, right? Mage Pain just blinks on the Engineer and gets like a couple of auto attacks in and just does a little down damage. And you can't really damage him back because Engineer doesn't do any physical damage. It's just kind of weird. Mines of course are doing... Actually wait, is Full in some trouble here? He might go for the rune. Oh, he got stunned. And he didn't get the rune though. So that is good for the Hellburn side I guess because they want those runes for themselves. Um, but yeah, full guy is going to have a suffer game. Like the chipper just doing so much like a rust damage with those bloody rockets just chipping in, chipping in, chipping in. And there's nothing you can do about it as, it, as, uh, as the load's done here. Besides, well, go back to base and hope they push, which they are actually doing right now. Uh, Deadwood kind of being in the same scenario. A really good ward here from Beans, making it so that the Deadwoods really can't get anything done. Oh, and the middle lane, actually, Engineer might be in some trouble. Engineer is not going to get first blood on the Devourer, but Devourer is going to die second. Mage Pain gets first blood, and that is actually so close, but so impactful here. Mage Pain, once, like, you know, he just tanks up, and he just tanks up, and the Engineer is going to be in more and more trouble here. And, yeah, it's, it's partially, I think, because the Rally is just... Not being able to do much here. Rally should have just probably been here more often by a link and just chill with the engineer in the mid lane. Because they really cannot kill the engineer if the rally is just sitting here. Rally has auto attack damage. More auto attack damage than his mage bane does. The Q on the mage bane currently does 60 plus 2.6 uh, damage. Uh, Devour actually getting another kill in the bottom lane. Devour finally getting some stuff done here. Uh, the Deadwood not getting anything, um, partially because of that good ward. And there was actually a rev ward placed by Busy here, trying to counter that ward. But yeah, like Deadwood is just not really the suicide hero you want in this situation. And Rally is still just really not being able to do anything. Which is kind of an issue, and actually in the mid lane here. And if that was a hook hit by Devourer, they may have been a dead puppet master. Sorry, a dead uh, uh, engineer. Uh, Nymphora is sitting the bottom rune. They do see this. So it looks like he is going for it. But yeah, I'm wondering why the rally wasn't just sitting middle more. Like, rally should have just been sitting besides puppet master. Or sorry, besides uh, engineer. Just making sure that he wins that lane. That the mage bane can't do anything. Because even if the Valor hooks you, right? What is really gonna happen? You can just like stun out. There's no roots, there's no like nothing to do then. And actually, this might be a really sneaky play, which I potentially really like from Eval, where he knows there are stacks here and he's just maybe going to rot it down actually. How long does it last? 14 seconds. And bottom lane, Deadwood dies once again. And look at this, guys. Eval are rotting down that camp. If they don't pick up on this, and they might not, they might. And Devour is. Rot is actually going to run out, which is funny because he just softened up the camp here and he should be really worried about running into wards here and the potion is on cooldown as well. I think he's gonna... 
Could you just pick up? No, that was the Forsaken Archer to pick up an Iron Shield there. So, that was just going to take. Sorry, the Diva was just going to deny this camp. And I think he honestly might just deny himself and go back to base. Because buying region is just too much for him. Oh, that is a dead Mage Bane. So, they do get something in return, of course. And, but, um, yeah. I think Hansi just picked up. Oh, shit, he actually killed this. Yeah, that sucks. Um, Lodestone still not really getting anything. 50 XPM. That is uh, rough, to say the least. Four people might actually go to the top lane to secure this rune, which they are not going to get. Nefora is sitting the bottom rune for the Mage Bane. But yeah, this is like what the Mage, what the Rally should have been doing more, right? Because Rally is a really good hero against the Mage Bane. Rally just doing physical damage. It's just so good. So, I, I, I wish he would have done this more. Okay, sorry. Uh, let's see. Deadwood's still not really getting anything. Deadwood might actually get jumped here if he's not careful. That is a stun by the 4 into the crippling volley, into the ultimate from the FA. And is that going? No, the tower actually targeting the FA may have saved the 4 there because the 4 would have died. Um, okay, so um, my uh, my co caster is actually in the waiting room right now. So, uh, Paradise, if you could move him. Oh, perfect. Um, okay, so uh, I'm joined by Salt today, who is uh, going to be filling in for uh, Sate, because Sate has got to sleep. Um, Hello. Hey, can you see? Oh, actually, in the mid lane, sorry, I'm interrupting you. There is a rally stun into the NG keg, into the NG field, and that is a dead mage pain. So, can you see the game right now? Yeah, everything works fine. Um, okay, I'm happy to be here. It's not that I did a great work. Oh, so, yeah, I could go sleep now. Yeah, so I think I can, like, keep rambling on about random things for about an hour longer. But then my, my subject of conversation for just me to be talking about will run dry at some point. <laughs> It is hard to believe, but it will run dry. Yeah, that uh, becomes an insane house at some point, right? Yeah, actually, uh, Fulka might die, die top lane. He is under some pressure. Um, may, sorry, the Devour ported there. That is not enough to kill him. I mean, level 3 Lodestone, it's just... You just don't really care about it, right? Especially as a Madman at this stage. Madman is going for the Cleaver here. I know some heroes like the Cleaver more, some heroes like the, some players like the Mock more. In this case specifically, you already... Sorry, you don't really want the magic damage, I think, because you have Dave of Mage Pain. So I like the Cleaver a lot more as well. Also, Cleaver just farms Ancients a lot faster. Um, yeah, I mean, also Mock is a great option. I mean, they have a lot of PK heroes on the Legion side. I mean, at least two. But uh, Cleaver also works. It's always been a great uh, item now. Yeah, so I can use the buff right? reach now. Yeah. Yeah, it does a little less damage, but uh, the farming efficiency is great. The farming efficiency, okay. I don't even think was touched. Because they swapped like some damage from heroes to just damage to creeps. Yeah, possibly a little tweaks there. Anyway, um, so the Mage Bane middle is. I don't know, you, you weren't here for the draft, I'm assuming. So they picked up the Mage Bane first, and I was really expecting like this Mage Bane core. Mm -hmm. But then they picked up F.A. at the end, and F.A., uh, a very dominant hero in the metagame, but it has lost every game. F.A. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and I That's think, it. like, I believe three games in a row? I, I can't remember it was picked the first game, actually. Let me check. Um, so F.A. has been... Uh, they, they've tri-laned F.A. Uh, Three times, yeah, and three times it's rather oh, FA lost. And in these yeah, two that, teams. That hero and it was picked up. Creation, otherwise it was it's... picked up by like both heroes. Oh, sorry, both teams basically, like uh, one after the other. Uh, also, Mage Bane getting ultimate in the bottom lane by the Deadwoods. Uh, not going to die from that, but is taking a heavy chunk of damage. And yeah, Mage Bane just. Uh, right. Scary. So, so that is quite scary for a mage man still. 
Oh, it seems like this this game it's a little different for Forsaken, right? <laughs> 600 GPM. I even uh, like the last game I watched of Forsaken Archer was an Eston, but it seemed like he did not reach that high GPM that game. Oh no, he did. Oh, he did for sure. He did. Okay, I wasn't really going into details. I was like, happy yeah, it was around, around the 550 mark, but they oh, yeah. um, lost some team fights in the early game, and the Crop Disciple enemy just had like a lot more space. Oh, and that is a big deny coming out from the lodestone there. Uh, getting the deny the tower, that's actually huge. In the bottom lane, we see both Magebane and Nefora sit setting up on the Deadwood, but Deadwood has a really sneaky ward here, saving himself a lot of trouble. Um, saving his own life, most likely. Making that um, waste some precious time there as well. Devour setting up the hook. Is it going to be? Mate keeps walking to the left. Is that going to be? Oh, no, he oh, missed the hook. Oh, that would have been so goes. big. Because that is 600, or sorry, 800 HP on the Madman. He would have guaranteed died that, basically. Yeah, but then again, he will not be able to ult, right? Because there's cheaper standing behind. There's not level 6 on Volca just yet. I don't yeah, think but you can block the rockets enough. really easily with the, with the, the Lodestone. Lodestone is starting to W, and I think the Madman will die there. Because level one hook, sorry, level three hook is 385 physical damage. That is just a lot. Yeah, maybe if you manage to block it, then yes. Uh, Hansi and Devour doing the dance of life here in the mid lane. <laughs> yeah, they do have a great vision on the Helmworn side, so they shouldn't I be think afraid. Hansi is being a little bit too obvious with that they're efficient. Uh, he is giving it away a bit, but on the other hand, don't, do you really want to give him the opportunity to hook? Well, I think he was just playing time. I mean, he knows that they have vision, right? So he's most likely not going to get hooked. So just forcing Devour to miss all the last hits with getting attempts to get some uh, some free time for the team. Maybe that was his intention. While well, the Engineer was like free farming on the lane. Yeah, that probably was. I think Engineer was free farming someone in the jungle, actually. And we see, uh, I do see indeed that the FA just kind of rotated into the uh, jungle, the, which was completely triple stacked, and he cleared that entirely, and is now 6 on GPM. Meanwhile, the Madman just started clearing the stacks in their jungle, and everything is triple stacked there as well. Uh, 12 minutes cleaver, I think that is about on par for what you would expect in this situation. Yeah, they but also don't like... have uh, anyone to contest uh, for seeing an archer's farm in the woods, so that leaves are pretty much everything. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, it's also like the... Um, Second Archer just farms so fast because he doesn't need farming item. He, he don't need to wait with like taking the jungle until like, um, well, until a cleave or something like that. And you see like the null fire blades. It's just doing so much damage, and it's just, it's just such a bloody efficient item. Yeah, I also don't see how they manage to get her down. They're so deep in the jungle. They seem to have uh, they don't have much vision for the Legion team in the jungle, but. There is that uh, dangerous wired by Hansi in the middle of the jungle. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm curious whether they're gonna proceed with that or not. I mean, you need a dead, you kind of need like a dead with PK or something like that in order to. Uh, yeah, you definitely need a couple of folks there to make it work. And I, they don't really seem interested in that. Like, there are two initiators, Rally and Deadwoods. They both have um, around the 200 GPM mark. Yeah, maybe they're just chilling. Like they have the cleaver and Madman, right? So yeah, so Madman is actually quite a good hero against the Forsaken Arch Dokus. Madman yeah, this... can just get a uh, get a basher and just sit on his face. Yeah, Madman is one of the the only heroes maybe that are able to contest Forsaken Archer. Oh, and look at this battle! Yeah, yeah. Next, stacking uh, the entire jungle and ancients at the same time, oh. and that's the power of Chipper. Beautiful. But I really would like. Rally to go top right now to just get farm. Well, the Lodestone is definitely having fun top, getting closer to PK, something that he needs. Actually, haste oh. on the haste on engineer here. They're going to jump the oh, that misses the rally stun. That is unfortunate. They do actually respond. Oh, and that's an in four port in the back line. Uh, rally is going to fall, and yeah. You see, that's three auto attacks. Yeah, this is something you need to consider. Like, if you don't manage oh, to. Mid lane, mid lane. Uh, he misses the keg, actually, but that is n probably not going to matter. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Getting the last hook, always. That, that's just a pity hook right there. Yeah, like, you're like come if I'm with going me. to fall, I'm taking <laughs> you with me. You're coming with me, yes, yeah. exactly. At least take some damage. 
But uh, yeah, they, they, they're kind of rotating now, take, trying to take each other's farm. Uh, triple stack Ancients for the FA again. That is the second. Oh, sorry. Oh, bless you. Oh, ah, oh. bloody hell. Oh. Uh, this is the second triple stack Ancients that uh, Forsaken Arch is actually going to fall. And my god, is nothing happening this guy. Maybe that's a 700 GPM mark on that Ancient. Probably, yeah. I mean, FA just farms efficiently. It's the whole FA thing, right? Could even, yeah, you don't need to ultimate for this anymore because the. Yeah, it's no need. It's actually insane that he doesn't even need Whispering for this. Just like Refreshing Ornament and Iron Shield is enough to sustain himself here. Yeah, that's the 700 GPM mark. Well, Madman is doing very well as well, so. They should uh, really consider doing Kong basically right now. Because I think you can do it. Because Kong oh, is a not that tanky early on. And they're actually setting up bottom lane. Busy. As, oh, they missed the grasp. Oh, that is unfortunate, actually. I think that would it. Would it be the guy? That would is there. No, the Devourer is there. So I don't know if Devourer could have hooked the Lodestone out. But I do know that if Lodestone was actually caught in that grasp, that Lodestone would have been a very dead. Yeah, now, it seems Pain, like that suspect. Yeah, Mage Pain is trying to get some farm. There is actually a huge disparity between the Mage Pain and the and the uh, engineer in this game, uh, which is actually what is kind of pulling the GPM and XPM, um, kind of pulling it equal. Is that um, okay? That's a PK for Lodestone. Same goes for Deadwood, maybe like. Oh, that's actually quite big. Oh, in the mid lane, they're going on the Engineer. Engineer's going to fall. Um, Engineer... Yeah, that's just... Uh, he, he just played a little bit too cocky there, but... He probably wasn't aware that the, the Lodestone had his PK. And, oh, look at this. If I was up in the bottom lane, if that's a hook hit... That is... Oh, that's a hook hit! And that is huge! Oh, Madman used his stalk and Madman is probably going to fall here if... Yeah, oh, Madman's going to fall. Oh, that is a huge hook by Devour. Yeah, they need to build so much right now. This is why you give him Devour, right? <laughs> yes, you save the save the last pick for that guy. He definitely likes the Devo. Seen he has Breeze in their last game, right? Yeah. So they, they definitely want to give him all the hookers possible. Yeah, but on the Prisoner, he really didn't do that much. Yeah, because it's it's a different effect, I think. True. Devour liked with is the longer just, hook. Yeah, it just doesn't. It's like. Doesn't work the same way. It's significantly faster as well, I feel. Yeah, it's and it's fairly easy to dodge a uh, prisoner hook because you see where it like where it goes, right? Yeah, more exactly. time to dodge as well. Um, and that is like a six hundred GPM carry that they just killed. Yeah, and that is going very to, to kill. very importantly, I think that's going to delay a shrunken by quite a bit because we see Forsaken Archer has shrunken now. <laughs> Madman cannot man fight this for second archer. Oh, oh in the fourth port. Four port. In the oh, he managed to kill. Oh, he got another. Oh. He got another hook, didn't he? Most likely. How else? Would he go? Oh, and Vulka going in. Vulka going in on Max here. Max is no mana, so I think that's a big block. Max is just going to fall. Meanwhile, busy in the bottom lane, getting his PK, getting the Lex. So he does have enough right now, but. Sorry, Dylan. What I'm thinking here, right? If he doesn't get all the spells off instantly, like one or two auto attacks from either the Mage Pain or the FA, and he's out of mana. And what do you do then? Oh, Pretty Lowe's not actually going on the rally there and Sunk with another hook. Massacre. Sunk is playing like a beast today. Yeah, well, okay. he was stunned. He was stunned, though. I mean, he's <laughs> Give no, respect. but he is still setting it up. That is a 200 yeah, yeah. GPM devour that just killed three people in a row. Four, well, if you count. Well the uh, four actually. So that is just the devour. Uh, oh, and actually, oh, no. Is he there. going to hook him again? Oh, oh they, he's going to miss that. If he just saw it a little bit early, he didn't have oh, dust they, though. They actually did not decide not to go and devour. Oh, and they're going on the engineer in the mid lane. Chipper is almost going to fall. The engineer is going to fall instantly because the mage ultimate. Uh, Forsaken Archer in the front line. Busy tries to jump in, but he's going to miss, and they're all going to get mana drained by the Forsaken Archer. Forsaken Archer punting in the auto attacks. Madman with no armor in the back line, getting ultimated by Lodestone, and is going to fall. 
this is actually a disaster for the Alborn team from 5-5. Five, five. That was the score about 5 minutes ago to 9-5. and five. Yeah, that for a is... second, the is almost 800 now. <laughs> she doesn't... She doesn't chill. Yeah, she and the Archers shows like no signs of slowing down. They're not 5 oh, up yet, so they can't do this. Oh, oh, oh was so close. That was so actually... Close. It would have been so big for them. That would have been the ticket way back into this game if they managed to snipe that, because by they now... Also did you go. Right? Oh, they did. Yeah, they did. They did. They did. They did. Okay. Yeah, on the left side. But like, yeah, right. they, they're just gonna do their core now. Yeah, that's. It's gonna be very hard for Elmore now. To get back it's... to that after that last fight here. Like Devour just literally hooked himself into this game. Hmm. Yo, that's what you get Devo for, right? Like you yeah. hope that he is managed, like he manages to create enough space to get those sneaky kills. Yeah. Like that Devour and does really prosper in these slow games, right? Where like these split push heroes, where you can get them off chance by like a random hook. That is where Devour really shines. So, it, um... I mean, that's that's the thing with Devo. You, you can have a 50 minutes of horrible game and then just get one good hook and, <laughs> and everything changes, so... You should never give up with that hero, especially in the right hands. I wonder what he's going to build, though. Do you go for a PK or something, or do you go for a Staff or Jade Spire, maybe? That was looking for a kill here. That uh, a Forsaken? Oh, she has token, though. They're not going to call her. Yeah, Forsaken Archer. I don't even know if they can actually kill her. So Engineer also going for the spell shards. Um, I'm not the biggest fan, because I don't know how much it does. Also, it's... Just makes you like more vulnerable to the mage pain. It's it's awkward. It does help you with split pushing a little bit, and I guess they have been mainly just looking to split push a lot this game. But yeah, it's uh, it's been uh, rough. By the way, um, do, do you actually uh, like the mage pain being here? It kind of feels like uh, what do you say? Do you like the mage pain being here? In the mid line, like this. I mean, if the enemy wants to fight, I think they'll gladly take that. I don't think it really cares if they jump the mage pen, if they jump something else. Um, the mage pen did actually pick up the elk bones for some more <laughs> sustained farm. Yeah. But... Probably for yeah. a second, like, all the, all the lanes, they don't have any way to farm, so they have to leave them. Oh, yeah, and mage just also doesn't really farm the fast. And you see, like, Busy trying to actually get the ultimate up, but he's just... He get, he gets mana trade before he gets it up. And Engineer is going to fall to the last auto attack. There. Madman going in with the DD root in the backline, and he gets actually a huge uh, uh, a jump on the backline. Lodestone jump, popping his ultimate, jump in the rally. Uh, oh, didn't big. hit anyone else there, but that was actually a big play by the Madman, probably saving the team fight there and saving the Rex. Buyback on the on the on Kevin with the puppet soul here on the Engineer, and he's just going to run up, and I think he's going to get jumped here and die because. Oh. oh my god, oh, you Asian <laughs> bastard. That was... He's in reflexes there. That was amazing. That was so fast. Lodestone wow. stun is of course not that fast. But that was so risky, dying back right on the spot. Yeah, that was... I, I, Kevin is tilted, you can really feel that. And uh, the second Archer is going to die here to... Well, that basically, and I... Um, he doesn't have shrunken up. There's no shrunken up. But no shrunken on Batman either. So they're not willing to commit to this. Uh, oh, Deadwood Punch on the Mage Man. Mage Man is going to melt, but there's a two-man crippling volley. And both Madman is actually going to fall here too. And to say no, it's Invis saves him actually. And it's actually a good fight for the Hellbrand side. Everyone survives for the Hellbrand but they do take down the Rex. So that is a three for nothing. Mage, uh, sorry, Madman surviving with just one HP there. Oh, and they're trying to chase here. Forsaken Archer does have a shrunken up right now. Forsaken Archer might be in a little bit of trouble. That's a big stun by the Engineer. And he's got to get stormed, but that is still a fallen, a fallen Forsaken Archer. Nymphora now being chased down as the last target. And as a reward, uh, I think that is a region we forget him. Just what he needs. Don't let the like Archer cancel it. Kind of overextended Archer. on the Legion. Wait, is the Archer going to cancel it? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he's mad. <Where's... laughs> he's like he sent the archer and Kevin there. Yeah, <laughs> I did. 
uh, a little bit of a spirit animal. A little uh, that bit was actually a, a, that was one things. way to get back into this game. That was a five for nothing exchange. Yeah, I think you could just like pop up the shrine and then just like, keep hitting the range tracks and have Devo sitting back in case that they initiate on him. But so Mage Bane died so fast that I don't think it actually matters. Right? Because Mage Bane has 3.7 armor. Yeah, he got punched, but then again, he was so deep in. So. I mean, yeah, there was no like, need to run all that way up, just hit the Rex. I mean, the they're already having the lead. Mage Bane or F Second Archer, if they just keep hitting the Rex. F Second Archer, if he hits like the Deadwood with like his Splitfire. I don't know if Deadwood has enough ultimate mana to ultimate. Because 100 mana for the ultimates, 120 for the Q, and 75 for the PK. Oh, so, the trap here. I think it's oh. fine. Yeah, it looks fine. But is Deadwood fine though? Oh, yeah. he did not pay attention. Oh, like, PK on the PK and the PK and Devour. Devour might be able to catch him. And oh. that is, ooh, that is really close actually. Tick tickled his nose. Oh, but is Madman gonna die top? It's level 19, probably not, right? If he did not see the Lodestone, they have him four ports and they could try something. Because they also have PK and Devour now, so that means that they can actually initiate with just PK Devour. And that can potentially catch the Madman off guard. However, oh, Mage Bane picked up a mock here. Um, without any kind of like HP or whatever, I'm honestly not the biggest fan of the mock because I think he still gets one shot by Devour. Sorry, by uh, Deadwood. And I don't think the mock changed that like at all. So, what do you think about him? Yeah, yeah, speaking about mock or yeah, um, uh, yeah, probably they do have a lot of uh, like mage Man and forsaken archer. Probably I would have gone mock that game also because like because of the portal keys not to the top of these years that I mentioned before. Might have been a little better, I feel like more damage as well. Something that the Hellborn team might need right now against uh, against their tanky here on the Legion side. Don't you need some armor on this hero? On uh, Madman? No, on the Mage Pain. On the Mage Pain. Um, <clears throat> because the Mage Pain is yeah, 3.7 yeah. armor and he's been getting one shot by this Deadwood. I feel like that's the only way he has died this game. Just getting one shot by Deadwoods. No, that's not true actually. He died like once or twice in the mid lane as well. But I'm, I'm actually not sure about, uh, about the choice of getting Mock here. I mean, you already have the Forsaken Archer to have the damage, right? Um, I would just definitely go tank here. Probably armor indeed for the for the team. Like, like uh, demonic maybe or something like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. The demonic, in my opinion, would be the best option here. Think they have Rally, they have Deadwood Punch. And like, if the mage name was a little bit tankier, have... he could still split push. But because Deadwood is a factor right now, he can never split push. Because if he's ever in a lane solo, um, he's just going to get one shot. Or that is a Doombringer. <laughs> no, I mean, that's for that's for Kevin. I mean, <laughs> that's for Kevin. But uh, maybe they feel like they need to split push a little more, and Forsaken Archer might not be able yeah. to do that by herself. So he, that's why he decided to get the mock to like have that Lowestone, secondary. Uh, Lots of can split push as well, quite effectively. Yeah, he does, but I feel like he wants to stick up with the team as much as he can because, like, it's a free kill wherever they go. I think the, I think the decision probably came down to that they don't want the solo core against the Madman. Whoop! That's a key stop. Uh, <laughs> Ran right in the uh, That is, yeah, everyone from the Legion side porting into the top lane. That wood is not gonna get anything here. Unless oh. he's gonna get hooked by oh, Devour, he, of he, course. He will smell it. Um, is he just gonna go for it or not? Ah, uh, he's capable. Wait, I don't think he saw him yet. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. I, I wish he could have gone for it. But, uh, I don't they know what the situation. Did. Yeah, they did not see that. Oh, actually, uh, Legion cool. is not doing their homework, yeah, and Hellborn is definitely doing their homework while well, they were chasing the blood that was. So, uh, then again, I don't think the lead to Hellburn side can really sneak the Conger. Even if Skeleton King there. 
Um, that's a bash on Mad Men. It's a great Yeah, choice. that's a very good choice, especially with the fact that you can, like, upgrade it right now. It's just, like, it's a really good item. Yeah, they, they, only, Bane, need, they all, only need to kill him for Sagan Archer, right? And that's, yeah, but that's even if you, like, like, just bash the Sagan Archer, like, once or twice, that is, like, so much damage prevented, right? Yeah, probably. There you go, that's the Congo you've been asking for. Yeah, it's just been, like, generally speaking, like, the mutant side of has been, like, prioritizing these cores more. But, like, last time we saw that, uh, the Helper's I was actually significantly faster, yeah. We haven't seen any big Congo plays with Mage Bane. You know, if you mana drain it and then, like, uh, if you just, yeah, like, yeah, you did a great version for that, though. Big boom, I like it. Yeah, the split push game. Like, the... Oh, actually, they might run into the map in here. Wait, they are gonna run into the map in here. Okay, it is mocked finished on the Mage Bane, so I really like this Mage Bane to tank up a little bit now. He did they get stats. They also have two guys top, so that's a, that should be a free kill. I mean, free fight for Legion team. They probably don't see them. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Like, it's... it's. They don't really see each other right now, and Mage, Madman and, and Deadwood being being bush buddies right now uh, in the bottom lane. Just kind of chilling there. They're not really farming the fish. Actually, really good water from uh, Beans scouting out three players here. Vulcan's and... farm really escalated here with the ship stick. Yeah, but Vulcan's uh... been split pushing the entire game. And that's like the, the difference between like a Deadwood and a Lodestone. Deadwood cannot split push. Lodestone can just nuke waves and get out. Yeah, that would farm just decreasing like every minute. Like going that would late game is ah, uh, so like so boring, so annoying if you're not farming or managing. Well, anything. in these kind of games, it's boring, yeah, because you don't get to do anything. Uh, because when there are five people together, you you're not gonna get like um, anything done. Yeah, your only job is to have a good punch, <laughs> and that's it. Okay. That's your destiny. And rally is very similar in that regard. Oh, it's a big yeah, oh, and the bottom lane that is actually a jump on the Deadwood. Deadwood is gonna fall. Mage Vane blink on top, just for good measure. And uh, that is probably going to be a dead tower there. Yeah, they're gonna give up on the tower. Uh, PK in Valley right now. Uh, don't know if he has already, to be perfectly honest with you. But, like, Valley and, and Deadwood are two very similar heroes, and that they're two, like, pick-off heroes that cannot really split push. Unless you go for Cleaver Rally. I uh -huh. doubt it's gonna be the case. Maybe Anzi is capable of that. Huh? Oh. I, I, I try to teach them I try to teach them the way, but Oh. Oh that's actually quite a lot of damage on the mage. That's a lot of damage. But that's also a lot of healing coming for her. Yeah, that mock on mage pin though. I don't know what to think about that. Oh actually Vulka picked up outbounds. That's probably why his farm escalated so much. They have like two outbounds here. Oh, and that is a jump out of second arch. Second arch getting hooked out by the devourer. That is huge from the lead <laughs> side. It's completely ruined their initiation. Madman forced to pop the shrunken, but he's getting eaten by the Devo. There's no one stopping the devourer there. Madman pounding an auto attacks on the mage man. Mage man's going to fight one HP in the back line. They are just not willing to commit to this team fight. They can't commit to this team fight. And that is GG. That is game number four. Going to Team Green Tuck, and that is 2-2, two, two, if I'm not mistaken. What a final series. Yeah, it did so, do, like, damage a little on the Elborn side, except for Mad Mom. If he gets caught, there's nobody to catch up. I'll I'm just happy they did not split push for an hour. Like, for an hour. Yeah, that, that would... Yeah, I know. When it's the last game of the series, it's very much possible. <laughs> I would expect that. Nobody yeah. wants to throw away the win, so... They had to catch, though, this game. They definitely had to catch heroes. So, uh, yeah, well played by uh, Legion Sites. Uh, Sungpop um, creating so much momentum for this team with those insane hooks. Uh, just really playing out his mind, so well played by him. We are going to a final game, game five. And we will be right back.
wait. Wait, wait, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. <laughs> yeah, they say we take first pick, right? Um, okay, uh, we're quickly going to remake here, so um, if you don't mind, uh, I think we should probably go back to uh, commercial break.
Yeah, it doesn't matter. I know. I've, we, we've tried this many times before. Like, I, we have experience with this. The changing, it doesn't matter. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> welcome back <laughs> to Top Green Tag versus Noah's Sharkers. Sharker gang or something like that. Uh, for game number five, um, we had some slight issues with the bands. But I think we are just going to be playing this game. I think both teams have decided that, right? Yes, play. Uh, we play... Yes, we are playing this game perfect. Uh, I'm once again joined by Salt, who joined me throughout the halfway point of last game. Uh, thank you very much for uh, saving me, for basically mm. having to talk for myself for another hour. No, thank you for the invitation. I'm happy to be here. Happy to see that game. It's the last game here, right? Yeah, it's 2-2. Two -two. So, so it's yeah, 2-2 two -two in a best out of 5. So they, like, the first series was so fast. It was like two... 20 minute games and I was like maybe we're not gonna be until like one in the morning you know but no yeah. of course of course it had to be a best out of five with like an hour long game and two 45 minute games yeah and also people are already getting tired a bit so that does definitely affect their gameplay so let's see how they will adapt to that yeah true that is actually true also speaking from a little bit of experience here uh, I think one of the earlier uh, Paradise Leaks like all the way back in the day they had some really outrageous uh, um, times, I think, for both the players and the and the hosts as well. Where we had like 12 hour days or something. And I even did some casting uh, in the midst as well with that. So uh, yeah. it, it, it does wear on you. It does. It's on top green tech. They're already playing their second series. They already played against Krakenwagen, which is... Yeah, but that was like two so. not really games. That was like two games yeah, of like... 15, 20 minutes or something. Yeah, but still, your brain is getting tired. Concentration. Yeah. <laughs> so. Because yeah, you do have to indeed. It is actually a good point uh, to, that you bring it up because, uh, like a game like this, where you are actually like, um, one hundred percent focused and into the yeah. game. Yeah. So and it it requires more focus than just like a normal TMM game or something like that because you're really focused on like map presence. You're constantly making like decisions, having discussions with your team about strategy, that kind of stuff, and it wears on you. It does. Yeah, so, definitely need to take into consideration here. Uh, but fate is the being banned, ba fate being banned for uh, basically every game, I believe. Um, Prisoner, Nymphora, Adrenaline, Adrenaline and Fates, always being banned. And uh, Scrap It's not a hero that they want to deal with, apparently. Um, so, they, yeah. They banned Scrap, but they leave Devour open. <laughs> True, I mean, they do, they and that is the Valor pick and the Hive pick, two heroes that have been working out really well for the Legion side here. So, um, is the Hellburn side going to respond? Now, Kinesis is open. Kinesis is basically a Devourer, if you get but, a hook uh, off. But do they have uh, a Dimitri in their team there? <laughs> I know Hansi plays uh, some uh, Kinesis. I've been oh, teaching yeah. him the ways. And oh, Moira pickup. Now that is a really strong hero against a lot of their. And Tundra. I'm actually not sure who in their team plays a good Tundra. I've not seen Busy play that much Tundra myself personally, but. Uh, prob probably Mate, if I would guess. I don't think Mate plays Tundra either. Well, simply, simply because I don't see anyone playing Eng Engineer except for Puppet Soul. And more is going to be in the hands of uh, Max, sure. probably, yeah. And Hansi is running plus four, right? So Yeah. So you don't really want to run a Tundra as position four. It, the hero just does too little in that position. Yeah. You can end up with nothing, most likely, if you go plus four Tundra. For second Archer being banned, that's not a big surprise. Second Archer still proves that even though she's been losing a lot this series, she's still a strong hero as yeah, that hero farms. That hero farms. Um, Pensington, not a surprising pickup with the Tundra plus Pensington. It's just such a powerful combo. Uh, then we see Kronos banned, which is surprising. Because Kronos is not really a hero you see a lot. Not really a strong hero. The hero is just too squishy right now, right? Yeah, maybe they're scared of the Moira combo in jail. I mean, Moira is more like a counter to Kronos than a combo with Kronos. If I'm thinking about combos with Kronos, I'm thinking about like Bombardier or something. 
Yeah, you could use it as a counter, but that could be also a great initiation as well. Like, leaving someone on spot for like, uh, what is that, like 4 seconds, 5 seconds, or 2.5. That's still a lot of time for Kronos to jump there. But uh, yeah. well, maybe they did someone, I think Mate was playing Kronos before, and was having a good game there. Maybe they remembered that. I think uh, um, last week, maybe. In TMM, you mean? Or is it like oh, no, in no, a no, no. game? No, no, In the previous uh, series that they had. I, the only game I've seen Kronos being picked up was in the game of Asaf's team against... Ooh. Some team. But I know that the Kronos didn't really pay off that much. Mm. It's just it's just like a really yeah, difficult maybe. zero. Yeah, maybe anyway. I missed up with someone. Yeah. Sorry, which one? <laughs> Who do you mean? Uh, I think that was Mate playing the Kronos there. Or Mate or Beezy. One of them, not sure. No, I know it was Asa playing the, the, the Kronos. Like, and that's game at least. Oh, the Tassa. Or well, maybe I'm griefing there, anyways. <laughs> Could I be sure, possible. Sure. Yeah, but. Uh... Glacius being picked up is uh, not really a good setup for the Devourer because the Glacius freeze is so slow. And Moraxis. Now, Moraxis is, of course, a very powerful hero against Moira. I am actually a little surprised that Moraxis was not bad. Oh, it's definitely a Volca hero. <laughs> oh, very Volca. that is an interesting pick. Oh, that's a bad pick. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be that's a nice that's believer. A, that's a carry night on. That's something I love to see, actually. Okay, so uh, night on plus Tundra is actually also just... They, they can get a lot of stuff done, right? However, yeah, Nighthawk does not really have that global presence as some of these other zero heroes might have had. So, but it is really good against Hag. Especially like early on, right? Because the smoke just, it deals with the Hag so efficiently. Um, yeah, as yeah, well as canceling Devourer there. And Peril. Like sitting on that, preventing her from using her spells. Corrupted Disciple. Hmm. Interesting pick. I would say that this is like the kind of the oddball lineup from the Legion, from the Helper side here and the standard lineup from the Legion side. Beans going for the good old faithful heroes that he has been picking and has been working for all this time. While I think like most, like three of the heroes we haven't seen at all. Nighthounds. Moira and Bubbles from the helper side. <laughs> that was the last second. That was the last second swap. I don't know if you saw that on Legion Oh team. yeah. <laughs> um, I was like, what the fuck is playing Lacious and Beans is playing? Uh, yeah. I Ratchet think Hagen if we had to remake this game, they would have not been happy. No, <laughs> it was likely not after like five remakes already. Yeah. Anyway, um, is this? Yeah, this is trialing, trialing to the top lane. Um. I... Kevin playing Tundra, actually. Okay, that makes a little bit more sense. Ansi on the NG. Um, I guess Mate and Busy just both weren't that comfortable on the Tundra. And I have done this kind of strategy before, where you send like a Night Hunt into the solo short lane. And what you do is you just block the pool and you just chill on the lane. But they just place a Red Ward and that might actually be a dead Night Hunt. If he's not careful enough, because... He's gonna run in here, oh. and they see him, and if they freeze plus rots and everything, that is that night out. Night out is going to fall here for first blood. Well played by the leading side there. Heads up, played by them. They knew that the night out was coming. Night out was there, not fast enough. Didn't even really block the camp, and ends up falling because of it. Now well, it, that is it, it missed the both his items before he died. That would have been very sad <laughs> dying there without the items. <laughs> Oh, they're hit. switching up the lanes. Interesting. I don't this think this is good though, because Nighthound does yeah, not win 1v1 against Moraxis. No way. And I also predict uh, maybe rotation bottom. Because uh, oh. what what are you prior to prioritizing here? Tundra is like prioritizing. Sorry, you're prioritizing farm and Tundra here. Okay, but why? Yeah, I would have liked for like the night hound to go maybe with the Moira instead or something, because then you can like pounce in with the with the with the shards or something. That that would have made a bit more sense to me. This is just it, it's this feels weird. It's like on one hand, I would I would rather have uh, a tundra in the tri lane, 
but at the same time, I would rather send him solo because Nighthound is not able to do much with Engineer and Moria on the lane. They just don't have enough damage. They're gonna get bursted yeah. out. And also, like, look at the damage of the Nighthound right now already. Morax yeah. is just. It's gonna be like, able to, like, whenever the Nighthound just wants some last hits, um, the, he's just gonna throw those axes, and the Nighthound does not have the HP to really deal with this effectively. And, like, oh, that is. Uh, that corrupted in the top lane, actually. Oh, wow. That is huge. That's probably like the charge from the Tundra plus the shards into the keg. And that is maybe like the Devourer not having his Q here it does hurt him a bit. It's not able to quite get his uh, safe his carry here. And of course, Glacius not, being, not really being like a defensive support um, means that the Corrupted is going to fall there. Even though Corrupted did actually get first blood and did get some more stats done. Uh, yeah, still gonna fall. Uh, Nighthound being bullied by the Maraxxus oh, here. Yeah, I'm watching that. I'm feeling pretty bad for Nighthound there. Nighthound, uh, Maraxxus even picking up the Toxic Claws. Uh, that is toxic. Yeah, very toxic. Uh, but he does have a creep wave now coming. But, yeah, but look at the damage of those axes, right? Yeah. Yeah, very feels bad for Nighthound. But uh, there is a hook already on the Devourer top. So let's see what they do with that. Um, level 1 Engineer still. Engineer really needs that turret level 2. Because the turret does so much work for them. Um, also, they... I think you want to force the Devourer to start using his hooks defensively. Because that, that will buy you a lot of space. Um, meanwhile, we see that the Night Hunt is actually keeping up farm with the Mraxxus. They're both at 204 GPM. And Night Hunt does get significantly stronger with the Iron Shield. Yes, uh, Iron Shield, of course, on a GT hero, quite strong. On um, Night Hound, even strong. Oh, and a top lane, actually, that is a dead Devourer. Tundra going to survive a little bit of HP. Max has his shards up in three seconds. Glacius might actually fall here because of that. That's a big kick. And that is actually the Curved Disciple training so much damage from the uh, Moira there that he does actually get the counter kill, but it's still a two for one. However, we do need to now see that, like, both. Tundra and Engineer are very low on HP. And uh, it feels like they, they're gonna have to pack here. Oh, bottom night on, does he get a kill? Yeah. Oh, no, he doesn't. <laughs> oh. Just. Oh, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah the Ramboy that was a big kill there. No dust. Yeah, no dust or Revoid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe it's a little early for dust, but uh, yeah, if you had the Revoid there, it was a sure kill. I think, like, you don't have to start spamming dust, right? Having dust in your inventory means that the Night Hunt can't ever overextend. And just that is already very powerful. But like, I like the Toxic Claws pick up here by the Maraxxus, because Toxic Claws is for like the amount of, how much it costs and how much damage it does as like a melee hero. It's so efficient. And actually in the top line, we see that the Corrupted Disciple falls again and the Devourer is also going to fall. That's two kills for the helper inside there. And it might actually be making a three because Moria gets the stun in and that's a huge keg and that is three kills for the Hellborn team. They're getting cleaned up in the top lane. Meanwhile, we see the Hag actually picking up the bubbles in the mid lane. Uh, this is going back and forth, back and forth, but Hag is now 400 GPM. Bubbles is significantly weaker at um, oh, significantly less creep kills. Oh. Well, and that was actually a counter kill for the Corrupted Disciple in the top lane. Um, yeah, these are these guys in the top lane. I don't think they have the stronger trial lane with the Tundra plus the Engineer plus the Moira, but they're making it work for sure. Yeah, I it seems like the decision to send Thunder top was the right decision. Also, they did not sacrifice nothing by sending Night on bot, because it does seem like he's also leading on last hits, as well as denies. So it seems like both top and bottom lane are doing great. Oh, there's a kill on mid lane, which I missed. That is a bit interesting though, right? That Nighthound is leading on... I don't know if, lead, if Nighthound's leading on carry, oh, kills... Oh, sorry, in farm though. Well, I, I do think like you wasted quite a lot on consumables, <laughs> considering yeah. that he still manages to stay in the lane without going region even a single time while he was like 2% uh, HP like 5 times by now. Yeah, because uh, I think he spent quite a lot of... And also Mraxxus has uh, quite a lot of like uh, denies as well, but Mraxxus should have definitely invested in the Red Fort. Yeah, I think it's about to come. No, that's okay, actually, that's a big hook on the Engineer there from Devour. Devour is gonna get the kill there and Hag is here. Hag is spelling blood, Hag is ultimating the, the Tundra there, and Tundra is 
likely going to fall and that might also be a Moira going to fall. The tower is being attacked oh. by... Oh, no, nah, it... <laughs> an attempt was made, but... That's a walk of shame. I feel like a lot of things would have to go wrong for that teleport to go through. Well, that's what you get for leaving Devour open, right? Yeah, um... I mean, Devourer hasn't really been that impactful in this game specifically, because the hooks that they've been making are... That was a big hook on the on the Engineer Force. But, yeah, I think um, it, it's much dry lanes. It takes one decent hook to make... Oh, wait a second. Him. Nighthound's actually taking a bit of a beating here in the bottom lane. Morax is now picking up the bottle. Um, still no Dust or Revor, though. If he had it here, that would have been like a free kill on the night right? Yeah, most likely. And it would also mean <laughs> that the night could not be able to stay in this lane anymore. It just, it just sounds like random access. <laughs> maybe he's here, maybe he's here, nope, maybe he's here. Yeah, because you kind of know where he is, because often like, you see the hatchets animation. Right? You see the hatchet yeah. throw. So you yeah, kind of yeah. know, oh, okay, he's there. But yeah, like this is the ultimate, like the difference between like strength and, and agility shining through. Um, Moraxis with only like 68 to 74 damage, and Nighthound with 83 to 87. And that is likely a big hook on Devour, killing the Tundra. Tundra not really having the greatest game. Tundra also choosing to not level his E. Uh, choosing to level his W instead. I don't really know about that one. It's a okay, bit of an interesting choice. I'm not the biggest fan. Uh, see Moira rotating middle. Tundra also rotating middle. Um, I'm not sure they're going to be able to really pick off the uh, the hike here. Hike is just playing safe, right? So. Oh, it's three guys there. Static kill. Uh, there's shards of Hawkins missed. Oh, that is so unfortunate. If the, sh if the shards were like just a little bit later, I'd think. Ack, yeah, the shell also missed. But the yeah, shell did miss, yeah. But you, you didn't really see which direction the hack went. Um, Ack also being level 8 there, but level 2 blink may have saved him a little bit. Tundra picking... Oh, sorry, not the Tundra, the Max is picking up Invis rune. And this is like, you know, a level 5 Tundra with no boots just roaming around. Um, oh, that's a big hook. Nice. Oh. Ooh, that's a big kill, actually. Good rotation bottom. Mate playing a report, placing a report in the bottom lane. Funny enough. <laughs> Scouting out the Invis Moraxis. The rolls have reversed. <laughs> yeah, this is an interesting decision. Well, good rotation by Fall there. Uh, we did it devour in the top lane, Devour hooking the engineer. Engineer in a lot of trouble, but it's frozen, and that is dead engineer. Yeah, that's the, again the devour factor. I, I don't even know if they saw the engineer there, but honestly, that is one of those spots where support usually sits. So yeah, we nice didn't, didn't, speak, didn't speak much about the mid uh, gameplay here, but we do see uh, 200 GPM bubbles against 500 GPM on on hack. Seems like yeah. So I don't think bubbles has much chance in this li lineup because the hack spells are just a bit too efficient for the bubbles to deal with, compared to like the bubble spells. So you have to take cover. You can take cover a lot of the damage from the... Uh, you can like auto-take cover the hunt. Sorry, the, 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 the E. You cannot auto-take cover the hunt, I believe, but... Um, it is quite difficult to do, because you need to really time it, and you need to do it like... You, the hacker just like... do the uh, sonar scream in between auto-attacks. Oh, and that's another hook actually oh, in the top hook. lane. Engineer getting another big hook. So uh, they're, uh, they're, they're getting another big hook off. And that is Tundra likely also to fall to the Crop Disciple. Hack even coming over. Oh, bottom big kill. And the bottom lane waits. Did uh, Nighttown just kill two people? No, wait, sorry, no, no, the, the was, turtle uh, was, yeah, sorry, the turtle yeah. was in, in the same team as the Nighthound, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it was unfortunate. Uh, that's a oh. one for one, that's probably not what they're looking for, especially because the Bubbles is not really having the greatest of games. Well, I'm also curious whether Engineer is just, like, very unlucky with walking into hooks, or he's just aiming for him. I think that <laughs> is just like... Hansi being a hook magnet. 
Yeah, most likely. Or maybe, like, maybe I've, I've seen like these hooks like just bend in like weird shapes like towards Hansi. It's it's magical to see. <laughs> yeah, Look, he's like, kind of locked into another hook here. It's like it's like a devil, like the devil map. Yeah, true. Actually. That's your hook. That's your hook. Yeah, it does bouncy hooks. Oh, that's a big one. The mid lane actually, Hansi is instantly going to melt together with the Devourer and the Moira. The supporting cast is entirely done. Bubbles not able to shell surf out of there because of the freeze from the glaciers. Um, so yeah, that is a lot of. Um, this is like a tundra with no boots, by the way. Um, oh, Night on getting a kill there. There is actually enough mana on the corrupted in a little bit if he commits to it. He did not commit to it. That is surprising because I don't think there was he was under that much danger. Because Tundra is a, this is a Tundra with no boots. Toxic loss, sure, but no boots. Oh, that's a big dodge actually. Well, Volk is having the time of his life, but it's probably a PK very soon. Like yeah, so funny enough, he's actually the same GPM as the Night Hunt. <laughs> yeah. And now it's the bubble's turn to get bullied by the by the Maraxis. Yeah, the axe and is there, just so strong. Yeah, oh, you see, like he, is there. he knows that he is there. Yeah, it's but not gonna you shouldn't like you don't care. You bullied him, as, and hence he got hooked again. That <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was been very unfortunate for him. I don't want to be in his shoes right now, but I mean, I mean, you would probably prefer engineer getting hooked than a core hero, right? That is true. He is is definitely hero. wasting the the Devo's mana. <laughs> I wouldn't say you're wasting, but it's definitely something that they have. At Hellworks some point, with. if you die enough, you're not gonna be worth like more than two mana potions, right? Yeah, it's just one hundred gold. Yeah. Probably. So that is the plan, I think. <laughs> yeah, make them focus on the wrong target then. Exactly. Slowly, make them focus on the ladder. Make them focus on the entire game and then like suddenly Night Town is gonna pop up at 900 GPM. Like whoop, 700 GPM. Whoop. <laughs> and just started one-shotting people. Nighton is actually just steadily farming a bit, but not as much as the Corrupted Disciple though, because the Corrupted Disciple is steadily at 600 GPM, and we see the, ha the, the Hag at 500 GPM. Tundra with red boots. Yeah, this is not really looking too great, and this was looking really good for the top lane, right? For in, oh. in the start, because they got some huge engagements there. Marx is having too good time, bot. Seems yeah, like it. it does look like it. Uh, that yeah. is a good silence and a stun from Raxus, and that is a dead Raxus. Yeah. You know what? Like, you were enjoying too much. No, no, man. That's and that's DM. four ports, actually. That's four ports. That is a lot of damage coming out. A lot of the Max getting a three man stun and a big ultimate, actually. Oh, Hag going for more, picking up the Night Town. That is so unfortunate, but they don't really have anything else, right? Hag can just keep chasing and chasing and chasing. And, oh, that is maybe overstepped a little bit too far. There's no mana on the Tundra, though, and Hag is going to fall. And there is the tower. And he's getting a but it's not a He that missed Hansi. Hook. <laughs> he missed Hansi. Oh my god, yeah. Like, yeah, I, I put fucking $10 that he was aiming for Hansi there. He was dead. Yeah, like Hansi. <laughs> yeah, but he got the puppet soul, so it's even better, right? Unlucky. Missed. Missed the <laughs> correct target. Yeah, so so every time you're not hitting Hansi, your hook percent is hook. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm actually sure that it counts as like it's a missed hook in the, in, yes, the, in, the, in, the, in the code. It's like hooking a teammate. Exactly. Well. Yeah, but uh, the Corrupted is definitely having the time of his life here. I'm kind of curious what kind of items he will go for. Personally, I'm a big fan of the... Oh, okay. um, oh. That is also not Hans. <laughs> Sunk that once again playing out of his mind on this Devourer. He might actually be in a little bit of trouble here. Night Hunt is of course dealing a lot of damage with the Devourer because Devourer doesn't really have the armor to deal with him. And that is Daddy Power. Um, meanwhile, Volk well, uh, doing some stacks here, being greedy, but that's good. Yeah, what a yeah I mean, like Hag is farming their own um, jungle. Oh, the there top is like an, there is like an, uh, that is a huge wave. Yeah, there is like a, a frost fire, searing light on the crop to disciple now, so he can like just keep farming, and like. Yeah, he's just not really under any pressure, right? Yeah, I'm thinking about bubbles. Like, 
uh, he does suffer this game. So like, the question is how do you recover from that? You have so many people farming that uh, you have the I think pound, like uh, yeah. he did the correct thing by trying to go for some ganks, like in the bottom lane, for example. But none of those ganks really paid off. And when you're already having like such a shit game, the game going more and more to shit is not really helping out that much. I think maybe he just got a little bit unlucky every now and then. Because I do know that Busy is actually a really good bubbles player. So it's definitely not that. Um, Rex is picking up a PK here. Nighton going in the mid lane. That is a kill on the Devourer instantly. And that might actually be a kill okay, on the Crow Disciple as well. That is definitely not enough. Glacius ultimate there. Max missing the ultimate on the uh, on the Maraxis and on the Ratchet Hack. And uh, Maraxis is going to pick off the Engineer. Um, they're three versus three here. But... The, like the hag actually is just so dangerous. Um, Nighthound poured at home. I think, oh, that's actually, that was a domination streak. Ansi getting the goal that he deserves this game. Okay, so that at Nullfire, right? Building on Nighthound. Seems like he doesn't want to go like uh, farming. Maybe yeah, like, like even if you later. would go for a cleaver this game, are you actually going to be able to farm this game? No, right? So you just rely on like being able to kill people. Uh, the enemies have been playing really aggressively, um, so I mean you have to you have the heroes to to gank people with. So might as well go for this gank playstyle. We see bubbles actually going really low here. I don't think they've spotted him, um, but bubbles cannot be going first. Oh, well, but for night home, yeah, I didn't want to go over here. Tire team sitting there, but oh. That was very close. Raxus is still going though. Turtle might not be safe enough. Uh, Turtle does have the silence. And he is hitting the he's hitting all the axes. And oh, oh, that oh, is oh. No, he cancelled the hook. Why did you do that, Asung Bob? Oh buddy. Anyway, uh mid lane actually. Oh, that might be a No, it's just oh, not enough. Just... That was uh unfortunate silence placement actually, and this might actually be uh, a an engineer and an and an Moira in trouble because they're in such terrible spots. The the magnet gets hooked once again. The, like the, the the hook just automatically patting towards Hansi in some magical manner. And <laughs> um, yeah, that's a good description of the incident. That's exactly what happened there. But again, it's the engine getting hooked and not the uh, night hunt. So, but that was like it, it all kind of started with like. Nighthound being a little bit too impatient with his smoke and also just not placing his smoke in a very efficient spot. Like if he placed it like more towards the direction that the hack was gonna run into. That is yeah, okay. That is just the melt the last two targets. And that's the eye on Moraxis, and now the fun the party time for the Nighthound's over. Nighthound does not really have free reign anymore. Yeah, who needs dust when you have eye? Exactly. And yeah, I mean, like, even if they didn't have an eye, right? Night Hunt is like half the GPM of, of the others in this game. So Night Hunt does a lot of damage, but it's not really the solo core that you want in this game, right? Oh, and it's it the, the hook padded towards NC once again. And um, I mean, it just becomes toxic at this point. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm starting to feel bad. It's also just Sunkpop playing a really good Devourer. And like, they probably just died. Okay, they're going in actually in the bottom lane. They oh. are still interested in playing this out. They instantly burst down the hack. That's a huge one. Uh, Devourer actually getting stunned by the Bubbles ultimate. Devourer's gonna fall. That's a huge team fight for the uh, Hellborn side here. Two kills to zero. So that is actually some really important pickups. I think Nighthound actually got a double tap there on both yeah, Devourer. That's 800 gold. On yeah, spot. and that is like the gold that Night Hunt really badly needs, right? Because that null fire blade, that allows him to start like really picking up people. Yeah, he is and he is more. playing so aggressively, but he might actually run into Maraxxus here if he's not careful. Well, if he didn't place a reward for Glacius, so he doesn't see him, that's a free kill. But there's a Maraxxus sitting behind. Oh, it's very dangerous. Night yeah, yeah Night Hunt's to fall there. I, I think also, I will say that I, I think Kevin has done a really poor job of scouting with his bird. Um, but maybe they are just tired. It's, it's, it makes sense. Right? 
Yeah, definitely makes sense. Then you just like on one on one side you want to end, but on the other side you want to end. Uh, Wait, it's going to be another angle. hook and hand scene. Yeah, if it's not Hansi, then we don't want to see that. But <laughs> he actually look, he goes on Hansi, but it's insane. Oh, yeah, Hansi knows. He just knows. He feels it. <laughs> yes, oh definitely aims towards him, and he got it. <laughs> you absolute hook magnet. Like, like he's like, I don't care about anyone else. Just give me that boy. Yeah, he doesn't yeah, give that's... shit. Tundra in the top lane? Nah, not for me. And I thought in the mid lane, like... I ain't hooking that shit. I, I ain't touching that dog. Fancy like, though, yeah. yeah. Who cares about the 500 GPM, uh, whatever? Like I want this guy. Yeah. It's yeah, it's 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 not about it's it's just about sending a message at this point. I feel. Yeah, it definitely feels personal, maybe. Wait, is does it say something in the code of conduct against bullying? Because this might fall under bullying. No, yeah, but we we might uh, speak to the relevant people and consider that. Yeah, we'll, we'll speak. We'll, speak, we'll guys, Chaz, don't worry. We'll talk to Songpop about bullying that is unacceptable after this game. <laughs> Purpose bullying is actually gonna be punished now. That's yeah. my time getting on Devo, but no dust pops, right? This is all like this is some good scouting one, with the bird down, right? One and dust. This, are they gonna pop it? Nah, bad scouting with the bird. And, and I, I've not seen Kevin play a good. Uh, it's partially because he doesn't have the bird maxed yet, but he has just not been playing that well with the Tundra birds. Like he has not been providing any vision for his team, and that is just kind of rough. Because you should be Tundra is mainly there to provide vision for the team with that bird, right? Yeah, playing against that bird is the most annoying thing that exists, and that's a conquer for Legion side. Yeah, they sacrifice the bottom tower. I mean, yeah, they would gladly take that from Rexus, just makes this combo so easily. However, Rexus is taking a little bit of damage here. Maybe um, some of his good teammates can maybe help him a bit. Another fat uh, Devo stepping up. Oh, yes. Yeah. Max going to snipe it? No. I had fate though. But yeah, like uh, Shrunken Head on the Corrupted right now. So Corrupted Disciple is unlikely to fall again. Uh, I would have liked maybe for like one in his team to go for an um, Thorn Spirit against the Tundra. Because, you know, Tundra Ultimate is quite hard to play against. It's a very long stun. But, um, it is just difficult. Like, you don't really, you're so far ahead, why so just don't go for more aggressive items, right? And I think that's also yeah, what we're thinking. Sure. Uh, Devourer, not really, even though he, he got all the hooks right, not even that, mu that much farm this game. Because he has killed more people than, than creeps actually this game. Yeah, he just, he just hooks and leaves the kill for the team, right? He doesn't need them really. True. This is another conquer for Legion side. Yeah, I mean, like, can you even really fight this as Hellborn? Like, Sure, like last team fight worked and doubles actually going to try to snipe it, but it's just a little bit too late. I don't actually know if they had vision. Yeah, they did. There's no bird here, right? I don't see it. No, but on the left side, they have wards. Yeah. It actually did not get countered, funny enough. So, um. Yeah, but also, I don't see how they managed to win the 5v5 team fight right now at this point. I mean, so yeah. probably stealing a stealing a conger was the only thing that they were. If Nighttown goes in, like with the crop shrunken, he's just going to fall, basically instantly, right? Yeah, and most likely. Hack has a Grimoire now with level 16. So oh. yeah, that's that just a lot of damage. It just is a lot of damage. So I think they're playing it out because why not? And I get that, right? You've been playing this series for approximately four to five hours at this point so you want to play it out at this point even if you lose even if there's like a 0.0 percent chance to win you just gotta play it out and that is like fair to them and i think that's actually that shows character Usly, uh, they're going in vulka jumping oh, in on the Maraxxus, and that is a big hook actually on on hansi <laughs> why did i even pause yeah <laughs> makes no sense um that was uh, a lot of abilities used actually. I think that may have been an, yeah, a bad blast on the bubbles. Bubbles nearly surviving or uh, just barely surviving that. 
showing off the power of the hag. Um, and can they do anything to stop this? Now Hansi's not up yet to go. Oh, and that's actually a big-ish jump with the... They burst down the Corrupted Disciple. Uh, did have to shrunken on cooldown. And Night Hound in the background falling to the Glaciers. Glaciers doing a little bit too much damage. Hag going for more. Hag still just having the token for another minute. And he's healing so much with that Grimoire. Engineer is going to fall to the Grimoire. And this E should be up again soon. But oh, no. Busy is probably... Uh, I would have gone for it. <laughs> yeah, why was, not? No, no why it was not Annihilation. It was only a kill. So, okay, fair. It still, like, I forget him. Kill in the tournament is also a great achievement. That was also like a good way to initiate a team fight. By... That was also a good way to lose yourself the game. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even like... I, I, I had to look for a second, like, who was getting hooked, but... Uh... Oh, yeah, I, like... I shouldn't even have that <laughs> I don't know, maybe there's something with the animation of the engineer. Like, it, it does look a little tiny, but maybe... <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's like, very thick. And we, after the game, we'll check the hitbox on the engineer. Yeah, okay. Maybe the hitbox on the engineer is like just three times as large. Yeah, we'll speak to Hon, oh my god, it must be a bug. Like, yeah, because yeah. like, OG engineer, right? He is a chunky boy. He is. So, it makes yeah. sense. There must be it. There's no other So, maybe this is not Hansi's fault. He is getting Either. a tablet, so he can tablet out of the uh, out of the hook. Yeah, but uh, he can, like he can so fast get ulted by devour. It's like you have to be, you have to have super no, fast. No, but if you time it right, you can like tablet, and then like the tablet will go off while you're getting hooked, and it will cancel the hook. It is possible, not easy. Anyway, uh, Fulka trying okay. to jump the Tundra here, not getting it off. He almost actually has a health flower. Yeah, this is just going to be a desperation fight at this point, I think. But uh, let's go Max going in. Uh, Moira using the oh. illusion. The illusion, the Ephemeral Forge, actually having a huge cooldown right now. So that's an, 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 a big cooldown that they actually used already. That's they don't also have the any. Old hack, which they I think don't have a reference. They don't have reference from Night Towns. They do have an eye. And that is really oh. close to the night on there. Oh my night on playing so with bloody fire. So risky. And here's the bird <laughs> flying around. Yeah, and they actually see this bird. So I don't really like the bird positioning here because the eye actually spots the bird. And there's a lot of spells from the Hellborn side, from the Legion side that can actually, um, um, can actually kill the birds, like the Tuna Blast, like the, the Axis from Raxus. Also, I want to point out that the Devourer has 15 charges on his E. Currently giving him 22 strength. Oh, and that's a jump on the Bubbles. Bubbles melting like the turtle he is. Uh, Devourer getting jumped by Nighthound, but Nighthound's not that's actually that's able to finish him off. And Nighthound jumping off with actually a quite a creative blink there, but he might still fall here. No, and that is just that Nighthound. Yeah, it's just a little bit too much yeah, farm on really the Legion side. The there. Really wanted to get the Devourer there. Really wanted to get Wait, that's that again, but not to devour. <laughs> Doesn't devour. Count. No, he, he was he was defending Hansi from devour, so he tried to silence him before it happens. But yeah, okay, that was GG being called by both sides. Well played to both team, but in the end, the victory goes to Green Tim Tak or something like that. I'm still not that sure. Top Green Top, Tak. Top Green Tak. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I I probably butchered that since. Probably something Thai. Anyway, um, yeah. I think this was it for uh, me, uh, uh, your main caster, and your co casters for today, uh, Sate and uh, Salt. Thank you so much, both of you, for joining me today. It's been a pleasure. And it's very, um, very go. Yeah, I said it was a very fun series. I mean, I wasn't in all of them, but uh, the last ones maybe were a little. Uh, uh, like Devo sided. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Devour so played a huge role in both last games. Yeah, so maybe something in the, the future teams will decide. Maybe they want to adapt a little differently. Either have a good counter for that hero or just ban it. Because you don't want to leave it open. The game's just ban it against Yeah, just ban it against Sunkbob. <laughs> He's just so good on yeah. a hero. 
But um, I uh, think that is all from me. So I think I'll give it back to uh, Mr. Paradise, who probably has the sign off post. If he's still awake, that is. Okay, yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, so we may actually have an interview uh, with one of the uh, one of the players, I guess. I don't know which one. Um, if we get to host, if we get to uh, interview Sunkbop, we could <laughs> actually we could confront him with his bullying behavior. That is not acceptable. This might actually be a good moment here to do it publicly and shame him for it. Yeah, we we must update the the code of conduct live version. Yeah, right? that this is just not acceptable. <laughs> this is clearly targeted bullying. This is not cool. This is not like how an adult should behave. How dare he? No, but uh, yeah, this of course like this has been so back and forth, and especially the first like uh, the first three games were so so back and forth and so interesting to watch. Uh, the last game being a little bit more of a YOLO draft from the Hellburn side for sure. Um, do we have an interview yet? Okay, perfect. We have an interview in coming. Uh, so um, I am curious to see who is going to join us right now. Um, let's see. We have uh, Fall. We have Kevin on a Puppet Soul. And we have What You Got Here. Hello. <laughs> hello, 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 hello. So uh, I think first order of business, right? Um, did you know that Sunkbop was literally only hooking hands, see, and that is considered bullying? Yeah, hmm. we knew. And, oh. uh, I mean, I don't think Devo was the issue that I was asking. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was more the hack, but yeah. I well. think, yeah, so the Hag has actually been like uh, the three games that uh, I've seen Fall play the Hag, I believe. And Hag has been so dominant in all three of the games. And I want to reiterate, actually, that this is a nerfed Hag, right? Oh, this I is the Hag that doesn't go through Shrunken anymore with the Ultimate. Yeah, I don't really think that the uh, the, the Ultimate is like necessarily the, the reason why Hag is so strong. I feel like it's just generally like a super strong laner. Uh, yeah. Very mobile hero, scales like very well farms really fast ganks really well so it's just like all around i think the hero like mostly struggles if he has to go up against like a dual lane or something but uh, yeah i don't know uh, considering i haven't played so much lately it's just a comfort pick for me the way i know i can at least perform to some extent so um and i was i can imagine also grimoire being actually a good item now helps the hag of course yeah, as well yeah the, the grimoire power spike is, is like I don't think there's like any hero that gets like as big of a power spike as Hag gets when she gets Grimoire because you just like pop Grimoire, blink in, and all two combo someone, and they just like die from like ninety percent HP. And you also yeah. just farm so fucking fast when you get Grimoire. And you, and if you're like if, when you have gnomes in conjunction with the Grimoire, if like they drop you down to like half HP and you're just ulti and and scream, you just heal up like forty fifty percent of your HP. So. Uh, yeah, that's what I also like saw a lot actually happening in the games. Uh, also, the first game where you played with uh, Hag with Fulka playing the, the Pharaoh, I believe, um, yeah. a couple of the times, like you were just so tanky with that with that gnome's wisdom because you had like two point two k HP or something like that, and yeah, it was, was no also way, sorry. Go ahead. There was there no way to drop you. They just like uh, brought you down to have HP, and like five seconds later, you'll be back in the team fight because you just healed back up basically. Yeah, they they well the the I guess their like weakness in uh, in the first game, which they won regardless, was that they didn't really have any catch at all for Hack. Like they had like Hellbringer, blocks. Uh, don't remember the rest of the heroes, but I, I could just like you know farm freely in lanes and not really be afraid that I was gonna get picked off. So as a result, I got really really farmed. But the, yeah, the, but their team fight was just too strong at the end. Of the in day. the in the end, they reminded you why they picked Hellbringer there, I believe. Yeah, I. Um, I mean, I got first played mid, so obviously I'm say played it well. I, th I do think the, the mana reduction on his spells makes it a lot more difficult to lean against the hero, because he can just spam his uh, his uh, dot on you constantly, and uh, yeah. So that is maybe something that uh, might be interesting to look at in the future, if uh, we ever think about like uh, dropping down the hero a little bit. Yeah, but actually. also, um, I was interested in your opinion about the uh, bubbles against hack matchup, because... I didn't have Sato with me anymore at that time, yeah. but I don't. I believe I've heard many times say that Bubbles is like a weak matchup against Hag. 
I have played against like a few bubbles that uh, were really good at using the. Uh, I think you can bind the auto tick yeah. cover. Makes it you can bind that to a, to yeah. like a mouse button or something like yeah. that. Yeah, exactly. And if they know how to use that and they know how to play the lane, it's I I, I I'd say that it's pretty bubbles favored. But I'd say generally speaking, when I lean against bubbles, and I feel like for the most like if you're not like a, I mean I was, I know that BC is really good uh, bubbles, um, but but generally speaking, I feel like I I tend to do fine against bubbles, and and just like throughout the game, I don't really mind playing hack against against the bubbles middle because I feel like bubbles offers less. Uh, like uh, in team fights throughout the game, it just doesn't really uh, scale as well as Hag does. So, <laughs> yeah, and like well. bubbles also just scales way less with like a Grim Orcus. The, yeah. the, the, the 4.8 seconds cooldown or something you have on the blink is just, it's never enough to actually burst on a Hag, is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's exactly. When you get the like low cooldown blink and whatnot, it's just, uh, it just become a powerhouse with the Grim War and the Gnomes. And you get strong, you know, like a health lower, and it's just <laughs> pretty much level. Okay. Then I got two more questions actually for you. Okay. Uh, one about um, the performance of the Forsaken Archer this game. <laughs> so maybe someone else uh, wants to take a shot at this one. Because uh, uh, we have two other people in here with us. Uh, Kevin or Beans. Uh, Forsaken Archer has lost the first three games. And I was like, they're definitely not going to pick it anymore, right? But uh, nope, going to pick it anyway. What do you think happens? Why did the Forsaken Archer perform so poorly in these three, first three games? I can, uh, you know, yeah, just go if the rest isn't here, then. Go All first. right. Uh, well, I think in, in the first game, at least like from my point of view, they decided to trial in offensively, which um, I think they had a prisoner uh, in the trial. And I'd say generally, like personally, I think they would have been better off like putting the Forsaken Archer on the safe lane because as the game progresses, the, uh, the Uki should fall off. But we also I think we did have a hack like game. So that kind of balances things out. Um, and then in the following two games, it was, you know, fun playing the, the, the Forsaken Archer. Um, or was it was it two games you played Forsaken Archer? I can't remember exactly. Um, I think so, yeah. But yeah. they think he's comfortable with Forsaken Archer. Um, I mean, I've seen uh, Thun dominate that hero, at least in like in-houses previously. So I don't think necessarily it's like... I, I think he played fine in the most games. I think like uh, we just didn't really accomplish too much in the game where I played Riptide. And we were just on the back foot the whole game with, and like being very slow at responding to ganks. And... We kind of realized that draft had some like fundamental flaws when it comes to initiating because Riptide can't really initiate, and then the Deadwood initiation is, is rather yeah. awkward because you you know the the the, the, the rotten grass is not really a proper initiation tool, and the uh, the Willow Keeper, whatever it's called, is uh, is also like a pretty slow animation. So we just really couldn't catch heroes that were on the side lane. Um, yeah, I've first. seen actually the Deadwood like PKing in, and yeah. I believe it was Maraxis just PKing out before the animation goes off. It is it is pretty stupid. Uh, yeah, exactly. And they had, they, yeah, they had, uh, you know, puppet, uh, puppet master and Maraxes and then like a prisoner. So they had like some decent tools, and then they had the, the split push within the four. So uh, yeah, I was surprised you guys managed to hold on for as long as you did that game. Like, but you did, you did make me and and Sate suffer <laughs> that game though. Yeah, I mean, we, we we were suffering too, and and it was, I think, okay. like the other. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. So you were suffering, right? Imagine yeah. trying to hold a conversation about that game for an hour long, right? <laughs> Then you know what suffering is, right? You know nothing. Yeah, but, but to be fair, uh, there were like most likely every time four people together, so it was very hard to make plays or fight or take good fights. Oh yeah, they... but they couldn't go anywhere. You had a puppet, and you had like an an, an Rexus with a with a with a health flower. If yeah. Monarch wasn't there to save them, they were gonna instantly die. I know. Yeah, but this is why it's hard sorry. to play cool. against the Monarch because they. I mean, Monarch is a very strong hero to yeah. counter initiate, and you can't pick off as easily as, easily as you want. True. Uh, and Puppet relies on pick off to survive. I mean, yeah, I guess a, hero. a couple of times in that game, you actually got like a good jump off on the FA with like ultimate and W. But the Monarch just, you know, crystallized for three seconds. You're not going to burst him in that time. And then he ultimates, and for a second, Archie gets shrunk enough. Yeah. At yeah, that point, yeah, you can't really kill him anymore. So, yeah, but we. Uh, found out uh, we had to split push because they had they had no proper initiation and yeah we had, had good vision all around <laughs> until Fulka actually got like it, it was like eight one and eight or something he got like PK storm sheep stick out of nowhere like as long as as much as I love to like rag on a French idiot he did some great games today yeah, yeah and I one. remember uh, oh, sorry don't go ahead I remember in that game I was like guys we need to 
take care of Luca because he's uh, <laughs> he's being a threat right now. But yeah. Yeah, because he was the actually the only one that was properly setting up stuff. Delsa was on the Deadwood, was not really getting anything done. And I think the same issue was kind of happening on the other side of the coin, uh, the next game actually, where Kevin, you picked up both Deadwood and Rally. And I think those are two heroes that fill two very similar roles and suffer from two very similar issues. Okay, well, uh, to be honest, in this draft, I think I got baited by the Mage Brain. I thought they would lane with Mage Brain, but they decided Absolutely. to Me too. go through uh, uh, Forsaken. And then my draft fall ap falls apart because Mage Brain is really is, is really good against the uh, Engineer. And we were not able to uh, shut down the FA we wanted to. Yeah, also that game, Sunk just scored like four kills in a row or something. Um, by just by hooking first, like hooking Mutt into the tower, then hooking you middle, then killing Max on top of that, and then like hooking Hansi as well or something. Sunk on that devourer was making plays left and right. So uh, I'm sure that's uh, you guys are quite happy with his performance at least. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah, uh, yeah Sunk he had some really clutch hooks that game. Um... He he even said like himself that he he didn't do anything that game. And I was like, dude, you hooked the the madman on the tower like twice or something. <laughs> yeah, that. that was like a six hundred GPM madman. You guys were actually yeah. quite equally like you were like seven hundred under just under seven hundred. He was like six hundred. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. madman against a forsaken archer is quite a big counter because if the madman just gets to sit on the FA's face with the, with like a basher, that is usually a dead FA in that case. Most yeah. of the time, at least. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, uh, we also we had some pretty good fights and some decent pickoffs, especially due to the uh, the dead, uh, not the dead with the uh, devourer, and and we had like a slight hiccup after we took the mid racks, where uh, I think they were like all super low HP, and then I the uh, pub is all did a really good like bling into the trees and and stunned me from. Oh yeah, you died with five people for a rex, basically. Yeah, um, I think that in that fight in general started by Mage Pain just getting punched by Deadwood in one shot. At Oh okay, I didn't I didn't notice that. I was just mostly concerned with that. But like that was because I was I wasn't really sure about the mock pickup because Mage Pain had like seven armor at that point. Yeah. I was um, like, bro, get some armor. You're playing in Death's Deadwood. I think I I actually told him uh to uh to I told him initially just to get outbones. Uh and then I told him to go mug yeah, afterwards. That's, I like the outbones. Because yeah. you guys were slowing down the game. Nothing was happening for the first like fifty minutes of the game. You guys are both chilling on their side. Uh, and then like Alcbonds, it's against the American American teams, right? You just pick Alcbonds because you know they're not going to do anything for the first 25 minutes of the game. Yeah. But then you have the Alcbonds, and at that point, that's maybe the moment to get like some, some armor items against their team. But I don't know, maybe I don't know how comfortable he is on the Mage Pain either. I, I personally find Mage Pain a really difficult hero to play right now. Uh, I played a fair bit, um, and... It's mostly like you have pretty decent presence early on, and then like in the mid game when you, you're farming pretty slowly and you don't have any like stuns or anything, you you fall off a little bit, and then you like kind of come back into the game once you have like a shrunken maybe mock demonic or something. Like uh, you, you need some armor, you need like a uh, shrunken and some damage. So I yeah. was just kind of thinking it was like a backup in case they <clears throat> I failed carried somehow. Then uh, like Mageman can have some decent farm and uh, and yeah, like, that was probably. Like also a good idea against the Madman in general because Madman is more like an anti-solo co core, right? Exactly. Yeah. Because you just mm -hmm. really want to rag on one target with the Madman, and yeah. if you have the map, the Mage Pain just picking off the squishy targets in the back line, that is just always good. Yeah. Exactly. Um. um yeah. Do you have any is other there anything else uh, you want to uh, really talk about about these last last few games? Um. I don't know. Uh... Actually, one thing I do want to ask both you, sorry, both Beans and Kevin about the Fade. I've seen Fade be banned <laughs> every game. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys make some secret pact? I, ban I think I never banned Fade once. No, I, I think it's, I banned it's... it every game. It's, yeah. uh, it's, it's frustrating to play against, so I just don't want to play against it. I understand that in TMM. But I feel like I've, I've been talking about this with Sate, and Sate hasn't really played New Fate. So, mm. um, isn't the issue still that you can't lane the hero? Um, I don't know. We had one scrim against uh, B Pro where one of their players was playing on, on Fate, 
And it's just the, uh, I don't remember exactly how they landed. I think they, I can't remember exactly, but it was just throughout the game, it was just such a nuisance to play against the, the Fade. And it, it just makes like uh, it makes it a nightmare to play carry because you can't go no fire because fate has two types of illusions that will burn you. Uh, True. Yeah. So and you can't go thunderclaw because illusion also does the thunderclaw proc. So. Uh, yeah, I, I can a, see that. So any kind of proc item is just kind of going to wreck yourself. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I don't know. It's just uh, I think it's just a quality of life kind of thing. It's probably like beatable hero. It's just super frustrating to play against because she just runs around like stealth and just picks up people and. Later in the game, she can even like one shot to carry and shit. So, um, yeah, I guess it forces you into a very like um, single like strategy where you just kind of group up and go with five and like take objectives. Because yeah. the moment you start splitting up, you are kind of just going to get screwed. Pretty much. Yeah. It's uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's uh, spot on. Is there any other reason you uh, this this hate boner for uh, fate is uh, justified, Beans? Mm, no, I just think the heroes, like Fa said, it's a nuisance, and the I don't particularly like the illusion mechanic where it like you know does damage back based on what items you have. So I think it's a little overpowered right now, slightly. Okay, oh, it's also it's good to have those kind of insights because I mean we are rather, relatively flexible just now. We can always look at maybe you know reducing the damage on some other parts of the fate or something like that. Or maybe reducing I've, the I've duration told, uh, of the... I've told Sol my thoughts in private about that hero. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, no, like, I, I, I think that the Fate definitely does do a lot of damage right now. But I think the, the, the general frustration part about Fate is more about the tree walking and that kind of invis part than about anything else. Because uh, even if you have an eye, Fate is like one of the few invis heroes that can still initiate on you easily. Right, because yeah. of the clear, mm -hmm. the clear vision and the tree walking. Yeah, but, but you also have to consider, like, before they changed fate, like recently. I felt like to some extent the hero was almost unplayable. No, yeah, he was, and he still is. Because you can't, <laughs> you can't lane him. That's my, that's my general opinion about the hero. You can't lane him. You lose every lane you do. I don't think it's that bad. Um, but like maybe. his his laning present didn't get better. I mean, the what do you mean? The the the, the Q spell got better. Yeah, but like 10%, uh, an illusion doing 10% damage doesn't really improve in the laning phase. I don't know. Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm curious to see like where the, the, okay. the, the, uh, the pain lies, right? I, I can try to find the, the scrim uh, where we played against it, where we struggled to play against it. I don't remember. Yeah, it sounds like, like a skill issue to me, to be fair. It might might have been, uh, but it was. <laughs> it, we, we just realized quickly that it was just not for us to play against it. And no, um, I understand frustrating heroes. For me, the frustrating hero is fucking adrenaline. Like especially if something like busy plays, it's I just I just can't be us dealing with it. Mm -hmm. So we yeah. always like even back in the day, like the old adrenaline as well. We just banned yeah. it and draconis. And this is a hero I banned every time, besides the last game. But... Yeah, true. Like because every we time this was in the surprised. game, at least. No, we noticed you didn't ban it, and we were like, I wonder if they want to play it. And then we were like, oh, we don't want to play it, so we'll get rid of it. <laughs> Actually, so we didn't plan to play it, so... I, oh, I, I remember that. Yeah, you banned Adrenaline, did, yeah. I was like, we like, actually have Adrenaline players, but we decided... Yeah, just Dozen. We, we, we decided, no like, oh, maybe they want it, so... Yeah, no one in the game it. plays Adrenaline besides Dozen, dude. I don't we play have, uh, <laughs> We have also Mate for Adrenaline. Yeah. So. Wait, he plays it as well? Yeah, Matei yeah. plays Matei, Dosu, yes, I, I and, and, and Thun play, played. Ah, uh, disgusting. But but I have a question for Kevin actually. What what led you guys to play Night Hunt the last game? That was a rather uh, interesting pick. I didn't expect an orthodox pick. Uh, yeah. Well, initially I wanted to try the new Stundra, NG, and Max. I don't know if they if you guys knew about this. If you knew, we would try it. But uh, um. Night Hunt is. Always a hero that can come back, and we need we needed a carry for it, and we had no carry besides him who can mm. at least snowball, and it's a conf, conf picked for. Uh, okay. Mate. So yeah. Or it it makes sense. It was just uh, because I feel like it's like one of those heroes where, at least if you fall behind, it's it's really hard to come back because the hero doesn't really farm particularly well. So I guess it's like a hero where if you guys are doing really well early game, then maybe Night Hunt can get like the snowball going. Uh, so I like the idea of the Night Hunt plus the Tundra, because you can really easily get some 
good kills off, right? If you get uh, good scouting done with the bird. I mean, but... Nathan is good in many stuff, uh, many things because they first picked Hag, so I was thinking he could gank mid. If he had a rough lane, uh, and he also can rotate. He, he doesn't need a lot of item to do a lot of damage, uh, so that's why I decided to pick him. I, however, don't think you really ever want to run Knight on as a solo core, though. I mean, I could have played Silhouette, huh? Uh, is, that, <laughs> is that what you want to hear? <laughs> no, man. I just, I just think... Uh, well, I tried to have... It was our last game, and we were a bit tired, so I tried yeah. to have fun. I think that was more... Also, <laughs> it was a very unorthodox uh, uh, draft, for sure. Yeah. So, uh, I, I, lo I always loved to like the, the, you know weirder picks and it the night hunt did surprisingly well against the Maraxis bottom lane actually that's not something i surprised i was like the Maraxis is gonna stomp this night hunt because you know it's just gonna throw axis but night was actually ahead of the Maraxis in the last hits oh was he um, yeah Mati said he was suffering or something he was because he was spending like 90 percent of his income on region yeah <laughs> <laughs> but he was ahead of last hits yeah and that was something i wasn't expecting it's just like that Moraxis is not really a hero you can win against with any melee hero, right? Maybe Kraken can do fine. However, I was thinking Kraken, but we needed a agility carry to win this game, last game. Maybe as in the mid lane or something, but I don't know if Kraken wins against Hag ever. Kraken, uh, I think uh, Bubbles is a good good matchup. It's 50-50. It's both hero mm -hmm. can like, kill each other very early yeah. on. Yeah, it's, it's, I agree. It's it's pretty close, um, but I think it came. I think Busy said he it came down to runes. We had no rain, rune control, and he he died too much. Yeah, I guess Bubbles is like definitely just a hard hero to come back with because it doesn't uh, yeah. really it doesn't really pop out too much damage early on compared to something like a hag with spells of like seven seconds cooldown on, on the E. Issue is we had to like we didn't know how they lane. I thought we were they were like dual lanes, uh, maybe like Tivo rotating uh, from their short lane to mid. Yeah. So that's why I had to pick bubbles. Mm. So and it's also a comfort pick for busy. So yeah, I I know busy is really good in the bubbles. Yeah. I I, I like I, I've seen it played that many times. That he just didn't really get much done today on the bubbles, sadly. And you no, know, sometimes it just gets down to like if you get one, if you get one death, and it just kind of snowballs out of control from that point. It's just kind of unfortunate. I mean, if you look at all the games, the mid lane is. Very, I mean, there is something off about the mid lane because I feel like it relies more on runes, uh, rune control, than actual heroes. I mean, uh, to some extent, just, and uh, I've seen both teams actually prioritize rune control a lot in different games. Um. And also spend like a lot more energy. Like the the generally the games where like Hansi and Max got to move around a lot, you guys had very good room control. Yeah, I agree. So that was something that you guys, I believe, seemed to prioritize a lot more than um than the enemy team. For example, uh game one where what you got, you were playing the Andrew. Andro. Um like Constantly, Max and Hans, you were both rotating to the runes. Uh, and like you guys just weren't really capable of dealing with it many times. Yeah they, yeah, yeah, they did a very good job of controlling the tempo early. But it also comes to the fact that we were uh, ahead in the landing phase. Uh, we had uh, more than nice and we, were, we had lane control. That's why we, uh, I think my supports were allowed to uh, take, the, take the runes. Yeah, for sure. Like that is just uh, you guys were clearly winning in both last hits, and also just at some point it was actually such a struggle to watch because yeah, Andrew, Behemoth, and Forsaken Art were like all just level four or something, and there was just nothing they could do anymore because you were all like level six and had like good farm. And at that point, it was actually such a struggle to watch the Forsaken Art here, but it was impressive to see him come back like this. Because he actually managed to like get back to 500 to 50 GPM in the end. Uh, After yeah. a lot of farming. I don't, really, I don't really remember that game, but yeah, I see. Anyway, uh, that's all the questions from me. Uh, I've been roughly casting now for approximately six hours, so uh, seven hours and a half. <laughs> so I don't mind wrapping it up at some point. 
Uh, do you guys have anything left you want to talk about? I mean, mm. I would like to give a shout out to Paradise for hosting the tournament. It was fun and uh, very, very uh, challenging as well. So I had fun. I had my fun. So thank That's you important. for hosting the tournament. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Big shout out to Paradise. Thank you so much for all the effort you've put into this tournament. Uh, Fall, Beans, anything else you want to say? Um. You know, shout out to the community again for uh, making this possible with the uh, with the prize pool and whatnot, and prepare us for hosting, and uh, and to the enemy team for for making the very interesting series. Uh, they played really well. I think I think it could have gone either way, to be honest. Uh, and of course, the savory as usual. So, uh, well, first and foremost, Paradise and the community for without them we wouldn't have a tourney to play. Uh, it was a lot of fun today. Um, big uh, thank you to Sunk for ringing most of the day because Doze was not feeling well. So he's played a couple of games, but decided to step back out. And Sunk played really good in the last two games, specifically on Devo. Uh, I think he carried on the last game. So Sunk played awesome. Uh, and shout out to the devs for doing the maintenance before the tournament. So we didn't have any delays today. It was really, it was really good. Last weekend was uh, not ideal, but we pulled through. Yeah, so this weekend was uh, much, much smoother. So no... And you guys for casting. Clear casting, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, 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 I got you know, before you said it. I, 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 I knew where that was it, going. Right? I get it. Fine. You go, you <laughs> tweak and go. I've been in that spot before. I know what it's like. So shout out to the casters. You guys are awesome. Being here all day. Thank you. Yeah, I really had to push that out of there, eh? I try to remember that, everything. Sometimes force I got, that out of there. I got old Get man brain. I forget all the one time. way or the other. <sighs> uh, I think I'm gonna leave uh, Paradise then with the final closing words of today. Well, that's everything, lads. Thank you all for watching, and that was a long interview, but a very, very informal one, and. Uh, a lot of information there for the games and everything that the players were going through throughout the game. Thank you all for watching. And this does wrap up the Han Pro Tournament number one or season one with the winner being Top Green Tack. And just an FYI before we go into the next week or uh, the next tournaments, the next week tournament, aka the normal tournament, is most likely going to be cancelled because... Um, we will most likely change the entire system and remove the pro slash normal thing entirely because it proved to be very difficult to function and uh, there's a lot of teams that are unable to join because there will be one player that is above 1750 MMR and the rules for normals is that every single player has to be 1750 MMR or less so Things are proving to be very difficult to work with the system, so it will most likely change, and a lot of things will change in a matter of fact. Like, for example, this is a very big one, actually. The next tournament will not be hosted on this channel, but on the original Paradise League channel, which I finally got back after some communication with the Twitch team. So we're going to be hosting the tournaments from there, from now on. And that includes the Hon oh My God YouTube channel as well. It's not going to be streamed there anymore. It's only going to be exclusively streamed on the Paradise League Twitch channel. So if you're not following that, please go there and follow it. Anyways, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. And there will be an announcement video coming out very soon to update you on everything. So stay tuned for that. Thank you all for watching. Good night, everybody.
Thank you.